Join us for our early bird special. Every day at 8 a.m. we will offer you an incredible saving on a fantastic product. This offer is for one day only and while stocks last. So join us early to not miss out on some incredible savings. I've peaked already, can't you tell? Uh, we've got such a lovely day lined up for you today. I cannot tell you. The most talked about, loved guest we've ever had is back in the building. No, not you, Paul. You, you're not a guest. Anyway, early bird special. Early bird special. I'm just sitting here, all cash, look, because look, here it is. Now you love, you love, you love your freezer paper, but guess what? Guess what? Have a look at this. You get two, you get two, you get two, you get two. It's the early bird special. You get two rolls of freezer paper. It should be £9.98. You're getting both of them for £6.98. You're saving £3. £3 you're saving. Oh, let me get the right. Load. Well, the thing is, I did let it slip on Facebook last night. If you were following that, um, that chatter about freezer paper, I did let it slip yesterday that we had this. Um, we had this. Have a look at the still. Oh, there you go. There's the still. Thank you very much indeed. Make sure, make sure, make sure you come through, come through, come through for these. Uh, freezer paper, you can never have enough. You can never have enough. Now remember, once you've done this, that's your P&P done for the whole day. £2.95, P&P for the whole day. All sorted. Oh, no, I'm not liking that shot very much. I'm going to let me, there you go. I don't want my chin showing, that's all. There we go. At £6.98, there's a queue on the phone lines. Now remember, once you've done, once you've put these through, once you've checked out, or oh, can rest shots down. Once you've checked out, there's your PMP done for the day. So if you come in by a Jew, anything from June Taylor, anything from Helen Rhiannon, uh, you uh, will have paid your PMP for the whole day. Remember, you only pay, no matter how many times you check out, you only pay one PMP. Oh, quite like this, isn't it? I might do this more often. I can feel the hexes on the walls moving behind me though, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Six pounds ninety-eight. Make sure you check out. So people are multi, now, now multi-buyers, multi-buyers, you get two anyway. You get two anyway for 6 98 uh, Small queue on the phone lines, small queue on the phone lines. Just keep, stay with us, stay with us. Uh, how are we doing for stock? Okay, then just keep going through, keep going through, keep going through. The people who got it in their basket, we don't know how many you've put in your basket. So if they've all put in two, maybe, then just, we will be limited. It will be limited. We got loads of these because we knew how much you'd love this. £9.98 is what you should be paying. Uh, now, if you're in the queue, you're one of seven. That's all. You'll, talk, you'll be answered any second. Lots of new buyers. Lots and lots of new buyers. I'll have a word with you in a second. You, oh, now new buyers. Oh, now. I know, but new buyers, I need you to, to put, before you check out, I need you to, um, if you're on the phone, you're fine, but I've got to tell you something, new buyers. Uh, put, when you write, when new buyers, when you check out, put gift, write gift and you'll get a free present. I'll tell you about it in a second. Right, now there's nine in the queue, 10 in the queue, 11 in the queue, 12, 13 in the queue, keep going through lots of people on the basket. Right, now, you, don't worry, they're working, oof, they're working hard in the call centre. Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to have to go because I've got loads to do today. Got loads to do. Keep going through, keep going through, keep going through. Now, don't worry, when we take the graphics out, it doesn't mean you've missed out. Don't put the phone down. You can still get them. You can still get them at the moment. If you've got them in your basket, please check out because remember, they're not yours until you do check out. £6.98, you're saving £3. Well, look, you're saving your P&P. &P. You're saving your P&P, &P, aren't you? That's what you're doing. And then that means your PMP's paid for the day then. Oh no! Oh no, it's boiling hot in here, isn't it? I've gone a bit quicker today because I've got such a packed day. Oh, I've got such a packed day. Have a look at the menu. There's the menu coming up today with me, John Scott. Eight o'clock, June Taylor with Jill Rep. She's here, she's in the building. Nine o'clock, Vogue Couture Quilted Jacket with Helen Rhiannon. Then at 10 o'clock, we've got more June Taylor with Jill Rep. Then at 11 o'clock, we have the higher class chain bag with Helen Rhiannon. And then at 12 o'clock, uh, we've got more June Taylor. There's loads. You can see there's, there, are, there are premieres in every single hour. Premieres in every hour, along with, along with some of your, your favourite um, June Taylor products as well. So we're in for a treat. We're in for a treat there. So now what do you need to get in touch? We'd love for you to get. Oh, now her name is Jill. Remember, Jill. Last time she was on, we had uh, messages for Jill, Jane, June, Julie, Jean, Jill. She doesn't mind. She'll answer to all of them. But she, and also, um, she loves getting your questions. So any questions, do send them in. 
Uh, best way to get in touch is this way. You go to the website, www.sewingquarter.com. You click on Watch Today's Show Live. The screen will get bigger. You go to the right-hand side there where it says Message to Studio. You write your message, keep it to 140 characters or less because at your end you can keep typing, but at my end, you will get cut off. Uh, they will be sent through to producer Paul upstairs and he will send them through to me and Jill at the desk. Uh, while we're on that page, see products from today's show. As you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the freezer paper from today. Oh, Oh, I wonder why that notion's cut it. That says good value for money, that. Get one of those while you're there. Uh, anyway, you can click on there, put it in your basket. Talk about putting it in your basket. Go to the top of the page on the top right-hand corner. Top right-hand corner. There we go. While well, we're doing the live show, uh, you can click on there. Add it to your basket. You can check out as many times as you like. It's one PMP for the whole day. One PMP of £2.95 for the whole day. Four to six working days do not include Saturday, Sundays, or bank holidays, but we're not due a bank holiday for ages yet, so ignore that bit. Uh, now we can also, you can also send me an email. How do you send me an email? Like this. You send it to studio at sewingquarter.com. Studio at sewingquarter.com. And uh, if you want to send a longer message or you want to send in a picture of any June Taylor goodies you've done, then that's it. Ready? Steady? Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to be back. Oh, good. Uh, the viewers have been waiting and waiting. We've had an advert going out. When's she on? When's she on? <laughs> then last night on Facebook, there was, oh, she's on tomorrow. She's on tomorrow. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. One of our most talked about and popular guests you are. Wow. I know. That's wonderful to hear. <laughs> right. You're on for three hours today. Three hours. First of all, if you don't know, new buyers, you might never have met you before. Just tell us. You are June Taylor, really, aren't you? Well, I've been at June Taylor a long time. In fact, last month, it was 25 years. Yes. How come when you're only 26? I started when I was 12. Oh, 12, okay. And I just kept working and working and working. So, you know I love this little company. And June was a remarkable lady who developed wonderful tools for garment pressing. And then she switched the business to quilting yes. in the 80s. Um, and then sadly, um, June passed away in 93, which is when I kind of came on board and tried to fill her shoes. And like I said last time, I have really big feet, so that worked <laughs> out well. And we continued to develop products for quilters and sewers with an eye toward making things that are difficult, making them easy, or what parts of the process do we not like to do? Let's make that easy and quick. Qu so easy, can, quick, and fun. Yeah, so you can get to the fun part of what you love doing. Yes. So all our tools are time-saving. They're to make your finished projects look professional. And also, they last. We've had so many people messaging going, oh, I've had my, I've had my June Taylor stripology ruler for this many years. Yes, I've had this for they, this many years. That's not a June Taylor. You oh, had their shape cut, didn't you? Shape cut, shape cut. I've even got it written here. I've <laughs> even got it written here. here I do I'm going to have to spray you now. <laughs> yeah. Right, sorry about that. Not a good way to start. Right, mm -hmm. okay. So what are we going to show in this hour? Okay, we are going to start out by showing how to make easy triangles right. with easy equals ruler. Because think about it, in quilting there are basic shapes, strips, squares, triangles, diamonds, hexagons. People love strips and squares and then they kind of go, uh, I don't know if I know how to do that. We're going to make this easy Good. and fun. We're going to talk, we're going to make starch exciting. Okay. This <laughs> is going to knock your socks off. It is my favorite product. Brilliant. We're going to talk about other time-saving ways of using an adhesive. This is quilt basting spray, but you can use it for embroidery. You can use it to make fabric stickers for applique. Okay, it's so brilliant. versatile. We'll, we'll talk about all of those later, but we're going to start right. off with, the, with, with this, this ruler. ruler, aren't we? Okay, let's focus on this quilt right here. You okay. see this quilt? Jess is coming in on the quilt. There all you this go. is is simple triangles that are sewn together. Right. And this ruler is allows you to make triangles in any size all the way from a quarter inch up to eight and a half inches. It has all these wonderful lines on here to help you measure. Perfect. Okay. And uh, does it come with those lines on? Well, the, the, the lines are on the ruler, but it's easy to see with the white back. No, 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 no. So this is, how, is this how theirs will arrive? And then they peel that off and theirs looks Actually, like that? Actually, it's already peeled off for you. Oh, okay, perfect. But I put yep. the white back in. No, no, so, that's brilliant, because yeah. otherwise I'm going like this, trying to show yeah, the back. Yeah, trying to show what so it looks like. So this is what it will actually look like yes. when they get it home. And you can cut triangles in any of these increments. Perfect. Right? But the one 
one thing about sewing with triangles is these are all bias edges. Oh yes, of course. So we want to get that fabric a little bit more stiff so mm. that it's easy to sew because a bias edge is a stretchy yes. edge. And, and also that's a long, if you're doing one of the big ones, that's a long edge, isn't exactly. it, of stretchiness. And then your ends aren't going to meet and you're going to get a QH, a quilter's headache. Right, and okay. And we do not want the quilter's headache, <laughs> no, right? No, we don't, we do not. So we're going to use this to start out okay, with. Okay, And we are going to spray our fabric, okay? So let's just, what's it called then? It's just okay. called? It's called Starch Savvy. Starch Savvy. But the funny part is there's no starch in it. Oh. There's no potato in it, no corn in it. It's a man-made product. Right. Okay. And the thing that's different about this and any other starch on the market or starch-free product is it adds body with each application. Oh. So if you want it to be really stiff, um, I'll, I'll give you an example. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is one level of starch. Look right. how sad. Yes. Feel that. Look. Now that see. has four applications. Oh, so you can keep building and keep building, building and building. Up. This is the only product that lets you build on the market. How so fantastic. you don't want you don't want to actually spray and press right away. Right. You just want to give it a minute to soak in. So if you already sprayed that piece that's on there. That's right. the first thing I did. And now we let this soak in a little bit, and that's the hardest part because I'm so impatient. Yes. But if you don't, what happens is it just evaporates off the top, and it does you no good. Right. So when we quilt, if you are going to wash your quilt a lot, we have you pre-wash. Right. Do you use these these little sheets and is that of paper? Color, is that a color catcher or something thing. like yes, that? Yes, yes, yeah. Yep. So I pre-washed this before I left home. That's right, I brought my dirty laundry here. Good. So I pre-washed this. So before I start cutting, this is all icky. It's yes, all, yeah. so you would spray, 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 let it soak leave, in. Leave, 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 leave. Leave, I'm saying a few seconds, and then you would go ahead and press. Now right. I press this one, so we're good to go. Yes. Now for this, I'm gonna make a six inch triangle. Right. So the first thing you're going to do is, you know this ruler, the shape cut, right? Yes. You know that. The shape cut. I know that one. Yes, the yeah, shape Not cut. the word you said No, earlier. not the word okay. I said. <laughs> Anywhere on the mat, let's put this ruler like this on the bottom, and I'm going to cut a six inch strip. Right. Zero and six. Okay, now I've got my six inch strip. Right. And I've got another one here, so we have a little color. Okay. All right, now Perfect. let's put that aside, and let's take our ruler. And um, I'm a lefty, so this first cut's going to look a little awkward, but just kind of bear with me. Is that why I'm standing on this side today? Because you're is, a left hand. Because I didn't want to be jabbing you like I did the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> then you made that first comment. Now I'm like, maybe I should have been jabbing you because yes, of that. Yeah. But Listen, no. I'm here just to help you, you know, out. You forgive can jab and forget, me as much as forget you like. Forgive and forget. Yeah. So what I'm doing is, you see the lines here. I'm going all the way down to the six inch line. I yeah. cut a six inch strip that should line up with the point on the top, and it does. Hold the ruler down, and then again, just bear with me because I'm a lefty. We're going to make that first cut, yep. and then I'm going to cut over here, and perfect. I have my perfect triangle. Now let's cut a couple more, just so you can kind of get the hang of this. So yeah. again, just because I want to show you how to flip the ruler, line it up on the six-inch mark, do that first awkward cut for Jill, yes. and then here. And then you're just flipping the ruler up like this, um, and it should automatically line up, yeah. which it does. And I'm going to make my second cut and flip it back the other way, and I'm going to make my third cut. So we're going to just keep going like that until we have all of our triangles cut out. Perfect. Now, I have that done over here. So here you go. I've got my orange yes. and my yellow. Now, to sew these together, you go right sides together, raw edges even, and sew in a quarter inch and flip that now open. Now, you you, these have all been sprayed with the starch they savvy, have. haven't they? And yes. if you don't like the little point end, look at this. On the edge of this ruler right here, there's a little way oh, to cut wow. that off so that when you sew your seams together, you don't have that little notchy thing at the corner. And you do that on all, every single corner? I do, because yeah. I just like that. Yeah. So now we're going to sew these together. So here are two of them sewn together. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. Now we're going to add the green. Yeah. So now that's three sewn together. Perfect. So you can see how this is yes, actually yes, yes, starting yes. to work. And now we have a whole row sewn together. Oh, right. So if you don't have a pattern, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, just sew triangle to triangle. But how gorgeous would that be as a border? 
it would be a Do you know I mean? Sport. If you've got a, a plain, a plainish inside, and then you just want really lovely triangles yes. all the way around the outside. You know, in the third hour, we're actually going to use this as a pre-sewn strip for one of our quilt as you go quilts. Oh. So I'm telling you, it is just going to be a lot of fun. And also, the way it's, way it's oh. cut, no, 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 I'm just saying, the way it's cut here as well, you've got your quarter inch seam allowance here, so when you sew it to something else, you're not losing the point exactly. off the top of your triangle or anything. And here, this is a great, this is a great example of that. Look at how nice your points are. And they must, so many points coming in together must be a quilter's nightmare, really. Must well, it? you press every one every other direction, and mm -hmm. it's not so bad. Perfect. No quilter's headache. No. So on this lovely quilt, if you want to, I know this is sounding unusual, but to take a triangle, a geometric shape like this, yep. it's pretty to do the round quilting. And oh, yes, 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 yes. Templates, it's wonderful. You take all different sizes and just rest them on here, draw a line around, and that ends up being your your sewing line. That's the mix and line. match uh, circles, that's called, isn't mix it? Mix and match templates, and those are the circles. Yes, yes. So mix and match templates, colored uh, round circles. And you get different sizes, look. There's about one, two, three, four, five, six different sizes in there. And you could use those as templates. Now, can, you, um, can they be ironed over or not? I would not, but what you can do is starch and let it sit a little bit, pull the template out and then press it. Oh. So. Yes, 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 yes. So you, got it, got okay. it, got it, yep. Now let's take a look at this quilt right here. Isn't this beautiful? That is stunning. This Come is in. called, yeah. um, this <gasps> is my dear friend Susie's quilt that she made. And let me tell you how she did this, because you're going to want to do this with your scraps. She took all of her two and a half inch strips. Jelly rolls, design rolls. Absolutely. Yep. And used the two and a half inch mark on the ruler. So you line it up on the two and a half inch, cut, cut, cut. Yeah. And she sewed all of those together as rows. Yeah. And simply sewed the rows So together. she recreated jelly rolls. So she cut up jelly rolls, then recreated another two and a half inch strip from the triangle she cut. Yeah. Then she sewed them all together. And look at how gorgeous. That's, the effect is it's amazing, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. Does Susie know you've got it? Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> so what size? That's a two and a half That's inch. a two that's and a half perfect. inch. That's very common cut size yes, with this. Yeah. But look what you can do. I mean, I'm all about buying new fabric. I have so much fabric, it, it's crazy. Yes. But look at what you can do with your scraps. I was going to say, because that's all, because yeah. it's, it's, it's everything, isn't it? It's, it's a strip yeah. of blue, it's a strip of, the, and then they're just kind of mixed to match, because there's obviously a strip of the um, organic looking one there and everything, and just sticks yeah, together. Yeah, these are all batiks, but yes. what it allows you to be creative and mix color and, and all that. So we love that look. Now, here's a little bit of a different take on that is, if we actually, within our quilt, we mix. Oh, clever. If you look at this, tear this down to the basic level. All this was is a strip. Yeah. And then this strip sewn together. The same as Susie's strips, but a slightly bigger size. And then you take the ruler and you actually cut your triangle. So very, oh. very, very simple to do. Now let's just take this up one notch. Take it up one notch. Take I love watching notch. Jill rep. Welcome back, says Wendy in Suffolk. They, they're Thank flying you. in the messages. Thank you. Right, carry on. Happy to be here. I love England. Love the history. Okay, have you ever taken your scrap fabric, and I love jokes, and sew your scrap fabric together any which way you want? It's called improv. Improv. Improv quilting. This is a bunch of scraps, right? So you've just literally sewn. Any bits and bobs all together? Bits and bobs. Into an improv. Into an improv. <laughs> and now, take this ruler. No. And you can cut. This is what I love about the ruler. You can see through it. You can cut this diamond out of all of these. Nice. Or change it like this. Now, is it all right to change the direction of the grain? Because these are all, I suppose, off grain anyway, aren't well, they? Well, what you could do, if you get nervous about that, put another piece of fabric on the back. But oh, yeah. I don't. No, 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 no. Just... Look at, look at what you can get. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so let's show you a whole quilt that we've done like this. Right. Oh, and now, Catherine says, hello, looks like a great day for my 60th birthday. Can't wait. <gasps> Say hello to Jill, lovely oh. lady. Happy birthday, Catherine. My daughter's named Catherine. Oh, is she? Yeah. So mm. here was our strip that yes. we started out with. Yeah. Just a bunch of pieces of fabric sewn together. A bunch. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, a, bits a, and bobs. a lot. Yes, a lot, of a, lot of a lot of fabrics. And you know, you take the ruler and you go ahead and cut, and you have that beautiful, beautiful result. Look, 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 look. So that's strips sewn together. Yes. Mixed in with a solid triangle. Yes. And off you go. It's, and what I love as well is where the where the strips and the solid meet together. It kind of gives another 
dimension, it, doesn't it? It has movement to it. Yes, yeah. It has movement to it. That's beautiful, right? Okay. All right, now, let's look at the quilt, John, that's behind us. Yes. Okay, do you, you see hexagons, but it's actually made out of triangles. Oh, so yes. So let's break this down. <clears throat> So you take your two and a half inch strips. Yep. Again, I love to cut two and a half inch strips or if you have a jelly roll, go ahead and use that. Yep. And what you are going to do is sew right sides together. Yep. So you're making basically a striped piece of fabric. You're going to cut your triangles Right. Out of that. Yeah. Just so you know, the graphic that's come in is the shape cut that Jill used earlier. Lots of people asking about it. That was the one that we used earlier. The strip cutter, and we're going to use yeah. that throughout the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now I have triangles with the polka dot at the point and with the blue oh, at the point. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And yes. now we so can... So you just, you've just twisted them up and down, up and down, up and down like that. Back and you? forth, up and down. Yeah. That's what gives you this shape. So my polka dot, let's, let's speak in terms of that. Yes. Your polka dot looks almost like it's moving around yeah, like in circles. Yeah, like a saw wheel almost. Right. Or if you prefer, you can have this look to it. By just using the alternate. Right. So break it down. It's yeah. still the triangle. It's always the triangle made out of the strips. So very, very pretty options like this. And you can play around with these all you want but I love the movement in this quilt. Yeah, because we've got, uh, I just presumed when we got that out earlier, that, that was going to be, because we've got something called Hexy coming up later. We have that? you Hexy thing. Yes. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that must be no. the Hexy thing. Not no. even thinking All of triangles. Is. All it is. So easy. So easy to do. And if you look at the white here, do you know what this is? Triangles. It is. But it is two equilaterals sewn together to make that. Perfect. So the triangle is non-intimidating and it adds so much to the quilt. Don't be intimidated, no. make triangles. Perfect, perfect. Right, right, so where are we? We're 20 minutes past the hour, so Okay, let's... now we're gonna talk about my favorite of all June Taylor products. Yes. Favorite, favorite. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. I'm gonna put a piece so of I'm paper. So I'm tidying up as we go along, don't worry. I'll take that one I, away. I love that you're tidying up. There you go. So. We are going to talk a little bit about... What's this, what's this then? This is our quilt basting spray. Oh, yes, 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 yes. All right, let's I'll talk about I'll hold it so we can this. have a look at it while you look at that. Okay, so what this is used for, what it was designed for, quite honestly, yes. was to baste your quilt back on quickly. Oh, when you're making your sandwich? Yeah, that's the part, you know, that's not very fun, no. right? That's not very fun. So you're going to shake this up. This is has a very slight odor to it. Right. This can will allow you to do about three queen size quilts. Perfect. That's a lot. Right. The adhesive and propellant, that's all it is, adhesive and propellant. If you haven't, if you spray it, you haven't quilted it for a while, it will eventually evaporate. Right. Once you wash it, it'll wash away. Perfect. So we're going to start, and I, I'm not going to do a lot here. No. You want to be in a ventilated area. I was going to say, we should open a window over here. Well, and I'm going to start <laughs> from the center work toward the outside edge. If a bunch of days go by and you haven't had a chance to quilt it, yeah. you're going to take out your iron and you are going to heat your iron with steam. Yes. And you're going to reactivate that adhesive. Oh, okay. 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 So if you get lazy and you don't have time to do your quilt, don't worry. Okay. You now you're always spraying it. the batting. I spray the batting, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But isn't, do you, I don't even smell anything, do you? Uh, no, I, mean, I, 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 mean, I was just having a whiff because I couldn't smell anything, no. You were having a whiff. Okay, so <laughs> I just want you to know, yep. this is a nice, you know, tri speaking of triangles, we used our perfect half and quarter <laughs> square triangle. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> You're like a steam train. You're, I was going to ask one quick question. If you put, put it in the wrong place, can you pick it up and put it back down again? You can. You can. Repositional, that's what Repositionable. Okay, see that? It's got ever so slight... So yes, let's pick that up yeah. and say, John got it crooked. Yeah, what as usual. What do with him? All right, there we go. Brilliant. So it's a reposition. So you don't have to worry about spraying it on and then going, oh, I've made the right old mess of that. Not a problem at all. Uh, no. Isn't it? Is it? It's lovely. It is, saves you so much time. Yes. No pinning. No so pacing. could you now start just quilt that? That's what you, it, exactly what you So you do. don't have to, you just go for it. Yes. And before you start quilting, yes. what I would do Spray, this is going to seem crazy. No, no. Spray starch on the back of this. Do you know why? No. It gives it a little slipperiness 
And oh, when you, so when you are going on through. your feed dogs, it's like dancing. You know, it's just so perfectly. How brilliant. So I do like starch. You yes. starch when you get it out of the washer and dryer. You starch when you're piecing. You starch, you know, when you're sewing. Yes. It is going to be, these are going to be the best two tools in your quilter's toolbox. A starch and an adhesive. Perfect. But if you... Oh, I want to show you what this is yeah. a cute. Can little, I move that one then? Yeah, that's a cute little quilt when it's done, isn't it? It's so adorable. Oh, now, Quick yeah. So easy. that was. Th th were you going on to this then? This is the um, yeah. perfect half square and quarter square triangular ruler. Exactly. Okay, that is what we make half square triangles, and we can also make quarter square triangles. Perfect. Yes. Now, if you are into embroidery, um, this piece has to stick to this interface. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. There's lots of different ways to do that, but the way I like to do it is simply use, use this your basting. basting spray. Even though it says quilt basting spray, people that do embroidery. So any, it's just like, a so it's putting, it's attaching your fabric to the stabilizer so yeah. it doesn't slip. Yeah, and it doesn't get the frame all messy. You're basically just spraying this piece of fabric. Yeah. And then slapping. Slap it. Not slapping it on, but yeah. placing it on. <laughs> Technical term, <laughs> slapping it on. Uh, and then you can do your, do your embroidery through what, like you've done there. Through exactly. There. So don't think just about quilting. No, 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 no. I was going to ask that if you could use it for other things as well. Perfect. Now we're going to use it for one more thing. Here. Right. Let's move this away. Yeah, this is still the basting spray you're using, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, let's talk about more improv. So this is fabric on the back, it's strips sewn together yes. and quilted. Right. You have this in your stash. You have something like this yeah. definitely in your stash. Okay, now you can cut out using that circle Mix template. Mix and match circles here. Right. And using this one, also six. This is the leaf. Okay, so I've got mix and, ma mix and match circles and I've got mix and match leaf. Okay. All right. And how, do you, how have you done that? So then? now what we are going to do, let me show you the end result. Lovely. We're going to make it basically like a fabric sticker. So you take your quilt basting spray okay. and you just, oops, oh. spray it right there. Yeah. And you're going to just push it down like this. Right. And it sticks. Now, oh. if you like to do applique. On the fabric, please, Jo. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you like to do applique, the old-fashioned way yes. is to use like a fusible. Yeah, a bond web, like a bond web, yeah. A, a, bond web, we call a, it. You mean, is it paper? When you iron your paper, take yeah. the paper off, iron and then you it back draw, on. Yes, draw, yeah, yeah. It's very tedious. Yeah. This allows you to just spray okay. and place. And then you can go ahead and either do a little bit of stitching. Uh, but that, that's obviously only to hold it while you stitch it. You could, that's not, that wouldn't hold it forever, would no. it? No. This is a temporary adhesive. And we want it to be that way because if you have a quilt and you're snuggling up with it, you don't really want it to have an adhesive. No, exactly. You know? exactly. So, but then again, if you've done that and you think, oh, I didn't want the flower there, I wanted it over here, you can just peel those off. You can lift it them. up. Yeah. yeah. So you're basically creating your own little fabric stickers. So easy to use and there's just nothing in the way. And that fusible that you would normally have in there is gone now because yes. you've been using this. Yes, 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 because your Vondaweb is in, is in there or whatever fusible fabric thing you use. I it's in there. Your, I love the, yeah, the terminology you guys <laughs> use. I think it's so... It's so okay, so I'll All move right, that one now, on. Move that one on, move that one on. Let's move on to... Uh, let's see. Let's just fold this paper in half really. Right, so where are we going now then? This thing. Where are we going now? Yes. All right. So we are going to talk about little mug mats for your breakfast, for nice. your cup of tea and scone and clotted, clotted you cream. Have, you didn't have scone for breakfast? I didn't. I had a granola bar. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called the log cabin mug mat. Can we take those you out of the take package? You can take it on as they're, brand they're, new. comes with three mug mats. And you're saying, what's oh. a mug mat? It is... I'll, a, yeah, I'll take that one away. This is what it ends up being. It's a little oh, tiny uh, placemat. But you get three you in get there. You get three of them in here, okay? And now two's company, three's a crowd. Why well, are the three people having breakfast together? That's Three people, to or you keep one and give two as gifts. Oh, okay. Or you have yes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. And then you wash them Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, oh yes. Mm -hmm. So these little guys, 
This is the perfect size for a cup of tea and a breakfast treat. Yes. A mug of beer and pretzels, or for me, a glass of wine, of course. Yes. Little, We've moved off breakfast now, obviously, we, not well, beer for breakfast. It's five o'clock somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, okay, <laughs> we're going to start out by cutting out our little projects. Okay. So, we're going to cut out our batting. Right. And I, I've done that here. Okay, can Here's I just you said you could wash these then once they're made? Yep, they're all this is highly washable. Because, because obviously, you, got, you are going to spill if it's tea or wine or beer. Absolutely. You are going to have spillage. It's like a placemat. You yes. want to be able to wash yeah, of it. Course. So, you cut your backing out. We tell you what size to cut it. Right. And then we spray our basting oh, spray. Oh, basting spray. Which I would do, except you took the paper away, but that's okay. That's all right. It's that's there. okay. It's there. So we're going to center. Yes. We're going to center our... Do you want me to get the paper back? No. You that's sure? all right. I'd rather give you a hard time about it. <laughs> <laughs> you said you wouldn't do that. No, right. I didn't say I was going to do that. Okay. We're going to center this on here. On the background fabric. And you're going to say, why is all this extra hanging off? Yes. And I'm going why to is show all you. that extra hanging off? I'll show you a okay. little bit later. It's okay. suspense. Right. Okay. But you've, where have you cut? You haven't cut on the line of that. I didn't. You just I cut gave beyond. you a little bit of a border of a quarter an inch, which is a common quilters would know that. Yeah. Okay. Then I have you cut all your fabrics out. So I've basted this on with my basting, with this basting spray. spray. Now this, of course, I needed to stiffen. Right. And I, I'm going to tell you why you want to do this. Right. We do not want to touch our hot iron. Let's take this away. Yeah. We don't want to touch our hot iron to batting when we're constructing. Right. Because it will shrink. Okay. So. I'm going to starch this yeah. so that we can do something called finger pressing. Are you familiar with that? I am indeed. Okay. All right. So while we were talking, I let that starch soak in a okay. little. Okay. Piece number one goes in square number one like this. Okay. Piece number two. Right. I was right. Going, do, do you not put any ba uh, basting spray on the back of that one? Does that just sit there? I didn't, but you could. Okay. But just trying to help the yes, sale here. Yes, you, know. I, I, you could do that, yeah. but you took my paper away. so I. Oh. No, 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 no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Here, let's do this. Yeah, Jesse made me take it away. Let's just add. Well, I just was trying to keep your table clean. Let's just That's do a, a, a little, little to kind of keep yeah. it held in place. You don't really need a lot. No. There. We'll go like that. Right? Yes. But so that would be, might be good for foundation. When you're doing foundation paper piecing, you have to put the first one yeah. down, don't you? You yeah. could just use a little spray of that, couldn't you? And you're all set. Perfect. Right. This thing you can use for everything. If I could spray my hair with it, trust me, I would. But, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't. Well, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I'm just kidding. Right sides together, take piece number two, which is a rectangle. Raw yes. edge is even. And this is the hardest part for people to understand. These lines aren't sewing lines, they're placement lines. Right. Sew in a quarter inch, flip that open. Right. Now, I have that done here. Right. Okay. Now, I will let you take the paper away because it's, it's ruining the beauty. <laughs> Don't you think? Story of my life. It's ruining the beauty. So now, I've sewn in a quarter of inch. Yes. Flipped open piece two. Yes. And I'm finger pressing. Now, it's working almost like an iron because I have it properly starched. Yes. Okay. Then we're going to take and add on piece number three. So you've starched that one, ironed it. I have starched all of these, yes, ironed yeah. it, right sides together, raw edges even, and fold that over. And that looks like this right here. What a brilliant teacher this woman is. Oh, it's disappeared. Wow, 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 I love Jill Rep. First time I've seen a fabulous project. Triangles, here I come, but bank account will be groaning. That's Emma. <laughs> and what was the first one? The, what a brilliant teacher this woman is. Her samples and explanation are wonderful. Thank you, Jill, from Jean. Well, thank you, Jean. Thank you, everybody. This is, this is so fun for me. Vanessa, good morning, John and Jill. What a treat for us all today. We're just lovely watching and learning from Jill. She's so very well organized. Hope you enjoy your day. Oh, we will. We'll yes. have a great day together. So we're going to keep going, piece four, five, and six, yep. right sides together. Yep. I got that done. And I've, I've shown you all the steps. Do you want to know why? I want you to know I'm sewing once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And that's it. That's it. Now, let's add piece five. Yes. And that looks like this. Yeah. And I'm finger pressing yes. all the time. And finger pressing is what helps it stay perfect. I was going to say, so you don't put an iron anywhere near uh -huh. it once now. you... You iron the fabric over there, but once you're on the batting, you don't iron now, it. Now, right. I could... Let's take this over here. And I could iron now because oh, okay. my fabric is covered. Oh, I see. So it's all right to iron the batting. fabric. No, wadding. My wadding is covered. You can call it batting. It's fine. You're wadding or you're batting? My wadding is covered. Yes. Okay, now, okay. because I had you cut the backing larger... We're going to do something called self-binding. OK, uh, so um, instead of making your own yes. binding, you're going to, I want you to fold up to the, to the raw edge of the batting, yes. fold again, 
and stitch on top. So Clever. you is it now? Is this in the instructions? When you get the when you get your instructions out of here, is that in the instructions? Oh. Don't look at me like that. She's looking at me going. I'm going to give you all the instructions except that one. I'm going to hold that one back on you. Of course, it's in the instructions, and there are. I know what you designers are like. That's all. Go on. Yes. Okay. So now you're going to say, well, how am I going to do that corner? Yeah, how you can do that corner? Okay. So we we're going to hold this like this. All yes. right. Now. I'm going to bring this down at a 45 degree. Right. Oh, hang on. Let's just get that. Let's get this close to. Right. Okay. Got it? Yeah. And now I'm going to fold and fold again. All right. Right. And that is going to make that pivot point. Okay. Right. right. What here. we need to do is do the whole of that again, but with the upstairs camera showing to you. So just fold it all back. So you folded that one over and over. Yeah. Fold. Yeah. Up to the edge of the batting. Yeah. Fold again. Yeah. All right. Now, ready? Yeah. We're gonna right, right angle. Degrees, yeah. Down. Yeah. And down again. <gasps> but it's much easier to do when you're sewing this because then you see that nice point it makes. Yes. You pivot right here in the corner. You pivot right there. When you're stitching it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how you finish those off. Perfect. So if you wanted to make three. Now we've changed this. Oh, yes. I, I neglected to say five inch charm square, two and a half inch strips. Oh. Five inch, two and a half. Yeah. So your three might give you this three. Yeah. Like that. Or you might like this three like that. Yeah. And we're going to take a, in a minute, I'm going to show you how to fussy cut this okay, perfect. little five yeah. inch square here. This is another one of my favorites. If you like flowers, this is another. Yes. Isn't that a beautiful set? Absolutely. Or, or use your scraps, and then you get a little oh, bit of Oh, all different, yeah. Or cave, though, yeah. If, you, oh. if you like to do embroidery, you yes. could do a monogram or yeah. some kind of a letter like that. That's or, very boudoir, that one, isn't boudoir, it? Very boudoir, yes. This would be for your nighttime. Your champagne, yes, I was thinking. Yes, for your champagne. Yes, yes. What would you have with champagne on your mug mat? You'd have champagne and... Olives. And olives, I of think. Course. I'm vegetarian, I wouldn't want anything else. <laughs> um, oh, this is cute. Okay, this is our photo fabric. Yes. So you run this through your inkjet printer, and mm -hmm. you can actually sew with it. So would you not like to wake up to that little cute oh, every day? But you wouldn't want to put your mug on there, though, would you? Uh, no, I put it right here. <laughs> but this is washable too. Oh, perfect, perfect. perfect. So now, w can I step over here and show you what you we're going to do? You can go do whatever you like. Do whatever okay. you like. So I'm putting these away, putting that away, putting that away. Can oh, you keep one out? I just, can keep one out. Yes. Just any one. Yeah. All right. What are you going to show us next then? Well, what I'm going to show you is oh. if, uh, if you make these they're as cute as they can be and you purchase you know a little inexpensive mug yeah like this and you want an, a really fun gift for somebody roll this up like this yeah put it in the mug and put your favorite things what 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 your favorite things are or like hot chocolate and things like, like hot that. chocolate Marshmallows. or there's tea if you're a tea oh yes lover, tea. oh of yes of course I have a friend who's a gardener, so I put garden seeds in hers. Not for to eat them, yes. No, 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 to grow them. Yes, Along yes. with her little mug mat. Yes. If you like to play bridge or cards, oh, you can yes. a deck of cards in Very with it. Very nice. And I love to bake, so I am coveting you with my my grandmother's fudge recipe. Thank you. So you could roll that up. Oh, that's what's going there as well. In that's here. Good, yeah. And then what you do is just get this clear tissue like this. Yeah and put this in here, draw these up like this. Oh, and ribbon. Here. Oh, we had the lovely ribbon yesterday. This time with bow. You have a gift that is handmade that speaks to the person that you're giving it to because you've well, it's all, it's all, it's all personalised, isn't yeah. it? You've done all the things. You see, this is what I say about people who buy expensive gifts. Sometimes you get an expensive gift and you think, why have they spent all that money on something I don't even like? Or, and yeah. yet, if somebody was to buy me, I say, you know, kind of candles or, or tea, tea that I like, fruity teas and things like that. It's so, even though it's only cost them so much less, it's so much more, it's isn't so it? Personal. Yes, exactly. And in, in America, we're huge on teacher gifts. Like, teachers get gifts all the time. Yes, oh, yes, yes. It's coming, it's coming well, over here. And yeah. they get coffee mugs all the time. Yeah. But why not give them something more with it? 
and this little mug that has some personalization has yeah. some thought that's put into it. Or if you want to, we can start looking at Christmas. Christmas time. already. Because it's going to be here before we know it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it will be. So we have a little Christmas fabric here. Yes. Same with our five-inch squares, our two-and-a-half-inch yeah. strips. Roll that one up and just get a little gold. Fill it up with treats, and away you go. Perfect. Start your Christmas gifts now. Well, no, no, exactly. If you look Start on our now. Facebook fan page, there are so many people already making things for Christmas and things like that. Why not? Like that. People well, make it But it's still round. sewing. You're still enjoying sewing. It's not like you're, it's not like you're going to use it now, but it's kind of... Just, you're still loving doing the sewing, so it doesn't yeah. matter, does it? Okay. Absolutely. What's this then? Well, remember how I said that we had that little five inch charm square? Yes, yep. So we have a little baby shape cut. Right, it's called the charming shape cut, Paul, this one. Okay, what I have, this is with the white backing yeah, on it, yeah. okay? Yes, so yours will arrive like this. This, Jill's just put the white paper on the back of this so you can see what's actually on the ruler. But it works like the shape cut, and there are slots every half inch. Right. This works great when you are squaring up blocks five inches yes. or less. Yeah. When you want to cut two and a half inch strips. This works great when you want to fussy cut. Right. And I wanted to fussy cut the five inch block of those mug mats. Yes. I don't want to use the big shape cut ruler because it's just too big to yes, handle. Yes, yes, yes. But this is what I want to use. I also, we have a little rotary cutting mat yes. that goes with it. So this is a small mat, this one, this cute little small mat. And this is perfect to have near your sewing machine for yes. just trimming points and all that kind of stuff. It works wonderfully for that. It also has the 45 um, degree mark on, which often we use when we're quilting. Yes. 45 is just a really handy mark. So. We have one of these, and I want to show you what I'm talking about. Are you, you're familiar with fussy cutting? Yes, indeed. So we have. But there's several. Oh, it's gone. Somebody's just somebody just sent in a message saying I'm new to all this, and I'm loving what Jill's telling me because I didn't know any of this. So we. We have new oh, it is. I'm very new to this and helping me a lot. Thanks, Jill, from Susan in East Sussex. Oh, because you're Because we have new Susan. viewers all the time coming yeah. in. Do you know what I mean? So fussy cutting is is basically highlighting a beautiful piece of the fabric. And yeah. I thought this was such a great example yeah, because I love this part right here. Oh, now, funny, because it's all about the squirrels, really, isn't it? But you love the little well, flower I in do. between. So look at, look at what this piece looks like versus what that piece looks yes. like. Yes. Or you could hone in on all these flowers. Yeah. So if you wanted to, the, you know, I love this ruler. The X in the middle says, I want to be smacked oh, in yes. the middle of those two squirrels, right? That doesn't sound no. good, but you know, we, we, we love the, the little motifs all around. So to do this, these are, I just kind of pre-cut these a little bit, but let's try and finish these off. Yeah, okay. Okay. So I take my, my ruler. Um, the ruler is designed for righties or lefties, zero to five. Yeah. I'm a lefty. Oh, facing yes, you, yes, 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 yes. Oh. Is that because you're a lefty and you kind of think, we call it left-handed person, right? But is that because you're important to the company? You go, what about the left-handed people? No, I just never thought about it any other way because I'm like, oh, zero to 12. That's oh, how, of that course. Is, in fact, the first shape cut ruler went zero to 12 until somebody said, that's backwards. Oh, yes. And then we put the numbers going in the other Other direction. Yep. So let's see this. It's X in the middle. Yes. Okay, I'm going to try to center here's that. The, here's, sorry, yeah. which cross no, this There's this one. So here's the cross in the middle here. Okay. So we're going to try to center this. Right. And cut. And I'm just going to use this flower. So I'm going to cut at the zero. Yes. And I'm going to cut at the five. This is going to make a charm square for us. Right. I'm going to turn the mat yeah. and center it again. Charm squares are really popular and really easy to work with. It's funny, when we get a new collection of fabric and there's, there's uh, jelly design rolls, charm squares and uh, fat eights and fat quarters, the charm squares are the first to go. They're right. the most popular. Because they're just so versatile mm. and you can, we're going to show you how to mix them with equilaterals, you can mix them with any other shape. This is what I would have used for that corner of the mug mat. Yes, yes. Oh yes, of course, yes. You know, it, it worked out perfectly. Or we could do our little squirrels that you see here or focus in on anything yes. else 
And this I quite is... like that. You see, I would automatically go for the squirrel, but actually the fact that you've gone for the flower in the middle and you framed it with the squirrel's ta tail, they don't look like tails, they look but like scrolls. But you would never know they? that's what that is. No, 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 that's and what I mean. It looks like a yes. gothic scroll or something. So it? many designers now, quite honestly, are coming out with these big prints and they're great because you can take, you know, this print and it can look completely different. Yes, totally. Like it's from a, a different fabric. Yes, yeah. So this is a handy little tool. Charm shape cuts, lovely, it's at 23 night time. So you can do, just go to, you can do fussy cutting, you can do strips, you can do triangles. Right, um, and squaring up blocks. Squaring up blocks, yeah. So we're gonna, in the second hour, we're gonna talk about easy ways to square up blocks that are five inches and higher, but this is really good for those and people that do miniatures. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. But also, also lots need. and lots of quilts that we do. Quilt care. They have uh, lots and lots of like little triangles and little strips and everything. That and people just want to have that little, little, yeah, little niceness, isn't it? Yeah. And I don't know if this is big here, but you can also cut fringe with this. So I'm going to lay it under my little mat like right. that. Say I wanted to cut three-inch fringe. Yeah. I would cut in every single slot opening. You got it. Yeah. And I'm cutting up to the three-inch line. What would you need fringe for? What do you, you need could fringe use for? that on, you know, leather or suede or anything like that. And you get perfect half inch fringe. Nice. And I cut up to the three inch line. If you want quarter inch fringe, just start it over at a quarter of oh, an inch. Yes. And we'll call that sub cutting. Yep, yep. Sub cut up to three inches. In between the two ones that you've already done. And you have perfect quarter inch fringe and also brilliant if you start if you use the starch on that fabric beforehand then oh, as always. you're cutting the yeah. fringe it's going to yeah. stay nice and clean and sharp isn't i it? starched all this before we began so yeah if i were going to sew this into the mug mat i definitely want to get another dose on yeah just in the time we're talking we can we can go ahead and yes. press and by the way there's a lot of people that spray both sides um let it air dry a little bit yeah and now, now spraying it. it on to, because we've got that lovely uh, block that we're going to talk about in your next hour, the cushion quilters this. block that people oh. have been messaging in about. Yeah. Your spa starch isn't ruining that, is it? The no. starch isn't, isn't... No, no, this is just fine. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more ab about this, but the grid is used for squaring up, for hemming. You can actually press your quilt blocks square. You don't have to cut them square, you can actually press them square. How brilliant. Well, we'll go through that, and okay. that's in the next hour, isn't right. it? Your next hour, isn't it? Let's What's the go, last thing from this hour, then? Let's go through one more thing. And this is a different set of mug mats. Oh, right. I like them both. I like them both, but this one, let's open these, gives you three different designs. This one's called two and a half strip mug mat, this one. Right. So instead oh, oh. of all three of the same, all yeah. three are different. So now you're gonna have to pick who, which one you like best for your best friend, right? Yeah, because there's three. Now, is one more difficult? Like, if somebody's never done this before, is one a bit easier than the other two? Oh, that's supposed to be I would say this is the easiest yes. because you can see, again, two and a half inch strips. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, bind. This is also very easy. And this is actually one of my favorite ones. Yes, I like that one as well. We start in the center. This is the one I'm going to demo for you. Oh, okay, the way perfect. To the outside perfect. edge. And uh, then this one is called the braid. Like that, it's like, a, uh, like one of those lovely floors, parquet floors, isn't it? Hello, John and Jill. Always want to try quilts to go. Jill, you make it look so easy. Great show from Michelle in Essex. It is easy, Michelle. It's right. super, super easy. So do you want so, to cut? Oh, no, you've got one over there. I've got one already cut out. So we're going to start from the beginning. And then I'm going to show you some other. I'm going to show you how the fabric choices really change this up Perfect. a good bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now, first of all, my first step would be that I would attach this and I've so used, used your basting I've spray. My basting spray to attach it. Yeah, to the okay. backing. These have all been starched. starched. Okay. Like you say, every every single project you've shown I've starched. That they're but they must be buying your ironing board the whole time when you're working at home. They must be an yeah. essential that sit on yeah. your table the whole time. Yes. And this, you know, the other thing is this is a very robust yes. trigger <clears throat> because you want this thing to last a long time. So, oops, sorry. It's all right, don't worry. <laughs> um, it, it's actually made for a lady's hand. It's a little bit of a smaller bottle yeah. so that it fits nicely in your hand. Not all men have big hands, you know. Well, um, yes, that's Paul's right. Little tiny hands. Yes, yes, so it, it's, it's fine. We yes. make it for one size fits. Yeah, one, one size, size fits all. Right, fits okay, all. so again. Piece number one, 
Okay, now right. this is on an angle. Don't worry about it that it's on an angle. You've starched it. And um, it's you're really just sewing a straight line. Yes, yes, yes. These two right sides together, raw edges even. Yeah. Sew in a quarter inch. Not on the line. Flip. <clears throat> yeah. And that gives you this yeah. right here. Perfect. And then we finger press yeah. because we've done our starching, so that works perfectly. Now, I'm going to speed it up a little bit because... <laughs> As if we could. All right. Yeah. So we're going to get piece four, flip, five, flip. Yeah. And that looks like this yeah and then our corners now this is a rectangle don't don't worry this is a rectangle right here right we're gonna sew and then when we're done we're gonna lift these all up yeah and you can either press these back like this so that you can easily see where to trim or you can just cut. You can just yes. take your scissors and simply cut. So what what are you cutting away then? You're cutting away these little guys. Oh, okay, okay. So that you get this. I see, I see, I see. So I see, that I see, you see. get this. Right. Now, this one's done. Mm -hmm. Okay, and remember we're going to fold and fold. fold. Get right. to the corner, Good 45 the corner. degree, 45 fold degrees. and fold. And you want to pivot, pivot at the corner. Yeah. You've got it. I've got it. So now, let's do a couple more here. Yeah. This is a pin, which is we Shouldn't don't want to have. Mm -hmm. um, this, let me see. Let's look at a little. Do you have a popularity of the reds and whites? Uh, we have lots of people who love red work. We have a designer called Mandy Shaw who does red work, and everybody loves red work. So doing something like this, they absolutely that perfect? Adore, yeah. I mean, I think that is, how would you like to brighten up your day with those? Yes, I think exactly. They're so. Now, let's take, you were asking me hardest. This one I still think is the easiest. Right. Here you go out of a whole different colorway. And your braid. It looks completely different, doesn't it? So you really have to either do one of two things. Either pick fabrics you love. Um, you don't have to make them all the same. Pick them out of your stash. Well, no, Pick no, I was going to say, because there's, unless there's two of you sitting at a breakfast table, most of the time you're going to be using this. It doesn't really matter, so you can just throw them on the okay. table if you've got friends coming round. Yes. And literally, you could have different, diff somebody could have a different one. You know, I'll have that one, you could have that one, yeah, someone else could disgusting. have, you know, it's brilliant. I did, I did these for my girlfriends. I did 12 of these, rolled them all up, put them in the mugs, and used them as their placeholders. So when they arrived at the dinner party, oh. it was this just lovely, it, it was just so cute. So think about that, and think about utilizing your stash for two and a half inch strips. Get your shape cut ruler out, cut everything into two and a half inch strips, because mm -hmm. you're always going to be able to so, use it. Yes, either using sh the shape cut, or of course, when, when people open a design roll or jelly roll, most of the time they don't use everything in it. Right. And you have two or three left over that you just put in the drawer, two or three left over you just put in the drawer, and then you think, well, what am I going to do with those? But this would be ideal, it's wouldn't a, it? Exactly. Oh, so many messages coming through. Oh, there's nothing there, Paul, at the moment. Okay, this is my favorite fabric. I yep. love the, the pinks and the orange. This is all scraps. None of this have even coordinated. But look at, and this one is for me because it has a little cocktail on it. And oh, it see. And <laughs> this one is for me because I start out my day with coffee. Oh. Isn't that cute? And this is, you know, just just a hodgepodge of fabrics. Hodgepodge, that's nice. Hodgepodge. Amanda says, morning, John and Joe, loving the demonstrations. Can you tell me what the scent of the spray is? Excellent question. Nothing. Nothing. We, we can't it's smell nothing. it. Nothing. Oh, that um, one's nothing, and that one oh, that has I'm got. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. <clears throat> both, both of them. But okay. this one has. This one's no spray. Unscented. And this, so that's unscented. This one says it's got a slight scent, but yeah, we couldn't smell it we, when we sprayed no. it though. What, but, what, but the spray, the starch is unscented. Unscented. No potato. No corn. Man-made. You can't <clears> smell it. No potato. <laughs> no corn. Well, you know that's what you get when you get the inexpensive. <clears throat> when you're pressing your clothes, yeah. and you press it with the iron, and it turns white. That's potato yeah. or corn. I don't yeah. know what it is. Some vegetable, yeah. right? Um, this has, yeah. If you're spraying a queen size quilt, but it 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 that scent just goes away pretty quickly. It evaporates. It does. There is a scent, but then also when you then wash the quilt, it just disappears. The whole yes. lot goes anyway, yes. doesn't it? So I've got the, something in mind. If you if you have something that stays just stuck in it forever, it's probably because one of your fabrics might be uh, full of polyester. Right. And I'll tell you what, if you really have an issue getting it out, and we don't have this happen, you could dry clean. Okay. But letting it, you know, giving it a, a couple of days after you've quilted it, or washing it, 
ultimately well, just put it outside on, the, on a sunny day, put it outside on the line, get yeah. some fresh air through it because there's yeah. nothing nicer either than bed linen or, or quilts or anything that have been through, that the, through that the, fresh, the fresh air yes. outside. Yeah, exactly. And you don't need a heavy hand. Did you see no. when I, I was hardly spraying? Yeah, oh no, because I'd be rubbish for that because when I, when I do sprays, I go shh, 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 yeah, shh. You, you, don't need that. We don't need that. And I don't know if I said this, but we start in the center and work toward the outside edges. Oh, so, so if you're doing a big queen size quilt, you start in yeah. the middle and work outwards. And even if you're, even if <clears> you've got it rolled, I'd still start kind of in the center of the row and then roll yes, it on yes, down. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, so now let's. Um, I, I just cut these pieces out because I was. I wanted you to see. There's just not a lot of fabric you need to do one no, of these. No, no, that really is just your scraps, so, isn't it? So two and a half. Just keep on going. Perfect. All right, now we. Do we have a, a question? I uh, know, but we. Are, I think how many minutes do I have, Jesse? Two minutes, Two that's minutes. all I've got left. So Can we talk about the mat? You can, well, that was going to be my question, because these feel different. very different yeah. to other mats. They are, they are. Let's turn it in this direction yeah. Let so me take that away you the can small see. One. Yeah. So June Taylor actually developed this with a sports physician. Okay. Have we got this? This is the medium, uh, this is the medium size right. one. Yeah. yeah, later yeah. on today we'll have the large Large size. one, and okay. then this was the smaller one we had earlier. Exactly. So these mats are hard surface. So that means your rotary cutter is not cutting the plastic. Oh, okay. So when you talk about blades dulling or your wrists getting tired, why are you cutting the plastic? Yes. All we really want to do is cut the fabric. So when someone uses the hard surface mat, the first thing they do is they say, it lays really flat, I like that. Because it's very thin. It yes. is very thin, isn't it? Yeah. It has a texture to it. And the texture holds your fabric right. and the ruler Right, yes, because it's got, it's got a kind of, um, almost, if it was fabric, it would be crepe, wouldn't it, or something like that. Yes. that like kind of just that yeah, sort of Yeah, that is made to just hold your fabric yeah. in place. The other thing is the hard surface is easier on the blades. Okay. So you don't dull your blades. You use a good sharp blade and you keep it just cutting the fabric and not the mat. You'll be in great shape. So this mat won't ever show... Um, cuts in it and things it, like that. It is not. I used uh, for three days in a row this week. I cut all day long. Yeah. And it, it might get a little like white lines, but you can just go like this and it, the cut marks just go away. It, you're not cutting the mat. Yeah. I don't want you to cut the mat. No, 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 exactly. I want you to cut the fabric. The other thing is, let's turn this over. The uh, lines, your measuring lines, are outside the cutting grid. Sometimes you have to actually lift this up to see where your grid is, but our markings are outside the grid. Perfect. Uh, that's it. Cause we've just, uh, was there something else? Just one more thing. Two. Two more things. Can I do two more? Do two more things. It's absolutely Quickly. fine. Yeah, go on. Handle. This is great to carry. Oh, with yes. You. It is also great to hang. So yes, if you can yes. hang your mat, that's the best. Last but not least, yep. they're weather safe. So this will stay flat in the hot sun. This oh, will stay yeah. flat in the freezing cold. We had the polar vortex in the Midwest. It was 26 below for four days in a row. Yeah. I had this mat in the, tr the boot of my car. And I was like, oh, I forgot about my mat. Went out there, flat as a pancake. How brilliant. So weather safe, yeah. handle, hard surface, yeah. easy on the wrist, yeah. grid um, with the numbers on the outside. Perfect. <gasps> Amazing, as always. That's the first hour done. Jill will be back in an hour's time and then another hour's time after that. But next, it's Helen Rhiannon with the most gorgeous, uh, very, well, it's a Vogue pattern. It's a Vogue pattern, a lovely, like, uh, Chanel jacket. We'll see you in three from now. Help us celebrate a new pattern launch at Sewing Quarter. Indie dressmaking brand Emporia makes its debut on Friday with owner, designer and teacher Claire Heal. At 10 a.m., Claire introduces her relaxed Alice trousers, inspired by joggers with deep cutaway pockets and elasticated waist. Choose flattering small-scale prints in stretch cotton for the most comfortable fashion statement in your wardrobe. Claire is back at noon when a love of fuss-free design and Japanese minimalism is evident in her elegant kimono dress. Our selection of warm-toned cotton and linen fabric adds the exotic feel. Simple to use patterns plus Claire's expert tuition means you'll be creating an Emporia sewing spring wardrobe in no time. Friday the 22nd of February, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. There's a buzz in the air about sewing and here at Sewing Quarter we're always looking to inspire new people to pick up the needle and thread and get themselves in front of the sewing machine. 
Whether it's dressmaking that takes your fancy, English paper piecing, embroidery, quilting or bag making, Sewing Quarter explores every aspect of sewing and quilting with amazing demonstrations from special guest designers from all over the world. If you've never purchased with Sewing Quarter before, then today is the day to do so and we've got a fantastic offer for every new customer. Purchase any web or auction product today and you'll receive a free sewing kit worth $14.99 plus free P&P with absolutely no minimum spend. All you've got to do to get your free gift and free P&P is enter the code GIFT at checkout. So why not see what the buzz is about and get sewing with Sewing Quarter? Dreaming of dressmaking but not sure where to start? Join us every Friday for our exciting new dressmaking how-to series. This Friday, our very own Search for a Star winner, Jenny McCreary, is our guide that will show us how to sew children's clothing and faux fur. At 9am, Jenny will be using an easy-to-follow pattern by two stitches. Jenny shares pro tips and techniques live on air for sewing hidden pockets, cosy funnel neck and a fun contrast panel. Then at 11am, Jenny has her own brand new beginner friendly pattern that she will use to show us how to make a faux fur trimmed shawl. Colours include chic arctic white and cuddly teddy bear brown. So set your reminder for Friday morning to build your dressmaking confidence with our new How To series. From 9am the 22nd of February only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. How lovely is this? How gorgeous is this? Uh, the handbag's coming up in, the, in, in uh, Helen's next hour. Oh, it's on back to front. You put that on there. This is coming up in Helen's next hour, so I'll just put that away there. It's called a higher class bag. And I was saying yesterday, oh, I think it means clasp. No, it's a higher class bag, apparently. I'll just put that there anyway. Uh, anyway, isn't this gorgeous? Isn't this lovely? Now, Laura tried it on earlier. Oh, no, you could have worn a decent skirt. With your Chanel looking jacket. It's a nice picture. You look lovely. She looks lovely, but the skirt, we should have cut the skirt out really short. You should have put it on really, Chris, shouldn't you? Yeah. You'd have filled it better, wouldn't you? Anyway, look, isn't it gorgeous? I'll move out the way. Isn't that just fabulous? Now, it's not for a beginner. I'll get Helen to explain all of that in a second. It's not for a beginner. This is for an experienced seamstress, this one. Right, so I've got two patterns. I've got it in sizes 6 to 14 and 14 to 22. 14 to 22 first. They're exactly the same, just different sizes. There you go. Now, the whole jacket is quilted, by the way. The whole jacket is quilted. If you look on the uh, second picture down online, you will see the back of the pattern with all the fabrics you need and the finished sizes, some of the finished sizes on there as well. But obviously it does come up quite snug being a quilted jacket. So do have a look at that before you. Mind you, you see, the thing is, you, that one's there's a 14 to 22. So you can always kind of go the next size up, whatever. And then I've also got 6 to 14, which is this one. Mike. Sorry, but Mike had beans for his tea, sorry. 14 pounds and 49 pence. At 1449, that's the pattern. Uh, now, Fabricos, the one that it's made out of, this beautiful one here, is this. Oh, now, so much for saying we're only getting half a metre to show you. This is a metre. Why not? To boucle, it's beautiful, soft, isn't it? Uh, we need, can get Laura from buying to message through to tell what it's made out of, please. This is Farnham black and blue heavy tweed boucle check fabric. 11.49 for half a metre. Now it's lovely and wide. Beautiful and wide that one, isn't it? Oh, look. It's got a big window pane check on it, hasn't it? By the end of the hour, I'll get Laura to have got your compositions for you so we know the composition of it for you. I haven't got a composition at the moment. Beautiful. So that's the one it's made out of. 
right? Now, the next one is the one that um, Helen's making the sample out of. You might have seen this before. We, oh, <laughs> excuse me. Right, here's the one that Helen's going to use. It's lovely, this one. That's very, very popular. We've had this one before. This is the one that Helen's uh, using to do the sample with uh, during the show, demonstration. 70% wool, this one, and 30% polyester. 145 centimetres wide. Beautiful. It's nice. And those pinks in there are lovely, aren't they? Now, it's called pink and magenta, I think they call that one, but it's got, got like a coffee tone in it. Which one? Should I do that, the, the big check one next there? Because brand new. These are brand new. This is, it says it's a wool tweed. Oh, okay. Are you sure that's that one and not that one? Okay. Okay, so is this, Paul, just so you know. Uh, this is a Vermont Czech black and white, 100% wool tweed fabric. No, don't use the other side. The other side's definitely not, I wouldn't use that side. Personally, personally, it'd be a shame to have that gorgeous chair. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I think, oh no, actually, no. I wouldn't, I'd just use that side. Just use that side. It's got pink in it. It only says black and white in the graphics, but if you look carefully, it's got the softest of softest, Pink window pane check in there. 12 99 for half a metre. 100% wool. Okay, now I've got one here which is like a purple and black melange almost. Black and berry, did you say, is it? Oh, blackberry. Now this might look a little bit dark on your telly, this one. Oh no, oh, that's nice. Blackberry boucle tweed. Now this is a coating weight. Can we get it for the end of the show, please? Twelve ninety nine for half a meter. I've actually got it the wrong way around. It's that way around. It's beautiful. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Blackberry. Ooh. Okay. And then last but not least. Now this one I like. This next one. Ooh. This one, that, that one's shedding a little bit. That one. Just so you know. Look, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, Farn and Black, this is exactly the same as the blue one that we started with. Heavy tweed boucle check fabric. You see, they're calling it tweed. £11.49 for half a metre. That's the, it's not the same pattern, but it's the same mix as the blue one that um, Helen's used. Okay, I'll just fold that one. Oh, now, while I'm here, while I'm here, let me do all, all the other things you might need. Black grow grain ribbon. I've got some black grow grain ribbon. Now, how are we selling the black grow grain ribbon? Now, sadly, um, Laura had an accident with it just before it came on. You get 10 metres of it. You get 10 metres of it. Uh, the roll came under, under literally just as we were. It's a black grow grain ribbon, 10 metres, four pounds and 49 pence. So very fine grow grain that, a very, very fine grow grain. So that's, that's the black one, 10 metres there. And then I've also got it in wine, which is that, what the black one's supposed to look like. <laughs> nice colour. This is how yours will arrive. The wine is more limited than the black. £4.49, strobe a little bit there, isn't it? £4.49, now it's a very lightweight um, grow grain, this one. And then I've also got buttons. Now, the buttons come as a, as a set, do they? Of 12 buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You need eleven, you'll have a spare one. You'll have a spare one. There are the buttons there. Not very, oh, hold one up, there you go. Look, 12 buttons, 9.96. Well, that's good value. Carded, Vogue carded buttons bundle, 19 millimetres, four backs, 12 buttons. 9.96, right, okay, let's go and see uh, Helen. I had to move the table to be able to get right round earlier, there we go. Right, hello you. Hello, how are you? Good I'm to very see you. good, thank you. Oh, I'll just put that there like that for now. Um, now, let, before we start, yeah. I did brief on it there, it's not a first time make, no, is it? No, there's no way of doing 
you know, a, a quick version, it is you take this on as a project and as something that is like a bit of a labour of love, right. which I think is lovely. I think if you've got the time to take it on, I think then... Oh, yes, yes, we're not, we're not oh, trying to diss it, but what no, we don't want lovely. is something, oh, I've never sewn anything, I might no, get that a, jacket. A little bit harder to do. It, there isn't an alternative in there to say, if you don't want to do these techniques, then make it, you know, a quick yes, way. Yeah. I think if you've got the knowledge yourself, then you could just make a, a jacket the normal way without quilting it together. Right. But, you but need you've that got, knowledge. But you've got yeah. a lot of knowledge. Yes. And you said even you were struggling to think, how would I do this how differently? How can I make it quicker? Because obviously I would have loved to have spent, you know, the time yes. hand stitching everything. But there were points where I wanted to just make it, to make the sample. Yeah. Uh, so on the outside, it looks great, but I have cut a few corners. Yes. Which I'll be honest and tell you which bits I have done. Perfect. But, but it's, yeah, it's definitely a, an advantage. Yeah, yeah. So if you're at home thinking, I want to make that. I mean, it is, it's an exquisite shape. It's yeah, a it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful jacket. Um, but like Helen said, it's a labour of love. So if, you're gonna, if you can spend time doing it, then follow the pattern, enjoy oh, every okay. minute of it. But if you've, got a, if you've got a deadline thinking, oh, I'm going to wear that tomorrow night, don't, don't try and do that because no. you'll end up with a bit of a headache. <laughs> size wise. It's, I cut out a size 12. Yes. Which is quite snug. I right. think it's, in, it's a nice, a and nice snug fit. What size is, was Laura's not here, she was here. Wasn't she? Here's Laura wearing it. What size dress does Laura buy on the high street? Can we find out what size dress Laura buys on the high street? Because then we can know. Yeah, but I think we, she looks like an 810. So I think, so she, yeah, 810, she, put 810, on, she exactly, looks like she's got so. room with it on, but yes. you could also have that nice snug fit as a 12. Yes. But, you know, it is Vogue and, you know, patterns do change and it's a quilt, bit. And, and it's, it's quilted. quilted. So, so, okay. Yeah. So now, obviously, we've just said all that. Yes. Can you make a whole jacket in an hour? I'd love to. <laughs> no, I'm going to make a sleeve. Okay. I'm going to get as far with a sleeve. But in the sleeve, if you're thinking at home, oh, only a sleeve. Yeah. All of the um, techniques you're going to use in the sleeve yes. are techniques that appear Absolutely. all the way through. And yeah. if you've got any questions, you don't mind questions no, being sent in. No, fire them, fire them at me. Fire and I'll try and talk through certain parts of, of the jacket yes. as well. Yeah. But I think everything within the sleeve is pretty much what we'll be doing. And also anyway. you're quite happy, aren't you, if somebody buys it and then has an issue with it. They can message you on Facebook yeah, or something absolutely. like that and say, oh, I'm a bit stuck. You don't mind what happens? any of that. No, no. not at all. No, okay, so right, let's go on with it. Right, now. okay. So I've just pulled out what we need to show you for the beginning. Right. So, oh, can I say a cheeky happy birthday to my nephew today? Yeah. I think he's watching. He's in his pajamas. Hello, Maxin. Happy birthday. Just had a quick phone call okay, from him. So hang on. Bless How old him. is he? Four. Oh, okay. My so, nephew. Oh, yeah. no, nephew. Oh nephew. no, he's four. So I, I, I think, think he's. I might have said just twenty-one year old sitting oh, over in his pajamas. Oh gosh, no. no. Uh, so he's four. And what's he's his name? He's four. Maxin. It's the Welsh way for Max. Oh, lovely. So, yeah, so he's, yeah, so I did a quick little phone call oh, earlier saying, hello, four. it's my birthday. Oh. It's very cute. You get lots, uh, you get to get a nice present from your I've aunt, made your him auntie something, Helen. Your auntie yeah, Helen, yeah, auntie yes. Helen. I have made him something. Oh, Has he opened it? Has he got it yet? Not yet. Dinosaur oh. themed. Anything dinosaur is fine. Oh, is he? Oh, Ida loved these fat quotes we had yesterday, the oh, dinosaur yes, fat quotes. Anyway, anyway, have a lovely day. Anyway, back to this. Sorry, yes. happy birthday, man. That's okay. Okay, so what we have to start off with, if I just pull you back to the front. Yeah. I won't go into as much detail as I have before because hopefully at this stage you, you, yes. you, you've kind of got to grips with picking out which pieces you need to cut. Yeah. Although I think you cut every single piece. It's not like there's different versions. This is the jacket you make. Yes. Therefore you cut every piece that you need in the size you need. They do recommend that you make up a toile. So just make a mock-up in probably a heavyish fabric yes. so you've got the weight to it. The thing is, though, remembering though, that your toile won't be... Because they're not going to say do no, a quilted toile, no, are they? just so, for your size. If yeah, you can, because it's going to get smaller yeah. once it's quilted. It's just a bit snug. It snugger, will just it fit get. a little bit yeah, more snug. Yeah. So if you can, just cut out the, the back, the front panels, a sleeve, and just quickly tack them together yeah. so you're not doing all the process. You just no. fit in but you it know as a what? bodice. You see, I'd, I'd quite happily, happily make that out of a heavy calico. Yeah. And, and, and probably wear it. And wear well. it in yeah. summer because it'd be, be a real kind of edgy kind of thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. And it's, I think once you've made it once, then you can see about how yes. you change yeah. it. And I think even without a collar as well, you've still got that beautiful yes. Chanel type oh, yes, shape yes, as well. Yes, exactly. So, you know, make that first one and go from there. Yeah. So you've got all your pattern pieces, you've got your, your lay plan to help you lay it out. But the bits that you really need to focus on are over here. Yes. So there's loads and loads of tips throughout this for the couture process. So you've got tailoring stitches. So it runs through your back stitch and it tells you, do this stitch, use it in these places. You've got a blind stitch. You've oh, got it's nice that they've done all of stitch. that then, yes, yeah. So everything. So you can really see that, you know, lots of things are hand stitched. Oh, they call this. that a catch stitch today. Yeah. 
So that's I've just done my friend Sally. In. Sally who makes the birthday cakes for you. Yeah. I've just hemmed some trousers, really expensive crepe trousers oh. for her, and I did that on it. Oh, mm. that's very fancy. Well. Um, I usually people say, can you alter? I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't normally, but she's so good. Oh, Sally. that is good. She'll be making her cakes watching. Yeah, but. So diagonal stitch, we'll use that to, um, to just, well, I'll show you different bits, but yeah. we'll definitely be using that when you've got fell stitch for joining your seams. So just, you can have a practice. Oh, but that's nice because they're also transferable. Them. So yeah. you, you might not have learned yeah. that. You can use those elsewhere. Yes, Definitely. Thing, yeah. So keep this pattern to yeah. hand anyway. And there's a few more on the back. You've got your running stitch, which we will use, your slip stitch and your stay stitch. Right. All of that on there. So what you'll see is these down here are the sleeve sections, but it tells you to do exactly the same thing on the sleeve sections, which is why I'm focusing on this bit so you can see how yes, it works, rather yeah. than getting a bit overwhelmed with what Oh no, because if we tried to rush through it, we wouldn't get anything <sighs> no. done, would we? And yeah. I really, really thought hard about, yeah. you know, what can I do with this jacket? So I'll lay out your pieces. Now, so it's a three-piece three piece sleeve is, then? It is, it is, and I'm just checking. Good thing, again, things I'm checking, which side this goes. Yes. So you'll see there's two notches there, yeah. which always implies the back. Yeah. And so that actually goes over that side, so your notches match uh, up there. Okay. So little things like that will help. So there's a one notch there and a one notch there, exactly. so you know that that and that bit will... Oh, yeah, yeah so you can see that that will create the sleeve That's head there. That's your sleeve head. That's your underarm. So what they've done is they've just moved that seam is normally... Yeah. There. That that will be matched yes, yeah, over to yeah, there, but I'm just putting it so you can see exactly yeah, where perfect. that is there. So there's lots of markings on here, more than the normal. So you've got your grain line, which yes. is the standard one. When you're cutting out any of the, the check that like you've got there, be very mindful of your grain line. But the good thing is you can place the grain line on the fabric and you should be able to see through so you can line it yes. up straight on your you know, And because your it's a woven the line should be straight on yeah. them, whereas if it's a print, sometimes yeah, it goes exactly. a bit off. it can be it? a bit wonky. And what about um, pattern matching then? I did pattern match, and the way I usually do it, I find a line that runs through throughout on, the pattern. On your check there, you yeah. don't need to do it so much on this one, no, do you? No, and I think... Did I? I don't. I didn't pattern match the sleeve to that. You could. No, 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 no. If yeah. you want to, and you you really want to take time, yeah. but I pattern matched the main bodice, yes. and you could then do that afterwards yes. if yeah, you okay. want. So but what you're looking at is maybe one of these lines that says for petite or your fold line, because that is usually throughout the same pieces of course. and at the same point. So if you line that line up with the line with on your somewhere fabric. on your fabric and do the same for each one. Oh, so now, so it's not only got that for, for did you say one? I haven't got my glasses on. Did you yeah, say one you've was got to, for oh, petite, so you've got to lengthen or shorten. You've always got a double line on your pattern, right. which will allow you then, if you want to make it longer, that That's is where, where you, you cut it. your pattern. Yeah. Make, so I would, because I'm super long. Yes. So <laughs> I would look to just slice the pattern and slash the I wondered why there hadn't been any pictures on, on Facebook of you I wearing this one. I this one. I know, I was gutted. <laughs> the other one was quite nice and snug, and that's the difference with clothing. The other jacket was a loose-fitting jacket I made a few weeks yes. ago. This, because it's nice and snug, I couldn't do the buttons Aww. up. And also the seams would have been too short. For and you. they would have been up here at yeah. me. So if I were doing this myself, I would slash the pattern along that line yeah. and I would add say an inch or so and just make sure that you've got the exact same measurement that you've lengthened it by. Yeah and then you just reattach this yeah, onto perfect. it. And also your, your petite, So it's got petite, so you just fold it up to make it shorter. Absolutely, perfect. so you've even got a fold line mark yeah. for you. So everything is there for you. So you've got your grain line, those are normal lines that you have in yeah. every pattern. But what you also have is stitch lines marked on here. So you've got two on this part. A stitch line? Yeah, this is where we're going to stitch through the layers to quilt it all together. Oh, So okay. that's how it works. So you've got your stitch line down here. Yeah. Not on the underarm. No. You also have buttonholes to mark. Oh, of course. So get all of those on early. I am a little bit of a cheat sometimes where I will, I'll mark certain things, but then buttonholes I'll, I'll sometimes put at the end. And yes, I'll, I do. I'll I put do, it on, but it's... You might lose them halfway yeah, through. Yeah, and it's you? a personal choice, so don't worry if you don't want to do that If now. you didn't want to actually do buttonholes on the sleeves, could you still make the sleeve up, put the yeah. buttons on and just sew through it rather yeah. than... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I just think if people don't like doing buttonholes, no, you I know. you've got enough of five down the front, let and alone... this is thick. So yeah. I, the pattern tells you to hand do the buttonholes. So again, this is why it's a labour of love. Yeah. So if you want to spend that time doing beautifully handcrafted buttonholes and really find out how it's done 
caricature, yes. then this is an amazing pattern just to think, all oh, right, I'm going to have yeah. fun doing that. But if, like me, you think, I haven't got time to do that, yeah. however much I would have loved to, I machine them, but it is quite thick to get through. So if you're not confident, you, know, you don't want your buttonhole to go wrong. No. So by all means, if you don't want to do that, do your tester if you yes. do. But if you don't, then you could quite happily just stitch just through stitch, the buttons. And it would still look good. You've got a lovely shape yeah. around there. And it's anyway. wide enough for you to get your hand through. You haven't got to open them. I, I think, think so. Yeah. I think I did try it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fine. So I'm just going to show you how to just mark the slip stitch lines, the most important bits. Right. You've got other markings on here. So you've got your notches, which are standard. You've got a larger circles here which are marking your sleeve head yes so i personally don't always mark that because i think by the time you've joined these together as long as you're accurate with this seam allowance you should hit that yes yeah. exactly yeah. so i don't mark that but there are other little ones which are your ease to like take your ease in on the back piece here which right. will do a quick mark yeah there are ones here again just to show you where there's a little bit of stretch in your fabric right and there's little dots here there and everywhere so the best thing is Mark everything, keep your patterns out, so you can always then go back yes. to them and check what was that. Do you bit. leave your pattern pieces on your fabric until the very yes. last moment? Yeah. yeah. It's one of those where there's so much on here, you'd want to just make sure you've got them all the right way. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I'm just going to pull some a contrast thread. Yeah. So I'm going to pull it once, layer it over, and then this will help with the when you start and stop, so you've got your loop on the one end. Yeah. And then... So you're now going to thread the needle live on television? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Totally fine. Uh, I don't know Why what I'm I've done with my glasses, so I can't even you help You can't that. see anyway. Hang on, I've got a bit sticking up there. No, I might have to get Crystal to find them for me. Could Crystal or Laura just find my glasses? Um, my, I've got three pairs on my desk, I know, but I don't want my show glasses, really. But any will do. Right. So that's your excuse not to get hand sew it now. Like, I can't see. No, I can't. Because <laughs> they hand over to You're me. pointing at these lines, I'm going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'll move these out the way for right. a sec. And we'll just go with this one with the line. So the, the stitch line going up along here, I'm going to start right at the bottom. And yeah. what I've done, I've pinned the whole way around the pattern. Yeah. And I'm not going to mark the buttonholes for a sec, but I'm just going to do this line and I can place it back on and if I want yeah. the other bits. So I'll start right... Oh, that's better. Oh, you can see. I oh, can good, see fine. Well, I can give you that one next. Yeah, could you get it done? <laughs> I've got a needle there. So by right, keeping the pattern on and the fact it's so nice and thin is yes. good because then I can just fold over and just see where this starts on this side. So I'll put the needle in, catch a little bit of your fabric, pull this through. Oh, no, yes, yeah, okay. And because there's the loop on At the, the end. end, put your needle through the loop and that just gives you an anchor point yeah. there. So the best way I find is you don't want to freestyle. You might do a bit wonky because you want this to be as neat as possible to then stitch mm -hmm. it afterwards. So I'm going to move the pin up slightly. So I've just moved it. So I'm just looking at this section here and I'm going to just pull this back. Oh, so you don't stitch through your paper pattern? No, I don't because I think you'll have to rip it all off. Mm. And I think over time we'll yes. wear and tear. But yeah. again, if you've got your own techniques, no. Yeah. Nothing. This is my version. I'm yeah, no, no. So, it's good to see other people's yeah. versions. Oh, so I'm going to do that. Yeah. And then it gives you a little bit of the a guideline. A guideline, then, which I think I'll have to do one at a time. So quite long stitches. It doesn't have to be anything that. So you're literally just done. tacking the line in. Yeah. It's not tailor tacks or anything like that. You're just not literally tacking one. the line in. And also, you've only got one. Because you'd have two of these, wouldn't you? One yeah, for each sleeve. So you'd have to do it. So you'd have to separate each one, them, yeah. yeah. And this is where you take a lot of your time at the start of this one. It's yeah. just all your prep. So again, I'll do. I've never seen yeah. this technique before. It's so simple. I think I've just. You know, you just find ways to do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I started doing it earlier and started going wonky. So I thought, right, let's do, let's do a proper way. Yeah. I won't hand stitch everything. I'll no, do, no, no, I've no, done no, no, a no. bit of but prep it's on another to see one. How you do different things. So here. I'll move that pin up a little bit higher, so it still keeps yeah, the pattern this in place. place. And then we'll go up to there. It's quite therapeutic. This one, I think. If you've say, if you have got the time, I think it must be a really satisfying one to oh, do yes, all of these yes. these couture finishes because it's not often you get to see how it's done as no. well. 
But it's like when you go, a, a friend of mine, Stuart Parvin, makes clothes for the Queen and everything. Oh, yes. And all of, all of their is couture like this. And you see <gasps> yes. the, the ladies and the gentlemen, or oh, it's nearly all ladies, but doing, just sitting, doing the most exquisite oh, hand stitches. I know. I think I watched um, a programme and, and it, was, it was absolutely mm. incredible to see what especially the older generation so it was older ladies who were kind of 80 or 90 just mm. don't retire because they don't let them retire well no no but also and, it's, oh, people, the knowledge people they have modern day people don't want the don't want to spend the oh, time or the hours you put into it people can't afford to pay no. for that the amount of man exactly. hours it, or women hours in it can they but also it's the thing with i think the generation thing as well i yeah. mean i've worked on apprenticeships in wales and we're a little bit behind unfortunately but <laughs> it's um it's a big passion of trying to get young people back into the industry. Oh, yes. You know, to learn the skills you need, even just the basics. Mm. And it's, it's hard work to recruit. To recruit but then, them. now, aren't they taking... Um, I, was, I was on the news yesterday, that, uh, the, what we call the old-fashioned skills, like needlework and cookery, yes. that came, was used to be in school when I was yeah. at school, and they've all been dropped and everything. Oh, and it they're bringing it all back schools. to teach kids how to cook food from scratch. And well, things it should like be, you know, and it's, it's... Oh, no, I completely yeah. agree. How many of you, my nieces and nephews and their friends go to university and, like, imagine, you know, they, they think you go to Marks and Spencer's exactly. and put it in... Yeah, and surgeons, I said yesterday, didn't I, about the surgeons who, um, they're getting sewing ladies in because they're dexterity, because yes. people don't write or do any of it yeah. anymore. Yeah, exactly. Well, my argument with having design technology and textiles on the curriculum is that you go as far as space. You know, they went watching, is it Felix Baumgartner, when he's jumped on the, from the edge of space, and the, there was a programme on that, and it was all about... Um, making the outfits as well. So again, mm. older ladies were there knitting the inside yeah, garments. Yeah. And you think it's not just, it's not just what you see here as craft. It lends itself to so many yes, other, exactly. other ways. So get design technology onto the curriculum, people. Yes. Right. So that is your, your length there. Though. So we can leave that there yeah. now. The other bits on here that I would mark would be any of the larger holes. Uh, the circles here. Yeah. Um, it does say that you should also mark, if I show you a con here, it actually gets you as well to just to tack your stitch line as well. So it really does go to town. Oh, no, that's old school. This is what it? I mean. This is yeah. really every little bit of this. So it gets you to kind of do a running stitch all the way around there. It gets you to put it straight down. But this is how we, I was taught. This is really, how right, when, uh, women was grew up. This is exactly how we yeah. were taught to make garments. Yeah. Really, because you think now, you know, you can think, well, I know I'm it's going five to sew on that inch. line, yeah, so exactly. it's fine. So perpendicular line down there yeah. and also across the top and it tells you where to do that. Now, again, I, I didn't do that, no, but no, no. It's, it's your choice as to what yes. you do. Yeah, exactly. And it shows, you know, all the little dots, etc., and for the ease and for your buttonholes as well. So yeah. we'll leave the buttonholes yeah. for a minute, but that's what you're doing first and foremost. OK, right. so I'm going to put these to one side for a sec. I might pull them out mm. in a minute. But what you could see the way I laid them out, I'd maybe do that again. Side, is when you do have the whole thing laid out. The reason why you've got, say, these circles is because you need to stitch down to that line. Right. So those are important. Yes, yeah. And so before you start any of this, you yeah. need to read the whole of the pattern and maybe exactly. highlight things that, that, that you would kind of miss, like that sewing to that yeah. point and things like that. Yeah, mark it definitely. on the pattern with a highlighter pen or something yeah, like that just to remind you. Yeah, definitely mark that. Yeah. I'm always the one who goes, oh, I won't, I am naughty, but I think, yeah. oh, I won't, won't mark everything. And then you think, oh, damn, Where where's my pattern? Pull your yeah, pattern back out. Yeah. But it's okay to do that as yeah. well. So that is what you're looking to do. But also sometimes you've done the stitch, don't you? And then go, oh, what's that stitch there for? Go back to the pattern, think then what's the Then you realise, though, so have your pattern, but have your pattern yeah. pieces to hand as well. OK, so what are we going on to then? So we're going to go on to constructing the sleeve. Right. So all of this part, if I kind of talk to you, there's about four pages worth. Yeah. Um, but it starts off with, with the jacket. You do everything we've just done there on all of your jacket yes, pieces as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, you put your interfacing on. So what it gets you to do is gets you to use the sew-on interfacing. Yeah. I used iron-on for the sections oh, okay. I did, just because yeah. that's what I had. Yeah, we've which, got sew-on here. But again, if you're experienced, you know... You know the difference and what to yeah. do. So what you would do is actually put your interfacing onto the pattern pieces, which are the front. These panels. are just the fronts of the jacket, yeah. yeah. And again, you trim down some of the excess and right. you do that lovely stitch then 
all done. So it will look beautiful inside as well if you're doing everything properly. And it also gets you to prepare on the back of the buttonholes before you put the interfacing down. You cut little oval sections of fabric that go behind. Yes. And then you cut your buttonhole yes, and yeah. then you beautifully hand stitch. Yeah. So all of this is here for you. Yeah, perfect. So this is a, a night in front of the you television, see, I, wouldn't I, want think. To do a hand, I mean, I wouldn't want to do a hand stitch buttonhole on. I just think it, it could come away. Yeah. Unless you put the interface in behind, try it on a sample. Yeah, oh yes, Always definitely. Always definitely, definitely try on a sample. Definitely. So as you can see, everything I've done is, is the same that it would yeah. be on the actual one. Okay. So I think so we So you can do that with all the pieces of all the jacket, including the, yeah. the sleeve. So you do everything first. Right. Now, we've skipped onto the sleeve, but mainly this has been constructing the jacket, constructing the seams, as we'll do on this. Yes. And again, you're tacking and then you're stitching down. Right, now, is there something, there was something you wanted to say about the, the lining, some darts in the line, is that now? Yes, can I actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you through. On the... And then I'll go, then I'll do a recap, then we'll come back and do that six. No, that's good, because I'll get this ready then. On the... The back pattern, I'm going to show you this. So I, I cut everything out, so I didn't yeah. know how far I'd go with it. Yeah. So you have, for the sleeve, you actually have pattern pieces for the outer fabric and you have pattern pieces for the inside sleeve. For the lining. Because the lining is slightly longer on top, which oh, I think gives you that yeah. bit of, yeah. bit yeah, of yeah, ease. Yeah. But everything else is using one pattern piece. Right. So if I maybe move these so you can see this clearly. So, it's not so this thing. would be the back of the jacket. Yes. For both the main fabric and, and for the your lining. lining. Exactly. Okay. Doesn't it make the jacket fabric a lot longer as well, the lining for the jacket? No, no? not for okay. this one, no. Okay. I think because it keeps it so snug. Yeah. But what you'll see on here is it tells you the darts that are marked in are for the lining. Only. So it doesn't say to do them on the back of the jacket. So, and I saw that and thought, well, there must be something else. Yes. So flicking through the pattern and it does say that you don't sew the darts. And I looked for the stitch line, everything. So my little thing, I did it, I thought I'll follow it through. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I stitched this, and because this is quite a sturdy lining as well, and there's so much lovely movement in this as well, you've got about almost, almost about three centimetres of, of gather fabric yeah. being gathered in. But what it wants you to do then is to place that fabric over the top and kind of ease it in and then quilt it down. But personally, I just... Too much. I thought it was too yeah. much. If anyone's got any alternatives, Yeah, 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 let, yeah, let us know, let us know. Um, but I decided to just put the darts Sometimes in. you make the, if it's a wool, 100% wool, you can sometimes steam it exactly. just so it tightens up that little, exactly. but not that, not that it's amount. It's a lot, yes. isn't it? Yeah. So if, you know, if anyone's done this and has managed to work it in, please let me know. I'd yeah, love, yeah. love well, to no, know. Only because if you then come to quilt it, your top layer is going to be bigger by yeah. three centimetres than your bottom yeah. bit. And, and you line it up, you actually sew all your layers together up the back seam. So you've got it all joined and then you actually sew it up the side seams as well. So you've got your lining and your outside physically joined at those seams. So then you've just got three centimetres of fabric that's oh, just... Oh, how weird. So it... Yeah. Let me know. Okay. Got to. So okay. I chose, my personal choice was to stitch the darts into the back as well. Yes, so I, I would have done do that, that as well. So but that's what your twirls for as well. Exactly. You know you're meant to tell on your twirls. Try it, see what you think. Okay, right. Now, before you do anything else, I'm just going to go and recap and then we'll come back no, and carry good. on sewing with the, uh, the sleeves. No, I haven't got it, so. Okay, the, uh, the jacket, the 14 to 22, is this one. 14 pounds and 49 pence. Now, remember, it is a snug fit, so please make a twirl first and have a look. And remember that your twirl won't be quilted, so it will get a little bit more snug. Okay, and then we've got the other size there. Thank you. Oh, actually, oh, that's right. Okay, so let's just quickly go through the fabrics then. So the one that Helen's made out of is this one. Polyester viscose mix, polyester viscose mix, 145 centimetres wide. 11 pounds and 49 pence for half metre. If you look at the, um, on the web, look at the second picture down, you'll see how much fabric you need to buy and everything. It's 145 centimetres wide. Here's Laura wearing it. There she is. Okay, then the one that uh, Helen's demonstrating in is this one. We knew this one, didn't we? 145 centimetres wide. 70% wool, 30% polyester. You 
Lovely, isn't it? Now, uh, as a bouquet, it's a very, very uh, fine blue bouquet, that one. Very, very fine bouquet. Then I've got the black and pink check one. 100% wool, this one. 148 centimetres wide. It's nice, that one. You might not be able to see that very, very soft pink, like window pane check in. Oh, if you look online, you can see it on the image online. 12.99, half metre. Then I've got Blackberry. Black currant, blackberry, 87% wool, 13% poly, 150 centimetres wide, 12.99, brand new today. So now they've called it blackberry, but it's damson and black. I know, but dam, I know, most popular this. Beautiful, isn't it? Can you see that from there? There you go. Okay. And then last but not least is this one. This is little Paul's favourite, but don't let that put you off. This is the same as one before, polyester viscose mix, this one. 145 centimetres wide. This is the one that hasn't got the pink. This is not the pink. This is the same, mate. This is the same um, fabric, just a different pattern than the blue one. There you go. Okay, very quickly, I've got grow grain ribbons in black. You get 10 metres. You need this for the pockets and the binding around the edge of the sleeves. Now, it's not bias grow grain, so you will need to ease it round and do a couple of mitred corners on that one. But 10 metres is enough, isn't it, to do the whole jacket in? Yeah, yeah. Wine. Wine. No, Wayne's on holiday, isn't he? Having a lovely time. Okay, and then the buttons, you get all 12 buttons. You need 11 for the jacket, but all 12 buttons. Sparkly, Vogue. I've got two st anti-static linings to show you very quickly as well. Yep, just the two. I've got the black. Oh, blimey, Jeremy. 149 for half a metre. And I've got the um, burgundy, I think it might be called, or maroon. Maroon. 149, anti-static lining for half a metre. Okay, right, okay, let's go back because we've got more sewing to do. So this is one I prepared right. okay, a perfect. little bit earlier. So what I've mar marked on here are a few of those little uh, pointers where we need to stop and start sewing right. and you're stitching. Okay. So I've just pinned this onto the lining, but I just want to show you, when you sew your seams up, there's one thing extra in the lining that you yes. don't have on the outside. So it's a very small little tuck. Dart, tuck okay, yeah. so you've got that on there where you just That's just to give you a bit of ease around the elbow, is And it? I yeah. think you just fold it down as well. Yes. So you need to make sure you do that into your lining. But yes. apart from that, everything So you've made them up separately. That's made up the... Yes. Main fabric is made up and the lining's made yeah. up and then you put wrong sides together exactly. and you've got like your interfacing around the edge. I ironed a little bit of interfacing loosely. Now the one we, we've there. shown you today is a sewing because the one that's it's on the pattern it says a sewing yeah. one but you've used the ironer one and it doesn't yeah. make any difference. So. No it does say to put the sewing one cut it on the bias so what that is doing is it's not actually restricting the fabrics in any yeah. way whereas if you do iron on then obviously it's that's yes, it. it's, yeah. it's, it's stuck. Fixed, yeah. So it's, it's up to you. Up to I you. think there is still a little bit of movement. Yeah, I think also they're, they're covering themselves because if you put iron on, on some wools that you would choose yes. to make this out of, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas yeah. you don't want this to be moving around the wrist anyway. So it, it again, yeah, exactly. totally doesn't matter. So I've just placed them on top of each other and just, just put a few pins down the centre. Now it does seem a bit strange, but there is a good centimetre difference in the height yes. around here. So you want to match up the bottom of this part and go up there. So I can remove this part. So the right. next bit we're doing is actually the tape. So I always keep this out, it's just nice to kind of refer to. But you have done, you've done your ease between the circles on the outside, you've done your little uh, dart kind of gather on the um, lining, you've put your interface in and hand stitch it beautifully inside. So the next thing then is to actually put your, your tape around. Right. So we are looking around this section over to here. Right, so that's this okay. wrap around on yes. here. That's that little wrap around yeah. bit here, isn't it? Absolutely. 
So what you do, I'm just going to recap where it starts. So if you, if I just have it so I can actually yeah, see yeah, where course, I am. Yeah, course, yeah. So where you're looking at where the circle was there, yeah. where I've marked it, that's where you are actually going down from. So I think it does say on here, carefully clip the ribbon to make a smaller mitre at the top of the vent, which is here. Yes. Okay, so you're only doing this onto the, this part. So you can you're not putting it onto the lining, no, you're just putting it onto the fabric, no. yeah. So have you done any, have you done any quilting lines? Not yet. yet. No, 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 no. I think I pinned it on just so it's there yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah. But you can do this before the next step is put yes, all together. Yeah. So from this part, you can. Mm. I know, and I'm just going to triple check. This is the bit I so hate. At the back end, wrap the ribbon around the extension. We'll start from this way. Yeah. And another thing I wanted to just point out is that these can potentially start to fray a little yeah. bit. Just be mindful of that because this is a long project. Yes. They could start to come away. So if you are someone that maybe has an overlocker, I'm, I'm not necessarily a fan of always overlocking. I worry you're going to trim it down a little bit. Oh, but also, but also, if you go around the circle, if you pull it too tight, you're going to flute exactly. the Exactly. Yeah. But if you feel maybe just that bit of a, a running stitch yeah. or something, if you feel it is coming away yeah. because it will take time. But what you need to do is press the whole of this up by your centimetre and a half. So everything right. is a centimetre and a half. Right. So I'm going to just Drop grab the eye. the eye in, please, if that's OK. I'm going to do it by eye. Thank you. Oh, this is a nice uh, yeah. new bit. Lovely. OK. So we'll just fold the whole thing up. And if you've got your whorls, you know, you can iron on three. But on your lining, you will need to take it back down to two. Yes. Make sure. Uh, morning. Oh. Now that's an old message, that one, Paul. No, Amanda, I've got. Uh, morning, John and Helen. Morning. I've never made any clothes myself, but admiring the talent. Ah, oh, thanks. That you have in your ex explanation of the jacket. Oh, good. Helen in Lanarkshire. Didn't come through, Helen. Helen in Lanarkshire. Thank you very much indeed. There we go. Uh, Pauline's also said fantastic demo, Helen. Oh, be good. Done I feel it's, like, it's so little I can do on this now, but hopefully it'll be enough anyway. So when you've got that ironed up, like that, then yeah. you can place this on. So oh, okay. it's up to you whether you place it right on the edge or a little bit further in. Do you have to have it? No, you don't have to. No. But if you don't have it, I would still run a row of stitching, I think, just to keep that seam. Oh, yes, yes, think, yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, but you don't have to. Um, they do say, obviously, to hand stitch yes. absolutely everything. I cheated. I machine stitched. Yeah. Well, it's not cheating. You just had a deadline of today. Yeah, exactly. And a few wedding dresses in the meantime. And what? And a few wedding dresses. Oh, no. So, no. So, unfortunately, I had to do the... Uh, not for here. The That's a real way. life. Yeah, <laughs> real life. So, we'll pin this Has he on. proposed yet? No, still oh. working if he is watching. Oh, no. No, no. Uh, what's he still doing watching? He should be it. out doing electricity <laughs> things, shouldn't he? <laughs> no. Oh. Yeah, or good time to go looking for diamond rings. What's his name? Andrew. Andrew. Good time to go look for diamond rings. What's his name? Morning, Andrew. Everyone say morning, Andrew. <laughs> so on the corners, because as you said, this hasn't got a bias trim in it. You, if you were going to do it properly, you could try and have a run-in stitch and ease it in a little bit. But I think this has just got a little bit too much in yes. that. So I did end up just doing a little mitered uh, kind of join. So that isn't necessarily the neatest. And you can try and line it up with the actual line yeah. on the... Or you can buy... You can, I, don't think you buy uh, I don't think you can buy bias grow grain, but you can buy a, fab, a, a beautiful trimming that has a ribbon that's biased, can't you, to, to put exactly. it... Exactly. If you're going around curves and things. Or you can put anything on here. Yeah. And you, you know, you could do it right at the end if you prefer, but this is obviously the, you know, get it in yes. at this stage now because it tucks into your seams. We'll do that. Okay, no, you wouldn't. Paul's saying he'd line his with William Morris. William Morris, the William Morris cotton would be too heavy to line it yeah. with, Paul. So I'm just going to triple check this little corner no, bit here. It work. Where it says to cut in is on the circle. So yes. as you can see there, as soon as you fold it under, the whole thing yes. is going up. So I'm going to get my bigger scissors and we'll just cut oh. I know, level to that bit. And it will be level to where pretty much where your interfacing yes, is yeah. as well, hopefully. And you just cut in your centimetre and a half. Yeah. And then you'll see from that picture. And it's always just worth just comparing the pictures so you know you're yeah, right. Yeah, compare it before you cut so it. So you can see... <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that little bit there, in case yeah. you've got that bit sticking out. 
So then you would do your little your mitre. So I mean, you could could do that, but yeah. equally you want to just get. You're taking it nice. over to into the yeah. seam allowance, yeah. And you want to try and level up that edge there, so yeah. you do have to kind of rejig a little bit. And then... This would be quite. I, I can understand why they're saying hand stitch, Tom, because even though you can do it on the machine like you did, it's yeah. easier because you can sort of make it a bit more malleable when you're yeah, hand you can, sewing. Yeah, you can like it, manipulate yeah. it, yeah, it manipulate, almost, can't you? Absolutely. Yeah. So on this, I think I'll just do a quick, a quick stitch round. Okay. It's the first bit of stitching. So I, I just stitched on either side on slightly longer stitch length. So I put it up to about three. Yeah. I think. I haven't used this one before. This is fancy. Have you got a new sewing machine you've not had before? Yeah. It's I've fantastic. got it because the, uh, the PU for the second one. Oh, yes, yes, yes. With yes, the yes. walking foot and things, so. Right. Now, Paul, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but are there any of these? I saw Vicky had a couple of these in stock. Are there any in stock left of these sewing machines? It's the Semi Pro nice. 720. It's very smooth. Oh, okay. Oh, they might have it on tomorrow then. If they've got a machine show tomorrow then, it doesn't matter. I was just thinking because it's a gorgeous machine. It is. It feels really nice to you. Yeah. All right. Because Rachel, our friend Rachel, who um, had a proper job and everything, she made a frock to go to a wedding, right? And she just said, I saw a picture on Facebook. And I said, what? No. And I said, oh, that's a lovely frock. Anyway, loads of people then commented on Facebook. Long story short, she's given up her job. She set really? up a magnolia bridal. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and she's now, um, she got one of these machines. Oh, she nice. She got the Dukey Overlocker the other day. Yeah. And um, she's, all she goes to do bridal fairs, gets seven wedding dress orders in a go oh, and things wow. like that. Oh, wow, fantastic. And she'll also alter, she does altering of other people, you know, wedding dresses. Oh, that's to brave. I know, like, and then she did one this week and they wanted the train taken off. And she just and she showed a picture on Facebook of how oh, she did taken see that, actually. train yeah. off and everything like that. So Magnolia, that's our friend Rachel. Oh gosh, it's to alter other people's dresses. Hats off to anyone that does yeah. that. Especially all the. It's weird, though, isn't it? We get, I'm the same chill. Don't alter it. But I'm quite happy to make it from scratch. I'd rather I'd rather start cut again. It up and yes, start yes, again. Yeah. As well. What's the matter, Paul? Mm -hmm. Only, only, only. Oh no! Okay, don't then, don't then, don't then, because it wasn't yesterday. Right, so I've done that. So that would be a lot neater, yeah. obviously, if you need to give this the love that it needs. Yes, yeah, of course, yeah. And you could just hand catch that down in place as well, make that a bit neater than I've done it there. Yeah. I really took time to oh, get yes, all yes, that yes, nice yes, and yes. level. But if, uh, on this kind of project, you are going to take your time. And it's yeah. not something you're just going to knock up for a weekend, is oh, it? Oh, no, absolutely. So you can see it coming together. Right. What you then need to do is stitch down. Right. So you've done Ooh. this little part here, but it actually gets you to... Stitch it first by hand and then stitch that on. So again, there's more than just pin what, and stitch. Yes. It's step but that's one, how I step two. again, that's how I was trained to do it, yeah. So do it the proper way. Yeah. And <laughs> and then obviously the linings then you've got here. That so you're separate. now stitching through. Well, what I'm gonna do actually is join the seams. Right, first. So I know I pinned this, but yeah. I, I think I did that anyway. I jumped yeah. one step ahead. But you would do this, then you pin them together. Right. And what you're going to do is to actually join each seam underneath. But you don't make it into a complete sleeve yet, then? No, you not yet. You just put the three pieces together. No, but the important thing is to pin it in place first. You know it's all in position. Yeah. And then we're catching the seam allowance together on here. So you can get the position. Yeah. And you're just catching just the one edge of each seam allowance. Right. Let me pull that pin out there. So if there are notches in the seam allowance, you can just help to match those up yeah, as well. Yeah, of course. And you, you just stitch this way. It does say with a machine for this. Oh. And, and there are a few bits where it says, I like to do it quicker. Yes. Like, oh, thank God. <laughs> so, and you obviously can't go where your uh, interfacing is. So you no. would just go a little bit higher than that. I think, again, it does say stop at this point. Yeah. I'll just stop there. So we stitch down there and right, the same on the other side. So I'm going to quickly put these. Jeremy, how many minutes have we got on demonstration? Oh, five minutes. Okay. Right. So if I get these together, then I can just show you how the yes, actual yes, structure yes, yes, yes. goes. But this is how you do the whole structure of the jacket. So again, you may want to tack these so your layers don't move. Yes. But you'd be doing this throughout the jacket. So on your, your back, you'd be attaching your um, 
the back centre seam and then the side seams and all of those little bits. So it's a good good thing to see now. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You yeah, can yeah. take through. Now my layers are definitely moving, so if I was to do this again, I you would tack it. Yeah, definitely tack it. So you've got that. So it's attached there now. Yes. And then you pull it back this way. So do you do it, it on that seam as well? This side as yeah. well. This will be easier because this is where the, the lining won't move quite as much. Yeah. So we'll do that quick there. Having a sharp pin. I know that help. was a bit of a <laughs> It will go through. So I think this is the kind of thing is, you know, when you, if you get that fit right in the beginning, and you make this, you'll just never want to get rid of this garment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Again, I'm quite sad to hand this one over when it finishes. Even though it doesn't fit you. It looks so nice. <laughs> I just want to hang it up and just admire it. So same thing, I'm just tacking on a long, a long stitch. Yeah. It's purely attaching your seam allowances so you don't but get any of the jacket. But those stitches stay in, in, don't they? But they're yeah. inside between the... They'll be eventually between the lining and the main jacket. Yeah. So it's and that's fun. what stops your jacket moving. So yes. in a normal jacket, you you wouldn't have those seams catching, so you kind of sometimes feel a lining coming Yes, yes, exactly. This means your jacket's not going no, anywhere. And also if you're putting quilting lines through as well, that's definitely not going to exactly. move anywhere, is it? So that's what you have. So you have everything attached yeah. in place, and that helps you then with the quilting side as well. So then... I see what you mean about it being a project. It's, it is a long project. Uh, it's long, not going to be yeah. a quickie project. No, right. but satisfying. Yeah. So then you would do your quilting. So it actually gets you to hand tack first to keep it in place. Right. Which is good because I think if you do start sewing, oh, like no, you can see that, moves, that will yes, slowly yes, push yes, it yes, down. Yes, yes. Well, so, also, they're completely different weaves. That's a lovely yeah, soft weave. That's a very, st very stable weave. So they are going to move differently. And it's just slippery as well. Yeah. So you would pin the whole thing. Yeah. See if I can just do that, just so you, these stay in place at least. Yeah. So you'd pin the whole thing in place hand tack it over where that yeah. is and then machine stitch down there only the length that but only the length of the stitches Ex that you exactly drawn yeah on. so where i've got the yellow and to there That's as well weird, isn't it? i know i didn't uh, i don't i don't know what i did in the end yeah. i think <laughs> i don't know what i did, I can't in, the end. What I did in the end uh, right so when you've done all of this part this is where you stitch the seams that's the over kind of stitch there yeah then you machine stitch down then you do your buttonholes because you right. can access them of course so you would it's still actually on the flat. do your buttonholes there going through both layers and it does say that this one goes through all layers yes rather than the one on the jacket which is that cut your yes, yes, piece yes. so the next thing then is if i can remember rightly if i pull it all like this you cut right in at an angle along here which is always a little bit is this your button in. placket is this where your buttons are sewn on uh, yes yeah yeah so we cut down again to where that that cut is there yeah where the the little uh, mark is on there yeah I'll just... and then what you're actually doing is you go in to then start to put the whole jacket together the so that's this together. bit here that helen's showing you there that's so that's it. the placket with the buttons on there so you're cutting in to allow that bit to actually part yeah and then, and then the buttonhole wrap comes around it like that you fold this over to here yeah and then you match up along here so see how long have we got you about how many minutes we've got jeremy two minutes two minutes so let me show you there so you would stitch down there i'll see if i can quickly yeah, go on. do that and then you can see that come together at least i'll do in a long stitch as well so now you're just you're literally just sewing the main fabric yeah, together. so no you're lining lining's tucked here. away yeah. And especially with this, you want to... Oh, I've caught the line in. Yeah. You don't catch the line in. Uh, but you do want to make sure that your uh, seam allowances are perfect. Yeah, if, you, if that, that does really happen, important. you just stop and unpick it and yeah. start again. Um, now, um, you're only going to the circular line as well, aren't you? Yeah, so I'll just undo that bit. I won't sew it again, but just pull that away so you can see it's loose. And then I'll just talk you through the line. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can see that creates your actual sleeve then. So you yes. can put your arm through there yeah and then what you would do if I'm right with this then you actually get you'd press this open yes here. So if you've got a sleeve arm to press it in yeah if you've got a lovely clapper that you got yesterday and then you've got a little bit more of hand sewing yeah so when you press this open you also press back your seam allowance oh and, and that's then, oh. but I I chose to put one layer flat 
Yes, and bring the other layer. That's what I do. And do yeah. that. So I'm only doing the one row of stitching. Yeah, yeah. But it gets you to fold that layer over there and you stitch into the seam allowance. Yeah. And then you also fold this layer over and that's stitching. And I think the end bit then, you just stitch it around. You'll have to follow that little bit. So you, I think you fold it in, actually. You just neaten this edge. Yeah. And then again, it's a bit of hand stitching around here, hand stitching around the bottom because that's already finished. Yeah. So all of this is just hand finished underneath. Okay. Like that. Yeah. And when you turn the whole thing through, don't and you can see yeah. that everything will be attached there. So, and you've got extra at the top here because, very quickly... That just helps you uh, ease it onto the jacket. So you actually, when you sew it on, you sew this on first onto the, yeah. the sleeve uh, armhole and yeah. then you hand stitch the lining on top. It gives you a little bit more room. Fantastic. <sighs> Sorry about that. There's a lot okay. to get to. Well. to. You're back in an hour to do this back? Yeah. There's the back. Uh, right, OK, so... Just found the real back. So, very quickly, the patterns, 14 pounds and 49 pence. You've got the 14 to 22 there. Remember, it is a snug fit, but as you're getting 14 to 22, you should be right. This one is if you're a 14. If you're a size 14, I'd go for the 14 upwards, not the 6 to 14. So, if you are a size 14 normally, then I would get the 14 upwards, not the 6 to 14. Fabrico, excuse me, the one that, oh, I'm oh, doing a different order, hang on. There you go, there's the one that Helen just used. Uh, this one she actually made it out of. Poly viscose mix, that one. 11 pounds 49, half a meter, 146 centimeters wide. Then I've got the one that Helen used for the demonstration. Nice, look at that lovely pinks and burgundies in there. Graphics will come in. Okay, then I've got uh, this, oh, 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 then I've got this one here, which is the 100% um, wool check with the pink over checking it. For all the buttons and the linings and the ribbons and everything, just look underneath me on the web and you'll find it there. Then I've got the Blackberry. Well, it's called Blackberry, but then it's called Damson. So, so is it Blackberry, is it Damson? Who knows? Two completely different fruits. Right, last but not least, got that lovely, lovely boucle check. Lovely, isn't it? Same as the blue one, but in black and white, that one. Same as the blue, but in black and white. Graphics coming in. Right, don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. Jill Rep is back after the break with even more June Taylor gorgeousness, even more uh, premieres and even more fantastic demos. I will see you uh, with her exactly here. I've got to move because I need this table in three minutes from now. Make a date with Sewing Quarter on Saturday the 23rd of February when we have two special shows packed with brand new goodies. At 9am, Emma Bradford makes the date night quilt. Featuring in the aptly named Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine, the design by Lynn Goldsworthy is a rainbow of geometric hearts and we have the perfect kit for you to achieve that at home. Then at 10am, we're dancing to the beat of Anna Maria Horner's brand new tambourine fabric collection. Folksy prints are romantic colours inspired by nature, rhythm and handmade embellishments include gypsy heart, bird watching, stitchery and more. So set your reminder for 9am and meet us for two hours of brand new designs and fabrics sure to make your heart skip a beat. Saturday the 23rd of February, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Here at the Sewing Quarter, we love to share our favourite products with you. From bestsellers to brand new discoveries and those essential but unsung heroes. And of course, the forgotten gems. I love chatting about my own latest finds and long-term favourites. So every Wednesday, I'll be sharing my personal top picks and telling you a little bit about why they've won a place in my must-have list. You can also find out more about my top picks on the website, gathered together in one really convenient place for you to make it even easier to shop for yours and my favourite sewing accessories. All you have to do is click 
on the shop button and my top picks will be the first thing that you will see. So make yourself a cuppa, keep your eyes peeled and every single Wednesday you'll discover Wendy's latest top picks. I'll see you then. This Sunday will be packed with five hours of everything you need for impressive patchwork and quilting. We start with accessories under £15 to help you build a comprehensive toolbox. If your fabric stash needs a boost, treat it to one of our coordinated bundles featuring Riley Blake, Kate Fassett, Dashwood and more. Expert Joy Edgington joins us for episode one of her three-part block building series, transforming a trio of skill building blocks into a pretty table runner. Later, Joy demos Japanese fabric folding to create a scalloped edge bag with kits in traditional red, blue, taupe and pewter colourways. We finish the morning with a range of exciting kits including our Moda Rosewood quilt, glorious peacock pattern, woodland wedding ring and more. So set your alarm, it's going to be a busy day and we don't want you to miss a minute from 8am Sunday the 24th of February, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. There's a buzz in the air about sewing and here at Sewing Quarter we're always looking to inspire new people to pick up the needle and thread and get themselves in front of the sewing machine. Whether it's dressmaking that takes your fancy, English paper piecing, embroidery, quilting or bag making, Sewing Quarter explores every aspect of sewing and quilting with amazing demonstrations from special guest designers from all over the world. If you've never purchased with Sewing Quarter before, then today is the day to do so and we've got a fantastic offer for every new customer. Purchase any web or auction product today and you'll receive a free sewing kit worth $14.99 plus free P&P with absolutely no minimum spend. All you've got to do to get your free gift and free P&P is enter the code GIFT at checkout. So why not see what the buzz is about and get sewing with Sewing Quarter? Now, the response we've had from Jill's first hour this morning has been phenomenal. And we're going to have another hour of it now, aren't we? Can't wait. <laughs> she says, can't wait, John. Bossing you around. Now, um, if you don't know who Jill is, then where have you been? Watch the 8 o'clock show later. Uh, you are the Vice President of June Taylor, is that right? Yes, Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Of, of, of Sales and Marketing, sorry, Sales and Marketing. And, you know, Chief Bottle Washer Everything, and everything. Well, you are the, you're the face of, really. Everywhere we go, we see your face, don't yeah, we? Which yeah, is lovely. It's a, it's okay. a little company. Yes. So, what are we starting with this hour? Because we've got premieres, lots of new things for you to see this hour as well. Where are we going to start this hour, then? We're going to start with something I have a lot of trouble with. Squaring straight. Right. Squared Squaring, straight. Squ so, what are you talking about? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> once you get these quilt blocks sewn, say you do something a little bit more sophisticated, before you put your quilt together, you've got to square, square them, them off. Them. Yes, exactly. There's two different ways to do that, and we're going to show you both. The first okay, way perfect. is to cut them square, and yes. the second way is to press them square. Okay. So, we have two different rulers that we're going to kind of show together. They're called squared straight. Oh, uh, so okay. That I can square straight. One is on the inch, inch and the other one's on the half. Oh, we see, because inch. we sometimes have block, when we say, what size is the block on that quilt? They go, oh, it's an eight and a half finish, or it's an eight and a half, or it's, a, mm -hmm. they're always a different size, but they're exactly. always either on the inch or on the half, on the half inch, inch, aren't they? Yeah. Exactly. So you kind of need both rulers just to really cover the gamut of what you're going to be doing. Yeah, of course. But you don't want these to be too big. So what we did is we designed these rulers to square up blocks five inches all the way up to 10 inches. But I think that's your average, that would cover yeah, all of is. your average. It's only rarely that you go over the 10 inch or go smaller than the right. five inch, isn't it? And we have a great solution, that little charming shape cut we used earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna square up with that if it's less than five inches and it has the crisscross on. Yep. If it's more. Well, like you did with the charm packer. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, if, and if, if it's more, we use the shape cut. That's got a big uh, X in the middle. Oh, yes, of course. You can center your block and square up that way. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing multiples of the same block, it's really easy to do if you've got this yes, template. Yes, yes, okay. perfect. So we're gonna start out with pressing our blocks. Right. And I always starch before I square up. But, but now, you, did you starch the fabric before you started cutting out right at the beginning, before I you made the block? 
every way every through time. the process. So you've used this at the beginning, uh -huh. made your block, yeah. now it's uneven and not and very I well also, finished. And I also use starch during construction. So when you're sewing two pieces together, I'm not going to say it's like a glue, but it definitely holds them yes, together yeah. so that you can easily get them sewn. Yes. Let the starch sit for a few seconds. That's the hardest part. But it, if you do, yeah. I mean, this is a whole lot easier to yeah, square Yeah, you can off. see it straight away. Right. So I think this is um, a six inch. Right. Okay. So what you're going to do is put this on your mat. Yes. And the beautiful thing about this ruler is there's all kinds of lines. Let me, let me show it to you on the white back yeah, one. Yeah. All kinds of lines that you can use to center your block. Yeah. Okay. So this happens to be something that I want to square up to six inches. Right. So, oops, I find the number six after I've squared up our yes. matched so up my lines. Yes, so you've got line. your dead center there. Yeah. You've got lines going in every which way. So even if you haven't done one of these, if it's got different lines on it, yeah. you've got other, lots of different lines to Chances line. Chances are up. you're going to find a line on here that you're going to use. Yeah. Now you're going to watch the number six and you're going to take it all the way over to the teardrop opening. Not the first one, you're gonna, because the first one is number five. Right, right, all right, All right. the way over till you see that line end, okay. which is right here. Yeah. Hold the ruler down, open your blade, and you're going to make a cut. Yeah. If you had a rotating mat, you could rotate yes. at this point. And you're going to cut over here, but there's plenty of ruler to hang on to yes. to do that. Take this away, take this away, turn the block, or rotate the mat. Mm -hmm. Now just reline it up, okay? So now I've centered it up and down, yep. side to side. I find my number six. Look at this, perfect. perfect, perfect. Follow the six all the way over, and we're gonna cut, cut, and we're gonna have a perfect block. And I'm gonna do it one more time so that you can really understand and see how gorgeous. So now that you've cut it to a six, inch there so it'll be a finished five and a half inch Correct. block once it's sewn together. Correct. So you've got to remember that you the, the block you're cutting it to is the actual size that you're cutting not your finished size. Correct you'll take off another half inch because you need a quarter inch on yes, each yeah. side but perfect perfect perfect. Now it this really block is, it's kind of wonky looking. Yeah I didn't let's, want to say. Well you know not everyone's perfect like you John. So <laughs> let's try one more time. What size are we making this one? I'm going to do I'm going to do the same one because I think I'll change sizes when I get to the next one because yeah. I think it's really important for you to understand and see what I'm doing here. Yeah. So now we're going to well we're not going to do that we're going to hold the ruler six and when you insert in the teardrop opening, sometimes I just tilt my blade ever so slightly. And which, that which, just, just... Just so it's not on the straight, it's just slightly slanted. That I, that I tilt the blade. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just ever so much slightly just to get it introduced to the teardrop opening. Once yeah. you get used to these slotted rulers, you don't even need to do that. Yeah. Okay, cut. And we're going to take our wonky block and hopefully we have perfection. A perfect one. So that is on the inch. If you have blocks that you need to square up. On the half inch, which would now, I, I, like you say, you need both of these, don't you? But an awful lot are on the half inch because with your seam allowance on it, then takes it yes. down to the solid number, doesn't it? Yeah, 55, 45, 60, 40, most are half inch. Yes. But there's all kinds of things, like if you want to just sew a bunch of four inch blocks together, this is valuable to have that one inch as Oh, yes, well. yes. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not dissing yeah. it at all, but, you know, it's kind of like, it, that's what I'm saying. It's good to have both, really. It is good it? to have both. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to do the half inch. So this works the same way, and I'll just do one. Yeah. But this, I have even additional lines on here, and it's all getting kind of crazy. Yeah. So I'm going to follow the nine and a half inch line on this one. And I'm going to square two sides. Yes, yeah, so it goes up one. to ten and a half. This goes five and a half to ten and a half. The half yes. inch one, yeah. Um, this one, because it's just a little easier for me to turn the mat. Yeah. Now I move the ruler. Okay, no big deal because yeah. I can line it. Line it back up again. It doesn't matter what I just cut. I can line it right back up, and I can um, make my second cut. And look at that. Yeah. This is where the Notions rotating cutting mat that we do would be brilliant because it's a 13 inch square. So that would fit perfectly onto the 13 inch square rotating cutting mat. It would. And I wish that I would have one because as I turn the mat, I mean, let's just say I do what happened last time. Oh, yeah. My ruler slid. It's, it's really okay though, because look, I can reline it up yeah. right smack dab mm -hmm. in the middle. 
and I can cut, and I'm not going to lose any accuracy no. in that block. Oh, that is astounding. Isn't it? Crisp, that one is. Look, crisp. So starch first, yeah. right? Now, if you want to do a 10 inch, 10 and a half inch, yeah. you're just simply going to use the outside edges. So uh... we're going to just use this, you know, like we would a quilting rule. Yes, yes, okay? yes, yes, yes. So this lines up pretty nicely. Yeah. But I, I can't help it. I have to use those centering lines because that's just the way my brain works. Mm -hmm. So get that done and then turn it. And yeah, we're so this do... way you're just literally taking the sliver off the edge. I am, but that yep. little sliver off the edge, when I go to sew my quilt together, it's gonna sew together perfectly because yes, I've yeah. gone through all this. Yeah. And that's the hard part when we get that quilt and it, it doesn't line up, then we got all kinds of problems. Yeah, and also I'm saying take a sliver off it, but if you have a sliver on each one, by the time you get to the end, that sliver could be an inch. It, uh, you know what I mean? If it's a, it a, an eighth of an inch on each one. Yep. It compounds, yeah. absolutely. All right, now let's say that I'm going to do my... Improv. Improv. Uh, before you go on to improv, are we going to... So loads of people are messaging in about this. We're going to cover that, aren't we, in, later on in this yeah, hour? Yeah, we're going to cover it later on in this hour, and it may even flow into the next one, because hexes, there's a lot to go with hexes, hexes and triangles, hexes and whatever. So we're going to get to making hexes and joining them individually, yeah. joining them with... Yeah. Equilaterals. So th that is that. coming up this hour and going into the, into the next hour as well. So improv, so just so sewing any old strips together. Any old strips together. And then I'll cheat and show you the end result. Yeah. You've just made your own block. But here's the key that I love about this ruler. Right. I love how you can say, I want to I see things on an angle or I really want to go off the deep end. Yes, it's because that's... Re that's not following any line at all, is it? And then you can you can get something completely different. Yeah. So um, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to use this peach gingham. Yeah. And I'm going to use that as my line. Okay, but you're not your your brain won't let you go completely off kilter, will it? You know, it it can't. Yeah. <laughs> it just can't. I really want to, yes. but I just can't. I just can't. So I'm going to cut here. Yeah. And turn again, and cut on the other side. Yeah. But now I had that. I had that pink or that gingham to line it up, so it's okay. Yeah. It's okay because I kind of know where I left off. Yeah. You can see my block beginning of to course. form. And now I get to do the exact same thing. Then how do I how do I guess that here perfectly? And again, I'm going to cut and I'm going to cut here. If you're not gonna rotate, be very yes, careful. Yes. Okay. So that is our block and we had a finished one earlier. And now you can even take your equilateral ruler that we used before and do that as well. Oh, yes. And you can make that into equilaterals. So this is, a, this is the frame of what I have left. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to add fabric to the back, you had asked me about that earlier. Yeah, it yeah, stabilizes yeah. Mm -hmm. it a little bit more. I would just use a really light colored, light yes. colored fabric to do that. And you've just used the basting spray to attach that, have you? I actually sewed it together oh, okay. right on to this to yes. stabilize it because we're going to cut this in a little bit. We're going to cut it in half. Okay. So do we happen to have, um, uh, we don't have our big shape cut handy. I but can get it, get it. Are you packed away in your suitcase? Was it on your first trolley? <laughs> I know. It's okay. Okay. I'll, I'll show you a different way. We're going okay. We're going to attack this. I can get it. I can get it for you. No, 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 no. This no? is fine. Here's the same thing we started out with. Right. Now we're going to cut it in half. And to do that, you can just diagonally cut it. Yeah. All right. That yields you these two pieces right here. Right. Now, that's interesting enough. But what if you connected them to those two pieces? Oh, wow. So this is all scrap fabric. Improv. improv. All scrap improv fabric. Yeah. And the tools are what help you come up with these creative ways no, to exactly. use them. No, exactly. So you can turn these the other direction so that the blue is facing out in every other one. Yep. And, and once you make these blocks, I encourage you to just Play. twist them every yeah. different way and you're going to have something really unique. Then they can just simply be sewn together and you can quilt by stitching in the ditch yep. along here. Mm -hmm. And you've got a, a quilt that you have made from your stash. No, no, exactly. Well, it's just from your, from your scraps, really, isn't I it? Because you don't have to cut up anything new for it if you don't want to. Now, this has really taken us out of the box, but we can actually take any of these templates and you can work, because of these lines, 
Let's just focus in on this. Oh, yes. What if that is your square? Can you see you that see square that? there, right Jesse? Look. So yep. you have, you've got vertical, you've got horizontal coming together in two different colors. Nice. And you're going to make that into a quilt and someone's going to say, how did you make that block? Yes. And you're going to say, it was very complicated. It took me weeks. Yes. But yeah, all yeah, you're yeah. really doing is framing your work yeah. in a creative way. You could do um, rail picket fence, couldn't you? Because that's yes. how you do it. Is it called rail picket fence? But they have, you have or your rectangle. rail fence. Rail fence. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still learning. Uh, but you know what I mean? You could cut your block like that and then you just twist them round and everything. Let's do that. Oh, Let's okay. do rail fence. Let's show you an easy way to do rail fence. Um, as long as you mentioned it. But you know, John, I was just going to show you this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We, we're getting a lot of rulers out here. Yes. To keep them organized, have you seen this? This is really... I've only seen the last time you brought it in, yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's just work together here. But look at this. This is a handy way to store all your rulers. And then you can hang them. You don't want to shove them under the bed. No, no, because you said earlier, didn't you, that the right. best way to keep your ruler yeah. and things is by hanging so it. So hang your mat on the wall. Yes. And we're going to talk about this pressing surface in a little yes, bit. Yes, we this are This has indeed. a handle on. Everything has a handle on. Oh, uh, for a reason. Yeah, because people don't have huge sewing rooms. So you can just hang all your sewing supplies on the wall and they stay nice and flat. Perfect. And they don't, um, and they don't break. Okay. So let's move it's on. It's very easy to do it on your own as well, look. So you don't need to have a friend available. You just have to just open it out like that, put it through the hole. There you go. Easy. So easy, squared easy. straight. So what's that called? That's called the Rule Your Ruler 699. Oh, yes. Rule Your Rulers. Rule Your Ruler 699 there. Right, okay. So where are we going on to now then? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> you, tell, um, you tell me. There's a lovely lady at June Taylor named Doris, and she keeps me squared straight. Right. And we were talking about this, this little... This little charming. Oh yeah, this shape is the charm cut. from the last hour. Yeah. Yes. In fact, we don't we don't need that right now because it has a little mat that goes with it. Yes, I'll put this one here. And if you would like to, again, use your stash. All of these these printouts are things that she found in about five minutes to say what can we do. This is rail fence. This is the rail fence. Yes, yes, block yes, 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 yes. Mixed yeah. with solid blocks or mixed with what we call four patch. Yes. Starch. Press right sides together. Yeah. We're going to sew, and what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use the blue one because you can see the thread. Yes. We're going to sew a quarter inch on either side, right sides together, quarter inch on either side. Right. How big was this square that you started off with? Does Five it matter? inch. Five inch. We yeah. actually used. There you go. Our yep. charming shape cut. Yep. So this is like a, 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 a like a mini version, isn't it? That can do so many things, isn't this it? This yeah. is this is the winner right yeah, here, yeah. and it's so cute. Yeah. So now you can see the stitching lines, yeah. right? I'm going to put it back underneath my the five inch grid. Yeah. So you can see how it was perfectly cut. Yeah. I'm actually going to turn this because I don't want you to get confused. We I don't need the lines on my mat at all. Right. The bottom zero horizontal marking yeah. goes on the edge. I'm going to cut it two and a half because two and a half is half. When I take these, I've already sewn. What do you get? You oh. get rail fence, rail fence or what do you call it? Picket. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Just now, can I just have my starch for one second? Okay, so you take this and what we do, you can either press the seams open or you can press toward the darker. Everybody has a preferred method. I'm going to press toward the darker. Yes, yeah, toward the dark side. Toward the dark side. <laughs> and you get this. Now, this design right here is simply going up and down with these. Yes, that to create, is your, all. yes, exactly. You can make millions of these with this and this all day long. Yes. And turn them into this design Well, I was right going to say, here. you don't necessarily just have to have your two colors like you have there. You can then create all sorts you of- You can then create. Yeah. All right, so tons of rail fence. Yeah. Now, let's do this one more time. I got two more of them here, and I'm going to cut through the center. So five inches, it's a perfect block because we've actually used this to make our five inch blocks and cut at two and a half. And you can open these up as I've got them done. And we're going to cut one more. Now I'm using two different rail fence blocks. Right. All right. Now we are going to cut these in half. Oh. And we are going to make four patches. Yeah. So this ruler 
is perfect for making four patch. Four patch you can then mix with solids, you can then mix with rail fence. Probably the most three most versatile. So you've just taken I cut a bunch of five inch charm squares yes. out of this. Yeah. Cut two of these. Yeah. Now we're gonna cut these guys in half, right? Yeah. Same thing. Use your five inch and cut at two and a half. We're always using the same increments. Yeah. Now let's open these two up. Okay. Yeah. Now let's we need our contrasting one. Let me cut this guy in half right here. Yeah. And we're, we can sew these together to make four patch. So everything is based off there. Brilliant. It is brilliant. And they go together like that. And if you press that way, that way, nest the seams. Nest the seams. So one goes the right, one yep. goes the left. Starch. Yeah, I need it starched in first. And then if you want to do the back, then it just glides so easily. Yeah, exactly. And you know, go, just go to the internet if you want a pattern. There's tons of patterns Exactly. Available. So that's, again, the charming shape cut. That You're loving that. And the little uh, mat, cutting yeah. mat. This is perfect. To go with. To go with. And if you want to leave this next to your sewing machine for cutting points yes, and all yes, that, yes. it's extremely handy perfect, for that perfect, as perfect. well. Right. Loads to show you in this hour. So we'll move on to the next one which is called the Sophie tote bag. Okay, because guess what? Women cannot have, what, what, what do they not have enough of ever in their lives? Handbags. Handbags. So we're gonna show two different handbags in this hour. Yeah. The first one we're gonna show is the Sophie. Shall we, before we, before we get them out, shall yeah. we show the difference between the two? Because somebody might want to come in for one, you know, one or the other sort of thing. Okay. So we've got Sophie in first, which is this one that we're showing you here, but we've also got the Alexander coming up. All which right. is that one. So you can just see the difference. Now, there's a way to remember. Yes, there's a way to remember. Are you looking at me? Yes, because I've forgotten it. Okay. We are going to do Sophie, which has straight strips. Yeah. These are all two and a half inch strips. Yeah. And this is a five inch. Yes. And Alexandra yeah. is angled. Angled, that was it. Alexandra is angled. Is That's angled, how you remember like this. it. Also two and a half inch strips. Yeah. And when we Alexander, we're not doing yet. I'm just showing you right. the difference. We're going just to do Sophie. We're going to do Sophie now, and then we'll do Alexander and we'll later. We'll give you a great preview yeah. of several different fabrics because what makes the bag is what you like in fabrics. Now, in your kit, you're going to get the quilt as you go batting yes. with the numbers all marked on to yes. sew by number. You're also going to get this is what we use in the strap to keep this nice and stable. Never seen, well, have we had the bag before? I don't think we've ever had no, this is brand new. a quilt to go bag yeah, before. Oh, brilliant. So you get, so that strap goes inside. It's like a webbing that goes inside your, ha your handle. Yeah. And we're gonna, we're gonna sew this up. We're gonna sew this up. We're so gonna make one. We're gonna make. Okay, perfect. So this is the, this is the Sophie tote bag. Now, right. I will let you show while I get the steps ready. Yes. I just want you to look at how this bag changes. Oh, Paul, this is Paul's favorite fabric. You no, look, 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 there's William Morris, there's a bit of Tula. Yeah, and oh, look, New Liberty. That was launched, we launched that yesterday. And then uh, these are, uh, the, oh, that's, is this Cave? I've not seen these before. Oh, that's a Cave there. That must be all Cave then. It that is. That must be all Cave. That's just a beautiful melange of your purples. And then that's lovely as well, isn't it? It's a nice size as well. It's a good size bag, isn't it, that one? Okay. So, do we understand quilt as you go? Yes. We, we attach our backing. Using the basting using spray. Using the basting spray. And then we sew by number. So right. number one goes here, number two goes right sides together, raw edges even, okay? Yeah. But before, I just wanna point out that we actually just trimmed around this a little bit um, before, once we got it out of the bag. Not left a little, but about a half inch. Yes. Don't worry about this notched edge. Oh, because yes. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that. So okay. step one, yep. now. Oh, yes, right. Okay, so here we have step two, right? And we can finger press this open because we've done a good job of starching, starching our Starching, yes. Right sides together, yep. right sides together. Now all the cutting sizes of everything you need to cut are all in the instructions. Yes. So you don't and need to worry about, yeah. oh, I don't know what size to cut. It's all in the instructions. Two and a half inches. Oh. Two and a half inches so because made it's it easy. so easy. Yeah. And then these guys are an inch and a half. Number 15, this is inch and a half. 
This is inch and a half. Oh, no, we've missed that bit out completely there, then. Yeah, these actually are two strips. 10, oh, 10 I'm okay. sorry, 9, 10, yeah, that's fine. 11, 12. What's a dotted line mean, then? Um, the dotted line is eventually where we're going to sew the two sides okay, together. Okay, just so don't go to the dotted yes. line, always place to because the straight lines. everything is in a quarter inch seam allowance, but when we actually sew the bag together, we're going to sew in a half inch, oh, so okay. we just have a little yeah, bit okay. more to yeah. hang on to. Okay. So now we're going to sew piece 13 and 14. Yes. And when that is done, we sew oh, You were on. busy in your hotel room last night, weren't yes. you, stitching all these together? No, this is thanks to our friend Susie. Yeah. Um, and these are the last two pieces sewn right. on as well. All right, now. This is all the new Liberty that was yeah, all available on the website. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is just secure this a little bit around the edges. Right. And then we're, gonna, we're going to... So you've just to, done a straight stitch all the way around. I did. We, yeah, we cut right. that notch out. Remember oh, yes, that yes, notch? yes, yes. We yes, cut yes. that out. So this is what your tote bag looks like. Right. Now we are going to sew right sides together and we're going to sew a half inch that notch is still there right okay yeah now i've done that with one side right so here it is sewn right and now we need to sew this side we're going to sew in a half inch seam allowance yeah okay you're right so there. right sides together and the Missing foot pedal has reappeared. So I'm sewing through the lining, the two layers of printed bat, uh, wadding. And the top. So no, um, so no um, quilting foot or anything, it's using a normal yes. sewing machine Correct. foot on your sewing machine. Yeah. So, and really, if you look through here, the quilting kind of is already done. Yes, 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 yeah. Okay, now we oh, are. Oh no, I moved over here. Do more it's okay. Time. We can dance. All yeah. right. Now I want I want to show you how we're going to do this. We're going to see this this little hole right here. Yes. Yeah. We're going to take this, and you can either open this seam or I like to put it to one side. Okay. Okay, like we did here. Yeah. This is what makes the gusset or mm -hmm. makes that. So we Box got that. Bottom, we call the, that. The bottom. Boxed bottom. Oh, okay. Boxed <laughs> bottom. <laughs> Not just the bottom. Okay. Boxed bottom. The box bottom. Yeah. I'll get it. So don't be intimidated. That's what this little cutout looks like. And it's so easy. Yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Push this over and you're just going to stitch this shut. Okay. This is the only place we expect you to stand up while you're sewing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now All let's right. turn right sides out. Okay. And look at that. We just sewed a tote bag. I mean, we, yes, had some yeah. of the piecing done. But we sewed, and this is the part that people are so intimidated by because they want that nice gusset in yes, here. Yes, yeah. And look at, look at this. Look how perfect this comes yeah, together. Yeah, lovely. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. Now. Then the next thing we're doing, going to do is we're going to bind, and that is just traditional binding strips. On the straight, yeah. 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 So I just use, you know, your your two and a half inch, and then I fold together. Yeah. Bind around the top. Yeah. In your quilt as you go kit, you will get these strips for the handles. Yes. Cut them in half, so you have two of each. Correct? Right. There's too much to look at here. Yeah. Let's put this away. So you're going to center this. I press in a little half inch seam allowance. At the end, Because yeah. I don't want bulk. Oh, that doesn't go into the seam allowance then? I don't want bulk. Nope. And you're going to see why in a minute. Yeah. All right. You will also get two strips of batting that are marked. On, on your batting, on your wadding. On your wadding, on your batting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what you are going to do is you're simply going to press this over. Right. And you're going to press this over. Right. No need to sew, just press. Guess what we're going to use? Starch. <laughs> yep. Starch savvy. <laughs> yep. We're going to use the starch. Was I right? Uh, you yep. are very right. So this has been starch. So this is a raw edge. Yeah. And this is half your strap. Yeah. 
And then this guy raw edge. is the raw edge. Now watch this. Raw edges together. Yeah. And then we're going to sew very close to this edge and very close to this edge. Can I put use the can I use the the, the um, Yes, you can. Multi-directional um uh, what's it called? The basting spray yeah. to stick it together. You could to pre-stick it together, absolutely. I've never tried that. There's a use I there have you go. never so tried. Put, put paper on your desk first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did bring my own paper from America. I here. noticed, yes, I did notice. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. So all the raw edges and everything are all hidden away, look. But look at this. There's no bulk right here no. or right here because you pressed this down and you did not include that. And then we are going to attach it. Yes, because nothing worse when you get it. to attaching it. And then you've, and you've got to go through all those layers. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So where did here, our here. totes go? Let's find the finished one. Do we have the, it does, any one will work, but go. we might as well use this yeah, one. Might as well. And so you were just going to turn this under. We're going to turn this under like this. And then where, where that bulk is like this yes. goes under nicely. Yeah. Like I'm just showing you side by side. Of course, here. Yes. Stitch it down. Mm -hmm. And Perfect. off we go. Lovely. Lovely. Beautiful. That's gorgeous. Right, so that is the Sophie, which has got the straight lines. Now, the Alexander, I presume, is the same principle, just with angled lines. Alexander yes. the Angry. So for Alexander, we're going to show you um, just this lovely grouping of samples. Um, I think it's important to know that it's fun to also use pretty fabric for your backing. It yes. becomes your lining, actually. Of course, yeah. And but it's only the same as when you make a quilt. When you always nice yeah. have a nice fabric on the so back. So you can isn't pick it? a contrast like we've done here. Um, you can because this is such a sturdy um, hook. You can even hook a little tassel oh, yes. on it. Um, and now, can I ask how do you finish the seam inside? Because obviously, when you stitch them together on the sofa, right. you've then got your raw edges on the inside. Yeah, you? you can do any. You can zigzag them. You can, if you want to have this little contrast piece here, that's just an extra piece of fabric added and, and just, folded over. And just over. bound it, yeah. yes, perfect. If you have a zigzag, just, I would zigzag the edge either before, you could zigzag the edge before yep. you actually close it, yep. or after. I was just looking for it in its packet. Have we got the other side? Oh, it's over there. I've got it. Oh, I'll grab, I'll grab okay. it. So I'll put those out if you have a look. And again, look at the way, how different it looks with different fabric combinations. Paul likes that one best there. The tone on tone, yeah, that's really pretty. Uh, so you, this is the Alexandra, which has got the stripes on it, uh, the angled stripes on it. The Sophie was the straight stripes. But again, you've got the, oh now, it's Alexandra. It's Alexandra, yeah. Um, you get the, the, the webbing to put in there. And then also on the batting, there's two of your strap pieces shown on the batting as well, aren't yes. there? Yeah, perfect. So that's your Alexandra. We've never had these before. Brand spanking new, brand spanking new today. So uh, you're loving it. You're absolutely loving those. So let me just move this to one side. You want to talk about next. All right. Tidy as we go, everybody. Tidy as we go. Yes. Right. Okay. So we are using this cushion quilter square and blocker for just about everything. Yes. Now, this has been on the desk since uh, 8 o'clock this morning, 8 o'clock hour and everything. It's called the Cushioned Quilter, Quilter Square, Square and blocker. blocker. Exactly. Now look at this product um, as far as the grid goes. Oh, we moved. Now, I tell you what, we missed, we didn't do this, but did we? So we showed how to square off using the ruler. Yes. You're now going to square off doing the pressing yes. technique. If you do not use steam in your iron, just dry iron, you can stretch cottons a little bit. Right. So I can stretch to fit in this grid. And then once I press with steam, I'm going to set it in place. Yes. If you find that your block is a little too shy, just go ahead and stretch it without steam. Without steam. Because when the you've steam... got it in place, then go ahead and press with steam. Because the steam sets it, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So perfect to use for this. Oh. Perfect to use for. I need so, to so just... should we just show show what it is? So it's, it's a quilted pressing mat. Um, with uh, this feels like really really good quality uh, cotton canvas on the top here. Has this been pre-shrunk? Because uh, sometimes we actually we actually screen print this larger 
than an inch because when you shrink it, it shrinks perfectly down to this grid. But you've shrunk it already. It won't yes. happen to us when we and get to And you can iron like crazy on this thing. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it'll just stay with the perfect grid. Okay, so we've got, again, we've got the inches down the side going from the naught in the middle up to 10. So it's 20 that way and then 14 that way. That's the grid, but obviously it's slightly bigger. The, the markings go outward, so if you've put your block down, you don't lose your numbers, which is a really clever thing, because how many times do rulers have the numbers in here? And then you, you put can't your block on, you think, well, I don't know what number I'm up yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. Um, what I don't understand, you've got your angle line, your 45 degree and your, mm -hmm. your centering line. I don't want to know what these are for. For circular quilting blocks, to block up circles, or for yarn, or for any kind of stitchery. Oh, okay. That's why it's, it's, this, the, it's a blocker for all kinds yes. of things. But it can just be... A pressing, pressing block as well, as well yeah, can't it? If we don't have a sewing room, now we do. We yeah. just take this out. Okay. My favorite use for this is for, for hemming. Because of the grid, you know, I'm terrible at, at, at looking at hems. So say I want a two inch hem. Yes. I put this on the one line. Yeah. And say I go up for two inches, I can see exactly where it is. Oh, yeah, because the amount of times you do one of those hems and you get round to the other side or when right. it joins up and you've gone slightly off, slightly up or slightly yeah. down, haven't you? So I'm using the grid lines, but look at my fabric line. I'm yeah. perfect all the way across. So great for And did you use hemming. starch on that fabric first? Of course first. I use starch. <laughs> this is the only thing I'm not going to use starch on. But, oh, but yeah, for people crochet. who block up needlework, you're going to actually pin into this and you can pin right into oh, the corners. Yeah. Now, when you, when you block crochet, you don't use starch, you block it with water, and what you're gonna basically do is just spray it with water, give it a little press, let it air dry, but look it, you can pin into oh, this. Oh, yes, nice. So perfect for squaring up this kind of stuff. Yes, it, it's, uh, what it feels like, it feels like a block of, I don't know what it is, like wood or compound or well, something like that. there is wood in the back. Yeah, then okay. you've got like yeah. so wadding. Wood yeah. in the back, there's a foam, um, foam laminated to the actual cotton. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And then we screen bird it, and then we actually run it through the oven to shrink, shrink it, it to size. Yeah. So it's very complicated no, product no, no, to make. No, no, exactly, exactly. So you got to use it every day because yes. it works for everything. Yeah. And it's got the handle on if you want to hang it up afterwards as well. Because we always do want to hang it up. Water, put water on, let it air dry or press it dry. So putting water blocking. on it, putting spray starch on it, and think it's yeah. not going to ruin it. I've been putting starch on this all morning and yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. But here's one other use oh, for yes. it that I, I think it would be really fun to show you. Oh. If you have scraps of fabric and you're not sure what to do with them, right. you can actually take a piece of woven fusible interfacing. Yeah. Woven fusible. Line it up on here. This is what I love about this. Look at every inch. You see this is completely lined up. Yeah. Your woven fusible is facing up. So my stick my glue side, is yes. that the right way to yeah, say yeah, that? Yeah, is yeah. facing up. And I have all my strips coming down like this. Now in the old days we would weave by going under, over, under, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, because we're using this inch board, you can simply go like this uh... and put these down. And then as you go, do you have that Teflon press sheet? Oh, that you... where is it though? Okay, remember we have the yeah, non... Yeah, no, no, we had it in, we had it in the... Um... I'm sorry, non-stick press sheet. It hasn't sheet. come back, has it? Okay, so... Can you get them to bring me the Teflon press uh, sheet, please? Not... Right, Thank so you. now, look at this. Everything matches perfectly. We're going to make sure that it does. And this is why this board is so good. And then remember my glue side or my fusible side is up. So I can actually press this Only into press place. Only press that last one there. And then flip up and keep going. Yeah. I can take all my scraps and make something beautiful. What I was using is this... Um, Bias binding maker. Yes. Oh, I've got that. I've definitely got that here. Okay. The bias binding maker. Right and run your strips through there, that turns right sides under. Yes. And you, you can leave that as a raw edge because you're putting this down on your interface. Of course. Now, if you, if you don't have this, another way to do it is to start your fabric, sew wrong sides together like yeah. this, just sew in a quarter inch, Yeah. and then press this open like this. Oh, and you've still got the seam on. You don't need to turn it through through because you've you got the seam on the back. Because the seam is going to be facing this. Now, I prefer this. Yes, yeah. Because the it leaves you less maker, yeah. bulk. Right. 
Now, um, can I just tell you a little story about fabric like this? I yes. once made a dress for Princess Margaret. Right? I, I read, I read about it on your. Oh, have okay, you read? Right. Yes. So and the bodice was made using fabrics like this. So I created my own fabric and then cut the pieces. Thank you. Cut the pieces out. And the bodice pieces out of that fabric. Okay, so you made your own. You, I made the you so, 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 it. Yes, it was okay. the bodice, right? So okay. what I did was I did exactly that you've done now, but not yeah. I didn't have this or this or this. But I wove my ribbon. I'd made my own ribbon fabrics. Wove a piece of fabric like that, and then I cut. It was a bustier top. I cut the panels out of that. That was my fabric. Cut How the panels gorgeous. Out of. There's now, the Teflon sheet. Now, when I can I tell you this is one of my favourite things. Everyone laughs at me here because when I first started, and I looked at this, I went. Fifteen ninety nine for a bit of plastic like that. It's invaluable, isn't it? It is. It I, saves you your ironing it board. Everything. It saves your iron. It's fantastic for uh, appliqueing, sticking, yeah. bond, everything useful. Yeah. And your iron never gets messy, and, you, and your well, board never gets it, messy. The fusible will stick to your iron. Yes. I use it for baking. I use it for everything. This. Yeah. Baking. But it's, it's brilliant, isn't it? Is. It? it is. It's absolutely brilliant, and it lasts and lasts and lasts. And it's literally, if you're doing this and you don't want to get that vine, uh, the fusible. Yeah, if you uh, have a little mistake in yeah. there, it'll stick to this. Yes, not. And then when it cools, you just scratch it off. Exactly. The only thing I will say is this gets very hot. When you right. iron this, this does get hot. So that's a little health and safety warning because I did do that when we first started. Put my hand on it afterwards. It does, but it's brilliant. So, what can we do with our scraps? We can Apart make from make Princess Margaret a dress. The same concept yeah. that you talked about. Yeah. Or if you don't it's have, gorgeous, a, isn't that lovely? If you don't have a lot, oh, just what? make a little pocket, and then you can add like a little, oh, for like a little kid. Other children's to books are available. Or, <laughs> or oh, you can add no. a little stuffed animal. Or say it's for an adult; they're having a bad day. You give them. A I wondered what those flowers were for when I saw them come. You give the them set. a bouquet of flowers, oh. and it just makes their day. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. a TV remote. Yes. Oh, yes, that's even better. So, that is beautiful, though, isn't it? Isn't that pretty? Yeah. All made with a little bit of non-woven uh, fusible interfacing and your scraps of fabric run through your bias tape maker. Beautiful. All okay. right. Okay, what's the next thing? Um, I believe we're going to make some placemats and table runners. Okay, is, okay. This, um, is this the... Um, Venice. 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 Yeah. So we'll... we we'll we'll can run, the, run them through together, Paul, because we're going to talk about them both together. Okay. So. so we're going to... Can we cheat and show the finished? Yes, 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 of okay. course. Okay, let's cheat and show the finished. So we're going to do this lovely... That, now, this is yesterday's uh, Liberty. This is yesterday's Liberty that we launched yesterday. Oh, sorry. No, there you go. So I'm just tied up as we go, so we haven't got a mess at the end. That's all. Um, yes, isn't it lovely? We launched it all yesterday. This was the one. This was the one here. What I love about this, I mean, I'm not going to go on about the fabrics because that's not about this, but it's, they're from all different periods. So some are from the 1960s, some are from the 1920s, some are from, from 1890, and they've redrawn them and recolored them, especially for this collection, available on the website at the moment. But it's gorgeous, isn't it? Isn't it pretty? Now, we've talked a lot about Quilt As You Go. I know that you know how it works. Yes. But let's say you're a little bit more of an advanced quilter. You can, before you put this binding on, you can add all different kinds of quilting on here. There is enough quilting, enough stitching to keep this together to make it washable. Mm -hmm. But if you want to add more, well, yes, you yes. can really, you know, change the look of it. Well, I was going to say, because if you've got Wesley rulers or you love free motion um, quilting and things like that, you could do all of that, mm -hmm. couldn't you? So let's show all the samples first. How yes. about that? And then we'll go through the step outs. Okay. Because I've got a few in here where we've changed this up a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. And here is the placemat. Oh, um, uh, with a little pocket on it. The, the pocket, it, it was actually meant for a napkin or yes, it was yes, meant yes. for your um, silverware cutlery. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you can use it, you know, for, for whatever you like, yeah, place yeah. cards or something yeah, like that. Yeah, definitely. And we'll show an example later where we don't even use the pocket. Okay, perfect. Here's another design. Well, that's Oops, nice. Upside now, how down. different does it look? Oh, it's the other way up there. There you go. Oh, that's beautiful. And again, you know, we've, we've used solids this time, so that really offsets. Yes, it's oh yes, special. definitely. And this is just random. There's no, these are two and a half inch strips. Yep. Two and a half inch, one inch. All of our cuts are very easy. Yes. And if we have time, we'll, we'll go again on the shape cut and show yep. you. Yep. My favorite, if you have, have an embroidery machine, you can pre-embroider this little pocket exactly. part right here. Yeah. Here is oh, there's your, that, that's your favorite fabric, the cocktail oh, fabric. Look there. It is. Now, this is a little different. This is a solid piece and a small versus 
Oh, so okay. you can go ahead and improvise. If yeah, so you all you've done is, is just done, if that's number 14, yeah. number 15, yeah. you've just done a piece big enough. To exactly. So I, I'm, I'm thinking it's a five inch strip that yes. you're going to cut. Yeah. Okay. And again, you know how I feel about the holidays. Yes. It's never too soon. Um, it's never too soon to start working on holiday. Beautiful. And there's oh, no, for Christmas Day. Yeah, lovely. There's that one. All right, now we can quickly walk through yep. the yep. steps. Because you understand the process, I'll go a little bit faster, but I do want to show you how to make the pocket. Yes, Just that's because fine. it's a little different. Yeah. So we know we've used our basting spray and our starch. Yes. And we've added, don't get confused. One is actually a square. Don't. It's okay. You just put it on an angle. And then you trim it later. Piece two. Yep. Boom. Right sides together. Three, four. Yep. Okay. And this is a that braid pattern that's so popular right now, and it's it just looks so sophisticated. Yes. Yeah. But it's not that hard to do. No. It's, it's exactly it's exactly the same technique as all of those. If you're doing straight, yep. you're still only using straight strips. They just happen to be on an angle. Nothing. That sort right. Of okay. Now let's go to that pocket. This is a five by ten inch strip yeah. that we have you cut. Press wrong sides together. Yeah. And then your finished edge, your finished edge goes on the strip. Right. We use this as one unit. Oh. Right sides together here. Yeah. So when and you fold so it when over. When you flip it open. Yeah. You have this. So and then this, the other side of the yeah. pocket goes into the binding. Right. So you secure it all with that it's and you're done. And yeah. then you can add your additional quilting. Excellent. If you like. All the instructions are in the packet. Okay, now. Now, what have you got there? Let's do, um, maybe we switch this to the next hour. Should we get to the hexi in this hour? Oh yes, let's do hexi, let's do hexi. I'll get rid of that those. that to the next hour. Lots of people asking okay. about it, so that's, we'll get on with that. Let's do hexi, one of my favorites. All right. So it's this. It's, it's this here, isn't it? It's that. Would we happen to have um, the cutting mat, the this one, one we were this using? One here. Okay. I'm ready for you. You're ready for me. Thank you. All right. Let's let's show some hexi quilts here, so we know what we're talking about. Right Look at this beautiful. <gasps> oh, that's got fleece on the back of this lovely. Okay. All right. So we're going to use that a would ruler. cheer you up, wouldn't it? That one. And let me just show you this so that you understand. One ruler can cut nine sizes. Of oh, hexes. look at you! Okay. <laughs> okay. You uh, hexy thing. You hexy thing. Right. And I, I wanted to show you this just so you get the, the breadth of what this ruler can do. Yes. All these sizes, one ruler. Oh, and we're going to show you goodness. exactly how, how to, to use it. How it's to all use very it. well. It's all very well having a ruler going. Oh, it's a, but if you don't know how to use it, it's a waste right. of waste of. Um, because I'm thinking as well, um, English paper piecing. Yes. That we sell hexes of these these shapes. You can make all your own, can't Now we? you can make all your own. So the way. ruler, I have the white backing on. Yes, yes. This is the cheater section right here. This tells you to make a finished size two inch hexy. I need to cut a four inch strip. Oh, okay, okay. So this is the strip size you start out with. Yeah. This is what you yield. Finished size. Hexy. Now, measured of a single finished edge. So I'm going to cut a four inch right. strip okay. and I'm going to make a two inch hexi. Right. So I'm going to, sorry, but need that shape, need? the shape cut ruler to cut my four inch strip. The shape cut oh. is. The, mini, um, the charm one, the little uh, one. Actually, the big one would be good. And oh, I've only got, uh, hang on. Yes. Hang on, I need to go and get the big one for you, don't I? Okay, well. Um, Can you get Chris to get it for us? Oh, hang on, hang That's on, hang right. On. Let me try to make do with this. Let me wait, see wait, if wait, I can wait. make do with this. Oh, no, I've only got square straight on the half and straight on the thing here. I need the square. I'm good. Don't worry. I'm good. Sure? I'm good. I'm going to cut a four inch strip. So yeah. I'm going to cut. Let's have it just be on the safe side, anyway. I'm going to cut at zero and four. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to just put the end squared away. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Okay. But let's just, just use that ruler, and we're going to maybe show this again in the last hour, but I know that I need a lot of hexes. Yeah. I already know that. So this is I'm the shape cut, cut plastics, by the way. Uh, my yeah. zero um, horizontal line is down here. I'm going to cut at zero, yeah. four, yeah. eight, yeah. 12, 16, all right? Yeah. And I'm going to have all of my four-inch strips. Right. This is the fascinating bit, right? Now, 
Hexi has six sides. Yes. I just cut two. I got four more to go. Okay, okay. yep, yep. I'm gonna take the ruler, I'm gonna lay it on the strip, and um, there was a piece of purple fabric that did not make it from America over here, so I know this is a little hard to see. Okay, don't Bear worry. with me. So, do you see where this says two inch finished? Yes. That's gonna go on the bottom edge of my strip. Yep. And look it, it automatically lines up on the top. Because you've cut the right size strip that it tells you in your chart at the front there. Now I'm gonna make sure I'm to the two inch side out here. You see yep. these lines here? Yeah. Now you can't, you can't mistake this because everything fits together. Two here, two here, two here. Right. So I'm going to cut, I'm gonna follow the two inch line around. Yep. I'm gonna cut here and here. Okay, right. lift this up. I'm gonna turn and turn. All right? Yeah. Because I now want to cut my last two sides. So what was the bottom is now up here. Yeah. But everything, I want to reline everything up. Okay. So you've got it on the two inch line there. I do. The bottom will be on the two inch line. The top will be on the two inch line. And I will cut here and here. Just a little need to thread, get a new blade for your thing. Little thread here, and that will give you your perfect. That gives me four of them right oh, away. Oh yes, yes, of course, yes. Four of them right away. So it is cut your strip size. Yes. Cut, cut, turn. Yeah. And it's turn twice. You turn one, twice. Didn't two. You? Yes, Just turn think, twice. Think in pairs because yes. it's six size. Turn, yeah. turn, cut, cut. Yeah. That's how we make our hexes. And they're all going to be perfect. They're all going perfect. to be the right size. They're and all going to fit together. you want to follow this guide to tell you what size finished you need. There you go. Here's yours. Here's yours. Here's yours. Yes. What size? Cut a four inch strip for a two inch hexi. Okay. So hexi. now when people, people get confused with the measurement because that, that people go and go, oh, that's bigger than that two inches. But the, when you measure a hexi, it's actually, yes. you're measuring along one side, you aren't are. you? So that's how you know. So this is a two inch hexi because this sides are two inches long, not two inches from there to there, or two inches from there to there. It's always the, the measurement of the side of the hexi that, 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 that it's referring to. And this is gonna finish off then at two inches, okay? So oh, you so see, it's actually... See, this has a seam allowance built yes. right in. Yeah. So it's all done for you. So here's my purple fabric. Right. Now, let's look at this quilt first of all. Yes. Because hexes are often put together with equilateral triangles, triangles yes. which is why we showed you that ruler yeah. earlier. And um, to do that, we're going to cut our equilateral triangles. Yeah, from the ruler earlier from in the, the ruler. show. We're going to sew right sides together. If you want to mark your seam allowances, you can. Yeah. Um, but you don't have to. Right sides together. I know that looks kind of crazy. And we're going to flip this open. Right. And that is going to give us this. Perfect. You definitely want to press that. This so is, it's now changed from a hexi to a diamond. It has. But then? We are going to start constructing our rows. Oops, Right. All right. So, can you see how this is now? Yes, 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 yeah. These teal triangles are the white yes. in here. And the reason they're overlapping at the moment is because when they're not sewn together, once you've got the seam allowance, your points of your hexes will then meet perfectly like they that. They will meet they? perfectly, yeah. exactly. So, you get your rows done. Yes. And you're going to join your rows. And that looks like this. So you're, you're, if you can recall where we came from, we started with this. Yep. We added this and mm -hmm. we added that. And now we join our rows. This creates a secondary star pattern. Yes, Let's yes, look yes, at yes, the yeah, white yeah. in here, joins yep. that. Now, that's one way. I would say that's the easiest way to sew hexes is with an equilateral. Right. Here's another great example of that. Lots and lots and lots of quilting on this one. Um, just a little stippling yes. and then through here. Now, if you want to... So that's exactly, it's exactly the same as is, the one we've just done. It is the same. And that, it's such a great design for kids because we call it I Spy. Yes. You know, going to bed at night, let's find the octopus. Or yes, let's yeah. find, you know, the moon and the stars. But sometimes we like to join 
Oh. We like to join hexi to hexi. Right. A little bit more detailed, but it's certainly easy enough to do. Right. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to take our hexes and we're simply going to join them right sides together. Okay. But I want you to stop at the quarter inch seam allowance. Right. So don't run off to the end. You stop at the end of the, the seam allowance. Yeah. Stop at the quarter inch. Exactly. Yeah. I like to mark them all just because then it's easy. I don't yes. have to think. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a row of green and a row of purple. All right. Now we're going to show, let's put this up for a second so we can be very clear. We're going to put right sides together like this. All right. right. And we're going to sew from here to here. We're not going to sew all the way to the end. Right. You're literally only sewing from there to there. I'll show you. Right. And I used white thread so that you can see. Yeah. Wrong step, Jill. Okay. So we're sewing from here to here. Right. Okay. There to there. Okay. By not sewing all the way to the end, this allows me to pivot and turn this like pivot and turn this like this oh, to right. sew my next seam. Yes. There we go. And I will sew now just to that next pivot point. Yeah. And then I will Are we not called again. creating a ball shape then? No, no, it's still um, flat. It still, it's, it still comes out flat, does it? I think it, it does. It's called a Y seam. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. So if you want to look at the back side, you're turning, turning, turning. Yes, yeah. And I'm flipping those seam allowances every other direction so that I get a nice flat seam. Yeah. And this is what that looks like. Right. I was, con I was concerned that it was, when sewing those together, you were creating a kind of actual s curve, but you're not. It's like because you're doing the Y seams. You're doing the Y flat, seams. Yeah. So you're pivoting at that quarter inch um, seam yes, allowance yeah. area. Yeah. And then you're flip flopping your seams. Okay. Then on this one, then. Okay, guess what this is? It's an equilateral cut in half the long way. Oh, Something okay. Like that. Yeah, 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 of course. And then that's as a seam there, yeah. Yes. And this I guy, thought you were going to go like this, and I was thinking, no, that's I not going to work. Yeah, so this is, it's easy. You end up sewing squares together. Yes, 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 yes. From yes. this block, you're sewing half an equilateral to each one of these, and yeah. you're sewing squares and strips down here. So you have just made a super easy, easy block. I've got three minutes left. Okay. We can take we can take what you were going to do there into the next hour. That's not a problem. But how's what's this? Applique. Oh. This applique. This is a cheater method, but the reason I wanted it hanging is I just if you're intimidated by that whole process, just applique on top. Okay. Cut it out, turn it edges under, and just simply sew. So on top. so hang on. So we've got the hexes that we've cut there. Yeah. Yeah. So that one is a blue hexi. Yes, this one is a the, green. Uh, the yes. triangle cut in half lengthways there. Uh huh. But then that one there is just a that one there is just a smaller one that you just applicate on the top. Yes. And then that one there is another one that you just applicate on the top. Yeah. So if you're intimidated by anything I yes. just showed you, but you love that look, yeah, you can do it. And um, I believe these patterns are all on our website. So if you get stuck, refer to our website. It's all free. Grab the pattern and, and away you go. This is a great way to showcase solids, by the way. And um, just one cautionary, they do yes. need to be pressed really well as you assemble them. But what a great look that is. No, that's it? fantastic. Yeah. So it's, it's literally all you've done is sewn big ones together. Yes, all And then on sizes. top of the big ones, you right. just put small ones of different colors to mm -hmm. create all that depth and everything. There's nine sizes on that one ruler. <gasps> Where's the ruler? It's so you get everything that you need. There we go, it's the ruler. Yes. You hexy thing. There you it hexies is. You hexy thing. And I, these patterns are... Oh, um, there's that, there is that one. And there's that one. Yes. Yeah. this one. So there's your ruler. So what you do is you cut the strip, the size it says here, and then to cut, to get your finished size of hexies there, that's the size of strip, and you put it down, you cut, cut, turn, turn, cut, cut. You got it. And you've got a perfect... And then if you do four layers together, you've got four hexes right done away. straight away. Because obviously, when you're doing the big ones, that doesn't take long. But if you've got lots of little ones, then that's going to take an awful lot longer. You just have them all cut out in the foot. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. And then let me just recap the uh, cushion quilters because we've been using it for the, all the hours. Um, very, very popular state. So it's the cushioned quilters square and blocker. You can just use it as a pressing board if you want to. It's got wood. Then it's got the foam, which is, f which is fused to the actual cotton canvas. Mm -hmm. It's then baked 
So any shrinkage has happened before you even get it. All your markings are on the outside here in inches. 20 by 14 is the pen. And then for any circle ones, you just need that in there. And you've got your handle just to hang it all up because you know if you haven't got much space, hang on. And also if you use lots and lots of steam, I presume what you can do is hang it up and it'll just dry it'll naturally dry. into the next the day. And this is nice for classes. The mats and the, the cushion quilter, take it to class, you've got a handle. Exactly, exactly. Not only to hang up, to carry as well. Um, don't forget the starch and don't forget the basting spray. Both will be mentioned again because you'll come back in an hour's time. I am. Where we've got dogs, cats, we've got a brand new... Um, Two big quilts. We have a ruler to make beautiful scalloped edges on quilt and a ruler to make round edges. So all that coming up in an hour's time. So uh, you're going to have a sit down. No, you haven't got to sit down. Go and prep your next hour. <laughs> Uh, Helen Rhiannon with the handbag coming up straight after this and Jill will be back in an hour's time with all those goodies. See you in three. We've got some exciting news. Sewing Quarter are delighted to announce that we now have our very own app. Available for download on all iOS and Android devices. Simply go to the App Store or Google Play and search Sewing Quarter. Once you've downloaded the app, you'll be able to watch Sewing Quarter live 24 hours a day and purchase all the products on today's show. So download the app today and keep watching Sewing Quarter on the move. Dreaming of dressmaking but not sure where to start? Join us every Friday for our exciting new dressmaking how-to series. This Friday, our very own Search for a Star winner, Jenny McCreary, is our guide that will show us how to sew children's clothing and faux fur. At 9am, Jenny will be using an easy-to-follow pattern by two stitches. Jenny shares pro tips and techniques live on air for sewing hidden pockets, cosy funnel neck and a fun contrast panel. Then at 11 a.m., Jenny has her own brand new beginner-friendly pattern that she will use to show us how to make a faux fur trimmed shawl. Colours include chic arctic white and cuddly teddy bear brown. So set your reminder for Friday morning to build your dressmaking confidence with our new how-to series. From 9 a.m. the 22nd of February, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Prepare to be charmed on Friday the 1st of March when Softies expert Sue Quinn is here with two hours of irresistible characters. Sue begins at 8am with a shh snoozy bunny tucked up in a tree log bed. Made from pure wool felt, there is even a tiny teddy to snuggle up with. All you need to create this peaceful scene is included in the kit. At 10am, Sue has two charming teddies. The traditional brown bear is made using pure wool, Shetland tweed, glass eyes and movable limbs. The sweet little calico bear sports a Liberty fabric dress and bow, making both teddies instant heirlooms. We can't wait for Sue to share these treasures with you. Watch, learn and create characters to be loved for generations to come. Friday the 1st of March, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Now, I wouldn't normally do this, but if you were missed, missed the show at eight o'clock, we had the early bird special, but I had to rush it today because the day's so packed. Today's early bird special, look, you'd normally pay uh, nine pounds and 98 pence for these two boxes of uh, freezer paper. But today and today only, or until stocks last, you save three pounds, you can get both of those for six pounds and 98 pence. Sit, that's the early bird special. There it is, there it is, there it is. So it should be 9 98 Today's price 6 98 You're saving £3. Oh, loads of people coming in. Well, if you're not here at 8 o'clock, then, you know, it's, not everyone can be here at 8 o'clock, can we? It's not often that we haven't... It's normally... I'm normally going, oh, sold out, sold out, sold out. We had so many of these. We have... I mean, look, 
if it was a normal day, we would have sold out ages ago. We would have sold out ages ago. But because, they, because Harriet ordered more of these, um, we're all right, we're all right. But they will go. They will all have gone by the end of today. So if you've got this in your basket, please check out. Saving three pounds. Don't risk, leave it in your basket. Right, okay. Uh, isn't this bag lovely? No, I'll, sh oh, I'll show you the green one first. It's called the higher class bag. I don't know why, because Becky Alexander Frost, Frost Alexander made it. I thought it was going to be the higher class, but she's not high class, is she? I love her. I love her to bits, though. Anyway, she'll be going mad. She'll be watching the telly, going, what is he going on about that? John Scott, Scott John. Because I call her Becky. Re uh, Rebecca? What's her middle name? Jane. Rebecca Jane Alexander Frost, Frost Alexander. That's her full title. Green. So I've got a bundle where you get half a metre of the PU, one metre of the green cotton, iron on interfacing, thread and your instructions, £24 and 99 pence. Do what, what? I, I don't know what you're saying to me. Uh, anyway, moving on. I've got it in blue as well. I've got it in blue as well here. I didn't know what you sent to me. I do apologise. This is the blue one. Now, you don't get the zip. You do not get the zip in the bundle or the D-rings. That's nice. Navy blue. Navy. One, uh, one side, I've got to show you, one side is quilted. The other side's got a pocket on it. This one was made by Becky Alexander Frost, Alexander Frost, Alexander Frost. Oh, do you know what as well? She made another one with cross hatching on it. Look at, look on the design, right? Look, you could cross hatch it if you wanted to. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? You could do the chevron, which we've done, or you could do the um, cross hatching. Nice, isn't it? Uh, everything you need, oh, all the pattern, I'll get um, Helen to tell you about it in a second. Everything you need to know is in there. Right, so that's the blue one. Then I've also got in mustard. Moutard. There's mustard. So you get uh, half a metre of the PU, one metre of the lining, the thread, the interfacing and the um, instructions. 24.99, there it is. And I'm going to finish with the red because that's the one we're going to demonstrate. So you get a metre of the red, half a metre of the PU, the interfacing, don't look at the back here, the interfacing, the thread and the instructions. There's your still. Now, two other things you will need to make it. Your D-rings. They are the 25 millimetre D-rings. Uh, you'll just need one packet. Oh, actually, you only need two. You only need two, so you can make two bags. Because you only need two, don't you, the D-ring set? Two ninety-nine. And also the chain. Now, if you go to the website, the chain also comes in gold and rose gold, but we didn't think we'd show it today because there's no rose gold D-rings. But if you love this chain, and they always sell very, very well, it does come in rose gold and not real, not real rose gold or yellow gold coloured. Uh, this is the silver coloured version. It's called the Victoria 749. I should be able to tell you how many centimetres it is really, shouldn't I? No. Have you got how many centimetres it is, Paul, up there? Eighty-eight centimetres. Look, it's got the lobster cl lobster claws on the end there. You will also need a zip, but I'll talk to you more about the zips when I go over. We get onto it. Yeah, because we'll talk about the zips when we get to it. Okay. There we go then. Right. So you're going to make it in red. I am. I know. Now, I um, the red. we do believe in honesty and openness here. Yes. The, even though they're all the same PU, yes. the red is different to work with, isn't it? I'm only telling you this because we like to be honest. Yeah, I found it just slightly more sticky. The walking foot that I had on my brother machine, yes. I can't uh, change the pressure. So if I could, I would have just, it would have probably made it a bit oh, easier. So if okay, you can okay, release okay. the pressure, then right. it will be fine. Oh, okay, but that's I've fine then. I've been sewing it on this and this has been lovely. Oh, it's been fine on this yeah, one. Oh, so it's, it's, so it's your machine then, not yeah. the PU. Yeah, but but they, are, they do feel fine. slightly different, just so, you, just so you know. Yeah, but the red, I can't wait to 
finish the red. Come on then, Lovely. let's finish it. Right, okay, instructions. Oops, yep. <laughs> throw it at you. All very straightforward. And yeah, we're gonna do the chevron yes. style now. Um, now, do you get all the pattern pieces you need in here then? You have to draw a handful of the rectangular pieces out. Oh, okay, yeah. But so some of them are in there, there's, there's tiny bits. It's yeah. not, not one of those long-winded ones. You can yeah. draw the whole thing out. Um, but it's, it's pretty good to just make the actual bag. It's a lovely project. Right. So we're gonna start off with the outside section. Right. Now, now I'm new to uh, walking feet, so I finally bought my own walking foot. Good, that time. And uh, I was messaging Becky Alexander Frost. Frost going, Alexander. Why isn't it working? We know, what, what have I done wrong? And I did a creative embroidery workshop the day before, so my teeth were down. Oh, and I was like, Becky, no. what am I doing wrong? Sometimes it's so, as simple as that, isn't it? I know, it? you think, yeah. oh, so no, Becky's brilliant, so hi, Becky. Um, so this is uh, the piece that you're working on first. So the first right. thing it gets you to do is to actually create the front of this section. Okay, now, I know this, you're doing the chevron one, but on the front of the packet, there's a cross hatch one. Are there instructions yeah. for a cross hatch one? Um, I think she's put in there that you can choose what you do yes. off the top of my head, yeah. but it's, it's totally up to you how you do it. The lovely thing is with the masking tape is an inch wide, so yeah. I've used that as a guide oh, okay. to stick on, which is And that doesn't handy. mark the PU or anything? No, although this has been on for a couple of days. I'm hoping it will peel off okay. Okay, we will see. we'll do that off no, camera. I'll soon tell you. So before you do actually start the making, this, this is the first bit I've pulled out, but you'll see that underneath you've got a layer of oh, yes. interfacing. Oh, I haven't got any inter I haven't got any iron on. Oh, it's in your packet. It's in your packet. Iron on like. interfacing. Yep. Yep. And then there's the foam stabilizer. And this is the well. foam stabilizer here. So you iron all the pieces that need the interfacing on. So this is first. iron on. This is this iron on or this, is this isn't. This is the one you stitch on. Okay. So because we're kind of quilting this one, we just layer it underneath and quilt it in place. Okay, perfect. But, but you get the iron on interfacing in the bu in the bundle anyway. What you will need to do with all the other pieces is you will need to iron interfacing onto all of your bits. Yeah. And then you'll need to put your foam stabilizer yep. on. And what Becky suggests with it is you actually stitch it on about your centimetre seam allowance in. Yes. And then cut down to it. Trim it away. Okay, and perfect. it does help because you have got quite a lot of bulk at this end yes, of it. Yes, yeah. So you, bit of prep time first. Do a test run on your your PU and a you know, spare bit of that just to make sure that it's stitching okay. Oh yes, because okay. once you stitch, you can't unpick, can you? No, I no. know. So just make sure you've got that, the right stitch length, which is three for your, uh, for your quilting Top bit. Stitch so what she gets you to do is to mark the center. So yeah. she clearly gets you where to measure into the center. I've just put a thin strip of masking tape just to line right up there. And then I've got the pieces of masking tape that then I'm going to stitch down pivot and up yeah. and then just move them and keep moving them up so i'm sure if you're a quilter there are other ways oh yeah to do well, it. you know Absolutely. what you can do you know what you can do know, on the side of your walking me, foot me. yeah there's a when you get a walking foot it's also got a bar that you can attach to it oh. and you can move that bar in and out See? to whatever width you want it so you can move the bar to an inch from oh. the from thing and then you just literally follow the bar follows the line that you've done before See, and you I'm, know that it's I'm learning so much yeah. from doing this show yeah. as well. So. But be careful when you pull, it depends on what, which walking foot you've got. Some of them you can't just pull it out because you break, you have to get, click it out. Right. So just watch when See, you take that. See, that's good to know. Yeah. So any right. advice on walking feet, yeah. don't ask me. So if you're struggling to get it under, just, just lift it that little bit higher. Yeah. And you are making sure that your, all your layers are together. So I think Becky suggests to stitch all the way around the whole thing first anyway. And what she's also got you to do is put some glue on the back just to kind of glue it together or double-sided tape on it, yes, she uses yeah. a lot. Which I, oh, I no, just put Becky Alexander, Frost, Frost Alexander, she uses it all she's the time. She's a double-sided like, yes, fan, yes. isn't she? Yeah. So I'm gonna try and do this super neat. Uh, remember the na that the navy graphic is in at the moment at the top and the red at the bottom there. The navy looks lovely with a jacket it, as well, yeah, yeah. doesn't it? Well, only because... Um... No, you keep sewing. I'm just tidying up. OK. I? So I'm just going to move the masking tape, which I hope hasn't stuck permanently. Oh, here we go. We were going to do that off camera. Oh, it's fine. Look. There we are. And we're going to put that back alongside there. Oh. A 
it might be a longer stitch because I've done a slightly shorter one there. So double check what stitch length there is for that. So don't quote me on it. I thought it was three. But the thing but is, it could be three on one machine because you yeah. you've done that on your machine at and home. And it's slightly narrower, so but yeah, yeah. double check anyway. But also at home, you won't be doing one at last week and then coming on telly and doing the other no, one. No, exactly, so. doing and half you'll be doing a bag. And you on the same machine, yeah. Exactly. I'll just cut these sticky bits off. There we go. And then same on the next bit. So the nice thing is, you know, you can just pick this up, move it along, and just sew slowly as you need to. Yes. Because as so you say, you don't want the to whole go the whole piece then. It's not um oh no, it's the other side of the pockets on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's only the one side. You could do both and, and no, not no, have no, a pocket. No, you the can other do side's got the pocket. And also, at the other side of the pocket, you can have against your body anyway, so you want that to keep that yes. one kind of smooth and small. Yeah, right? you're right. There we go. And so then we'll just do the last one up here then. But again, you can do, like you say, you can do whatever stitching you want and whatever quilting on it you want. Can't Anything. It is nice with it on. I think it gives it a really nice feel. Because yeah. I'm quite new to PU anyway, yeah. so I'm quite enjoying having yeah, Not many project. wedding dresses made out of PU, are they? Watch this space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because last time we designed our denim wedding dress. Yeah. So today yeah. we designed the PU I'll wedding have to get dress. that in the pipeline, yeah. Right, stick those off. And so you've got the last bit. So I did some of it before because I didn't want to spend all the time yeah, yeah, doing yeah, yeah. that. There we go. Don't worry too much about your ends because you do actually cut off your the shape of yes, the pattern. Yeah. So don't get too hung up on back stitching yeah. if you forget. I like a habit, I do it anyway. There we go. And that is all done. Okay. What I would say is when you are peeling off your masking tape is to almost either cut it or just tear it before the stitch because you don't want to pull your actual stitches. Oh out. yes, yes, so yes, yes. I'll leave that for now, but I would just take a bit more time and just yeah, just cut that out. Yeah. But that's what you're looking to achieve for now. Yeah. And then you get your pattern, which is your main body, which is this part. So that bit is that pattern is in, in it here. It is. Then. Yeah, that one's printed out. So what you need to do is line up your edge of this exactly on your folds so it's quite handy keeping the mask and tape yeah, there exactly, yeah. and you can place this you know wherever you want right so i'm going to move it up to there now i have got clips but just to pin this in place i'm only going to pin very lightly <gasps> on the edge i know it's naughty isn't it but i can't really clip this and i don't really want to weigh it down i really want to make sure it doesn't move yeah so it's within the seam allowance oh of course it is yeah yeah see you good right oh rotary cutter i know i haven't cut on air before and then you can just cut around could you use scissors if you haven't got to rope? Mind your Absolutely, fingers. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, I know. I, I think it's more nerve wracking watching people use it, isn't it? Whereas yeah, I'm, yeah. The little Paul gets really myself, stressed about watching you. people use them upstairs. I use it to cut everything out, though. Oh, do you? Yeah, all dressmaking, and I'll trim those curves anyway. Yeah, I use them. Um, we were just discussing it now. I use rotary cutter for for everything on dressmaking. Did you always do that? Uh, only when they came out. So I used to obviously cut everything. I forget everything. you're old like me. I know, so. I'm ancient. <laughs> but you, you, um, I find it, it can be quite hard on your knuckles with the scissors when you're cutting so much. Yeah. But also on the dressmaking side as well, especially when you've got anything shiny, mm -hmm. just things move and it's the worst thing. And I sometimes cut out, you know, your lining and your outside layer and yes. a lace layer. Yeah. Um, so my table's just covered in cutting mats. And I just use the blade and then I'll use the scissors for the, the smaller right. bits you need then as well. But no, I've seen a few people, there's been a lot of talk obviously about using rotary well, cutters. Well, apparently on, on, aren't they doing it on the sewing bee this yeah. year? They've all got rotary cutters on the sewing and bee And some year. people say, no, I didn't think you could use them on, on dressmaking. But yeah. Yeah, you can. So we'll get that lined up there. And then same on that side. You could almost just draw around them, couldn't you? Before yeah, you cut them out if you wanted exactly. to. Exactly. This is probably my If you're cutting along way. the line. I, I wonder if uh, Becky may probably says to draw around it anyway. Oh, OK. So read Becky's instructions. Yeah. She's probably more sensible. I doubt it. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. OK, so that is your that end of there that is now your front section right so what you then want to do is zigzag all the way around just to keep all your layers together okay. so i'll do that have to be a zigzag can you not just straight stitch it 
No, what she wants you to do is to actually just squeeze it all together. Oh, okay. Because this, we haven't taken that, we haven't cut that away. Right. Um, so it's just a case of kind of condensing okay. it. Okay. I'll leave that for a sec, though, yeah, 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 because yeah. we can do that again. And what I want to move on to now is, I'll leave this as a reference just to be able to look at yeah, any of, of the yeah. photos. You can see you can have it your way. You can have it your way around if you want, because I've got this one here. Oh, okay. I'm, I think I'm all right. Yeah, it's, you know, you visually, you'll just check where yes, you are with yeah, things yeah. as well. Okay. But just so I can refer. So that's the, you know, the zigzagging section yeah. around there. So then you move on to your pockets. So the other side of so the So this bag. side, we're doing this side now. That's it. So you have a lining section that's fused. You have a main section that is fused and has the... Okay, so that's just got the iron-on interfacing yeah. on it and this one has the iron-on iron interfacing on and the... And the, the yeah. that's right. So that's your back section. Yeah. And then you have your two pocket pieces here. So you've right. got your lining, which again is interfaced. Yeah. And, and that, so that hasn't interface. got the foam stabiliser. It doesn't need that yeah. heaviness. Okay. So then you place these together and we just stitch a one centimetre seam all the way down. Just down so, the straight edge? Yeah, so we're just attaching the top section of this now. Yeah. And take a stitching back down. And what seam allowance okay. are you selling? On that One thing? centimetre. Okay. Okay, so when you've done that, you are just turning it through the right way. Yeah. Obviously, don't iron. You can iron from this side if you want, as yeah. long as you're not touching any of the, the you PU. Can, apparently, you can iron the PU on the fabric side, but not on the... Oh, um, can you? Yeah, apparently. So I didn't know that either until this oh. week. Who did we have in this week? Uh, was it CL? And she just ironed the... She just ironed the, um, oh, the I mean, I bit. ironed the other side because I had a crease in from travelling up yeah. with it and just ironed through the foam and I was thinking, oh, God, it's yeah. in the bubble, but... No, I, I would be... The first thing I do is, oh, not iron that. No, no. So I'm just, I'm happy just to fold that yes. back a little bit. And then you just want to top stitch. Oh, you do your top stitch. Here. Yeah, so just no to hold to it all in place. So we'll put it back up to your stitch length three. Or whatever your Or top whatever stitch. it should be. Sorry, <laughs> Becky. <laughs> I'm so set on it should be three. But it has been on everything I've done. No, I don't know who you're talking about. Um... I've got three in my head. Either she's told me that. I don't know where you've got that from. <laughs> Top stitch carefully along these lines, it says. Maybe it's right at the start, maybe? Or maybe it was my personal message she sent me. Yeah, so either oh, way, we'll go with yes, three. Yes, maybe. Anyway, carry on. Right. So that is your, is your lovely pocket. Yep. So you then place that on top of there. And then we stitch around as well. So you're getting through quite a few layers now, aren't yeah. you? So when you are cutting your your foam stabiliser, make sure you are cutting a good centimetre because you do realise how much you are going through. Yes. So I have got some nice clips now. Yeah. I think it's quite offensive if you pin too much, isn't it? With the PU. So we'll do that. Yeah. And just on your long now, stitch. Now, you're not going to see, you're not going to see this stitch. You're, no. you're just holding them together. This is you? purely to keep your layers together. Because and you're not zigzagging this, you're just straight stitching No, this. because you've cut away your foam stabiliser on this. Yeah. You haven't got as much of a seam allowance to worry about. So you're purely just attaching them together. And did you do your nail varnish the same colour as the PU on purpose? I thought, oh, let's go red. Yeah. I thought Chanel type red as well. Just check that's not folding there. Okay. Reduce that. So what you can do is reduce the pressure on your machine as yes, well if your to help you with a PU. Yeah. Trying to keep it as taut as possible when going through. Right. Okay, so that is your your pocket.
Yeah. Right, so you've got it's a lovely feel to it there yes. as well. Yes, and it's all it's all lined with that. It's lined with cotton yep. in this side, absolutely, and PU on that side. So it's all completely enclosed. Look, yeah. There. Okay, lovely. Okay, and then you can also attach that onto the back. So I'll leave that. What the lining? Yeah, because the way the bag is made is you make. The whole bag, make the outside front and back, attach them onto the gusset, and then you bias bind inside. Oh, OK. So I'm going to go from this side now and just go round. right around the edge again. Okay. So I've done it separately, although it's a bit sticky that side. Maybe I'll go this side. What's your pin? Take that out. So we'll just go around again. So I probably could have just done that whole section in one go. Yes. Never mind. Let's take that out. Also, I wonder if um, we sell this Teflon sheet when we're doing um, westerly rulers. I wonder if you yeah. use a lot of PU, if you put that on, because it's, it just goes on here and it makes that surface slippery. Oh, uh, that's so, nice. Yeah, you need that underneath. Yeah, I don't know if that, I don't know if that would work, I'm just thinking. Most no, I, otherwise I just lay a masking tape onto the, the actual uh, plate and underneath your foot. If you don't have a walking foot, don't be afraid, because each time I've done a project with PU, I've just put masking tape under the foot yes. on the plate, and it's been absolutely fine. Yeah. I've advanced to a walking foot today. There we go. So that right. now means everything is All together secure the the and in place. Mm -hmm. So you would also do the same for this section as well. So right. you then also place that, once you've zigzagged around, Yes. place that on top, and then zigzag this first, just yeah. to kind of reduce the bulk, and then you can stitch around, or do it all together if you're feeling brave. Yeah. So you shall have your A front, front and your back. Yeah. The next part is the zip. So the zipper that I've got... Okay, right, before we go on to zips, I just need to go and recap, and then we'll yeah. come back and we'll talk about zips. Is that okay? Is that right? Right, okay, very quickly. Red one first, which is this one here. You get half metre of the PU, one metre of the red cotton, the red thread, you get the interfacing iron-on and the instructions, £24.99. And, and there's the still. Mustard next. Mustard, you get uh, half a metre of the PU, one metre of the cotton, the thread, the interfacing and the instructions. $24.99. Green next. Well, it's more of an olive, really, isn't it, than green? Uh, they call, a forest, they call that one, forest. So you get your uh, half metre of your PU, you get your metre of your cotton, your thread, your interfacing and your instructions. There you go. Forest. £24.99. And, and the most popular is the navy blue. Oh, sorry, hang on, no, no, hang on. Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go, yep. There you go, so the navy blue one coming up next. By a long chalk, the navy blue. You see, I thought the red, I thought the red would have been the most popular, to be honest. Navy, you get half a metre of the PU, one metre of cotton, your thread, your uh, interfacing and your uh, instructions. You will also need some D-rings. 25 millimetre D-rings. You only need two, but you get a packet of four. Say this again. Two ninety-nine. Now, as expected, every time we bring these to air, they sell out. Half the stock of these have gone, and there's more in baskets. These are the eighty-eight centimeter chain. And now you don't have to just use it for this bag. You can use it for lots of other bags. So it's got the clasps on the bottom there, and then the lovely kind of—is it a Belcher chain? That one, I'm not quite sure. Seven pounds and forty-nine pence. We've also got it in rose gold colour and gold colour, yellow gold colour, available on the website. £7.49. Now, I'll talk about zips when we get over there because it's quite important to talk to you about. No. I think I just killed a fly when I threw that down. Right. Right. In the zip, right, the zip, what it is, is in this one, this is a, you're using a different one there. Yeah. On the web... We've got this double-ended, uh, well, we can show it to you now, but I haven't got it in real life. We've got this double-ended zip here in the kind of uh, beige or taupe. 
so that it opens both ways like that. Uh, 10.50. Now, how long is the zip? You will have to cut it down. There's the image. So it's 60 centimetres, so you are going to cut quite a lot off that one. But we've got that in beige. We've got that one in beige. Uh, it must also be available on the web in... Navy, I Navy, had. which we had yeah. on there. So just go and check on the website. You just put a couple of zips and you see it. You're just using a zip that you had. Standard one. I had a few different ones sent. Yeah. Um, but I had some of those ones in stock. Right. And it means they've got the bigger tabs, the yes, holes exactly. in the tabs. Yes. So you can do the like a butterfly type effect yes. or the bow effect. Oh, yes. Yeah, so like on here, yeah, uh, on that it. one. So you might not be able to do that on no, yours. I no, don't. But we'll you get can that do the little there. tab on those as well. So that's what's nice about that one. Otherwise, you could just put a strip of ribbon yeah, or something through yeah. these. You don't really need to do anything if you don't no. want to do it. Right. So to create the the actual tabs anyway. Yes. Um, if you are going to do the little bow bits, you you've got. So the this this piece. is the bow bit. This isn't the bit yeah. that the that the D rings attached to. No, these to. are these little bits. Okay, here. right. But the D rings are made the same way. Right. Okay. So you will just have your your long rectangle. Then you'll just finger press each side. And then you just stitch two rows of stitching down each side. Perfect. And then you would put a little bit of glue or tape in yeah. once you've put it through, through there. The, through the loop, feed yeah. it through, bit of glue or tape, and then you just stitch a V and cut into it. So that's quite nice and simple to do. Yeah. So I've left those there for Definitely now. Definitely tabs on your zip if you've got the tab, the zip with the bigger tab on it. But exactly the same thing, but just with a one row of stitching right. for your D ring. So your long rectangle, fold them into the center stitch each side, feed it around your D-ring, and then just stitch, stitch. along okay. there. So Perfect. these are just nice and straightforward. Okay. Now your zip, I've prepped some of this because I wanted to show, again, as much no, as possible. No, 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 it's, fine. it's absolutely fine, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. So this zip was super long. Yes. And I think it's always a bit worrying when I find when I read instructions and it says cut the zip to this much. I read it about three times over, double check it and think, oh my God, yeah, do you mean yes. finish size or do you mean with bits of yes, fabric on yeah. the end? But the zip, should be the length of that. Right. And what you'll see is when you do cut the actual zip, you are just shy of the length of this. Yes. And you've got the tabs on the end to be able to attach on. Okay. So what I did is measured the 14 and a quarter inches mm -hmm. of the zip. Um, this had a, a, the metal bits on the end, so I actually just cut it short. So cut yep. the metal bit off each end. Yeah. And then I've just secured the zips, so the teeth don't come undone. And then these small little tabs are just rectangle pieces that you just fold over. Yes, because the, the only place you, you can't actually see it, can you? No. The only place you see that tab is is just in there. Can you see? In, like, there's just that tiny bit just in there. You yeah. see, it's just to finish the zip off nicely. That's Because I was thinking you don't see much, but probably the <coughs> same on Becky's. Yeah, you don't. You only see a tiny bit. Yeah. But it's just it's a nice finish, and then you can cut off whatever you don't use yeah. then as well. So we are going to now create the zip. Right. And that's your excess. So let me just show it on this one because if you see the zip, it's in a like kind of um, placket or placket gusset of its own, really, yeah. isn't it? There. So this is the, the, the finished end. This is the edge of the top two pieces we've made here, and you're going to put that inside because also it's going to have a, the gusset going all the way around the bottom yeah. as well there. But there's obviously a seam going around there. Okay. Okay. So <clears> you get your. Top gusset, so it's called the zip gusset pattern piece. Oh, okay. That's also then got the foam stabilizer cut down. Yeah. And you've got your interfaced lining section. Yes. So you place this on top. So you want to make sure that you've got the right sides together of the top of the zip. Yeah. Facing the. Oh no! Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. You haven't folded that. Oh, you've literally no, just folded you just it over. No, just leave it that. Because sometimes just... you go like that and like that, don't you? Don't no, I on think this. Becky's just, the just one... got you to fold it over, and Perfect. then we just chop yeah. it off, okay. which is again less bulk anyway. Yeah. So then you place this on top. Yeah. So I'm just ma making sure that it's it's level at each sides, end yeah. there. I've got the clips, but I'm I'm just such a pin person, and because it's in the seam allowance. Yeah, you'll be alright. I'm just going to pin this. The only the only reason we don't say pin PU is if you pin. In the actual bit that's going to be seen, it will leave pin marks. Yeah, exactly. So just get your top layer pinned in first. I know on the instructions, Becky's got the double-sided tape. Right. So you would tape it <clears throat> in place, and that will keep it nice and flat. Be mindful of where your, zip, your zipper is, so then you can move that out of the way then yeah. when you need to stitch. But just while you're pinning it, make sure it's nice and level. Yeah. And then 
you want to get your lining bit. So if you're not sure, because I know zips do baffle a lot I hate of people. Them, yeah. But if you're not sure, I always say pin and then just have a look the right way around. So if you're not sure if you've put this the right way, fold it back and think, right, is that how I wanted to yeah. look? Is that how you Which want it, it to is. look? Yes. Good. Which is good. And then you do a zip sandwich. Um, so you place the line there. in on that side. So your zip is in the middle of your two layers. Yeah. So the right side of your... PU is facing the top of the zip yeah and the lining is facing the inside of the yes. zip. if you know what I mean so we're just going to sandwich and turn that background so you can see get those in place I might wing it a little bit now see if I can pin what I can and then you just stitch a centimeter seam allowance all the way along so now are you oh well I'll wait till you've done it and then we can see am I gonna put uh, this, 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 this stitching here will this be hidden when you do your zip sandwich, will that line of stitching yeah. that you've done yeah. be hidden? Yeah, so you, you yeah. want that just to be within your centimetre. Yeah. But if it shows, go a bit further in. Yeah. Now then, I need to change this onto a zipper foot for this part. Oh, so you can't have you're walking for... Oh, no, no, because you can't get... As no, I was no, contemplating, do I or don't I? No, 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 but I there mean, is another machine that does a walking foot with a zipper. Oh, does it? Because I remember Becky took it off last time and yeah, she was doing yeah. something. You've been so watching just, Becky then, I, I know, I think what I was making, I think I watched something last time and uh, she took it off my oh, thought, oh, she's watch. a nightmare to work with that girl, you know. I am joking, everyone, don't write in. Oh. <coughs> all right. You all right? Yeah. Did you take the screw off too far? There you go. There we go, right. Hello, new there. buyers. Remember, you get your free gift. Oh, now, you, now, you've got to put gift in. When you check out, you've got to write gift to get your free gift. <coughs> and your free p, &P. excuse me. <coughs> but that is only if you're a new buyer. Right. Right, zipper foot in. So we're going to stitch a centimetre all the way along. So you can use that as a guide where that stitching is. Yes. And actually, if it is, you should hide it. But I, after I made the first one, I, I went quite close yes. to here and then realised how much e excess there was of this part. Yes. So it is better to cut as much off, but be mindful that you might see a stitch yes. in. So if you can stitch, so if you see it, it's a good mistake to see. Yeah. Um, get this on here. By ear. It's quite thick, by you. Yeah. It's quite thick through, so you do need to kind of feel where the teeth are because yes. you can't quite see. So don't be afraid to kind of peel this back. But that's the joy of modern day zips. If In the old days when you to had a metal zip, if you went wrong, that was oh your needle gosh, gone I and know, everything. Oh my gosh, I know, I know. So I'm keeping an eye on there. So it's just in that stitching. I'm going to move my needle to the left, actually. On here. Which way is it going? It's just, yes, we say it's just one of those. Um, right. Turny knobs. Great. Let's go a little bit further over. Okay, so what am I on? Take the stitch length back to your normal 2.5. Yes, yeah. Let's go right to the end as well. So you can use the guide, the stitching you've done already, as a guide to sew just within that, and yeah. hopefully you'll be new enough to your, to your zip. Say that again, Paul. Right, so I can feel the zipper is coming up, so I'm yeah. going to keep the needle in. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. Move that out of the way. If you feel it won't get past this point, you can lift this even higher yes. as well. And this machine, oh, it stays up. It stays up, Usually yeah. I'm trying to lift hold yeah. it up and go past. So give that a little thing you want. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the needle up slightly as well. Okay. Just it got it a bit stuck. of a strange angle. Hang you on. manage? Do you want me to? I think so. I think it's past enough for me to uh, stitch past oh, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Unless I've gone slightly too close, but again, Oh, that yeah, be... I think you might have done on that one. Hmm, You'll you will see now. Part, you can carry on. We'll carry on. We'll have a look at it when it comes out. Right. Get that pin out. Okay, so when you've got that bit, you should be able to then... Oh, I've just caught that's the lining. The lining that's all it is. That's all it is, yeah. There you go. Pull that back out. 
but when we top stitch that lining will be pulled back yes, anyway yeah, yeah. so what you will do is just tuck if i put it that way maybe kind of pull your lining and pull your top layer and you can do your zip back up yeah and then we're going to top stitch all the way along here so, you obviously so it's all, can't, everything's out the way everything's sticking over that way yeah. you obviously can't pin this i mean you can you can pin the edges or clip the edges but when I'm stitching it, I'm just going to make sure that I'm pulling it I was going to nice say, just to make sure you're pulling both layers taut, yeah. yeah. So we're going to top stitch down here now. Okay. So, so you need to go back to your biggest stitch again. I need to also change the foot back onto the walking foot. Or do you? Or do, oh, I don't you know, will it go it along with it? I don't know if it will slide no, 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 a little not, bit well, on make, it. I'm not making that decision. I'm going to put the walking foot back on because I'm not going to do the other side of the zip now because I'm going to get this side in and show you how the whole thing goes together. Yeah. So, and the rest of it needs the walking foot anyway. So I put that back off. Now then, Chris put this on for me. I did watch, but I'm hoping it goes in the back. <laughs> <gasps> you have to make sure Chris, that be they... on standby if you're... Uh... There we are, it needs to come out more. See, so here we go. There you go. There we go. Let me put that down for a sec. Let's get that there. So I'll get Chris, we'll go for a cup of tea. Yeah. But, so is that half getting it in that first bit, isn't it? Yeah, in that exactly. hole getting it level. Okay. Oh yeah, that should be okay. And just give it a good tighten. I'm going to pop the needle, needle back. back to the middle. Which sometimes I just think turn it off, put it back on again. Oops. There we go. Right. Okay. Oh, no, no, this has stayed on the same position, actually, even switching it off. Hang on, let's put it back. Four and a half it was. Okay, so we're going to stitch down the top of this, okay. as I said. So we'll pull all this to one side. Get it underneath. Get your needle in and just keep everything to your right-hand side there. Put it up to three again for your stitch length. Yeah, or whatever your top stitch Whatever that is. may be. And then... I'm just going to help it. We're just on a bit of a ridge here, so I'm hoping just to start it off. Lift that. Just needs to yeah, get past right. that bit. Okay, so because it's quite thick on the end, yeah. the bottom of the quilting foot just needed just to yes. have a helping hand up. So you pull on that level and we should be off to go now. That's the no the test if I, I put it in the right, right way. Hello. Yep. I think so. Or was it not? Yeah, not moving. Okay, it, it looks like it's moving. It looks, it should be fine. There you go. Right, I'm going to just put it this way. There we are, we're away. Although... Oh, it's a tiny stitch. I know. It's not going through that easily. So that could be me not putting it on right. Yeah. I'm going to persevere. It went through a lot easier earlier, so... I'm thinking... Can you keep going? Yes, I'm thinking there's, um, we've missed, missed something up there, but... Yeah. So, it should be a lot easier than this, yeah, so don't yeah. worry, don't be put off by this. No, 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 because you've not, you've not used it before. No, oh, it's not happy, is it? I'm just... Isn't there normally something that... We'll get to no. the end. Are you going to? Uh, are we going to have to do the other sides yet as well? No, I'll okay. leave the other. I'm going to put the bag together. Oh, actually, we do need to do the other side, don't yeah. we? Oh, I was thinking I could get away with doing right. half. Uh, Never mind. I wonder if Chris could pop. Could Chris pop in just to check on this um, walking foot while we do the next bit? Yeah. If Chris is here, then I'll go and redo. I'll do no. the final. What I'll do is I'll do the final round up now, Great. and then Chris can sort that out. Perfect. Because he comes in there, if that's right. There yeah. we go. Red first. Uh, a red higher class uh, bag kit. You get half a meter of the red PU, one meter of the red th uh, cotton, the interfacing, the thread, and the instructions. Uh, blue one is, oh, that's the red one there. That's the red one there. I'm just having a nosy. Chris is giving her a lesson so I can see. Uh, anyway, the blue one is this one here. You get half a metre of the PU, one metre of the cotton, 
and the thread and you get the instructions and you get the um, interfacing and the instructions and the instructions and the interfacing. Be careful if the blue one's in your bag. Uh, which one? Mustard, moutard. There's no Jesse, so you are French. Um, normally we say it in French and Jesse goes, oh, that's French for mustard, isn't it? It's not there to do that. There we go. So you get half a metre of the PU, one metre of the cotton, interfacing, thread, instructions, moutard. And then we've got the green one. Got the green one, which is the one that uh, Helen made. You get half a metre of the PU, one metre of the cotton. You get the uh, interfacing, you get the thread, and you get the instructions. £24.99. pence. The green one, that will make you... Not that, Jeremy. This one. That's all right, don't worry. £24.99. pence. Can I come back? Oh, D-rings, 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 sorry, D-rings. Oh, yeah, listen to her. Yeah, she's fine. <laughs> There's your D-rings. Four of them. You only need two for the bag, so you'll have two in your stash. And then do you want me to do the chain? Have they sold out yet? Oh, I can't do the chain yet. I'll do that. Oh, I'm not coming back at the end. That's that finish with now, isn't it? So... That's what I'm saying, that could be the final roundup because then Helen gets all her sewing time then, doesn't she? Right, I hand put it in the back the right way. So thank goodness for Christmas. So which, which one, just so I know for I'll future. I'll show you now. Yeah. Do you... Because they're, diff they're different on this machine to the 680, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, OK, yeah. So Because I was saying, on the, I was about to say on the 680, you have the one that you have to get like that. On the 720, there's a bit that has to fit in like that. And we put it over so there that... and it's supposed to go in there. Perfect. Oh, what have you done now, girl? I know, I thought I did that earlier, but obviously not. Oh, Chris, you might have to come and do it again, you know. What have I done? Hang on. Chris. You might have to come on air, Chris. Chris. I'll, go, I'll go back, I'll go back and do the chain. <laughs> oh, there's Chris. I'll go back and do the chain. Sorry. Uh. Here's the chain. And he hasn't got his best T-shirt on today. He'll be mortified. 7.49, uh, it's the Victoria chain. Now, we do have this chain in yellow gold and in rose gold colours available on the website. We've just got the silver coloured one here today <clears throat> at £7 and 14 pence. New buyers, remember you need to put in the code of gift and you will get a free present and you will get free PMP for today. Uh, but you do have to put in the code gift or when you're on the phone, say to them gift on the phone. Loads of people got this and Jill Rep stuff in their basket. Please check out if you can. Uh, Jill is up in the next hour. Go back. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Now, Chris, when you're on your holidays, how will we get in touch with you? <laughs> you can't. I've got Danny's number, I'll call her. Okay. But that explains that, so that was good. I had no idea anything. how to put it in. <laughs> you just did it wrong. I was like, yeah, I totally didn't put it in right. You have to give me a lesson in that before you go on your holidays. Right. Right. So we'll try that again. Yeah. And hopefully we'll breeze through this one. Well, Chris is here if you need any sewing <laughs> Yeah, done. don't leave the building. Maybe Chris should become the new sewing expert. I think. know. Oh, this is nice because you keep it right on the edge as well. I am converted to, uh, to walking feet. Yeah. Right, so again, I'm just pulling it nice and taut. Yeah. Just stitching along the edge and then we will take that back up. Yeah. Again, put it taut underneath. Yeah. Oh, it's so much better now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, I can see, I can see where we didn't have the I top bit through the, the right bit. bit. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I'll know for future now. Okay, so we get to the end. Pull it all out. Right. And that side's so much nicer than that side. Yes. But it also goes to show that you can Pull it through if you yes, need. Exactly, right. right, we're going to level these out on the yeah. end. Same on there. And then we put, we'll move that up a little bit because that's all in place now anyway. Yes. And your D-rings can now go 
Oh on yes, the yes, end yes, like yes, that. yes, yes. Did you get that, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay, so we'll just tack just along there as well yeah. to keep that in place. But again, we're getting we're getting to the stage of lots of layers again, aren't we? Lots of layers, yeah. But we'll see the bag, see how it's constructed in a sec now. Anyway. Yeah. I wonder if you could also make it, if you're a new to, if you could make it out of a, a cotton fabric. Just oh, the, definitely, you yeah. You know, the first time you made yeah. it? Yeah. To get used to the actual pattern and then yeah. make it out of your PU or something. Because it is super thick, yeah. Right, that's enough for that for a sec. I'm just going to hold that enough and I should fold that back. Same on this Go side. Go swimmingly here. well today. I know, it? it's the first me, like, I will not work for you. But what we'll do, anyways, we're going to sandwich that in between. Okay. How I many? We've got quite a few minutes still, haven't we? This is the, we're nearly there with what we've I want to show minutes, you, anyway, which is good. Minutes, this now is the gusset of the bag. So right. when your bag does that, this goes like that. So you okay. see, that is okay. the outside shape that you're looking for. And so what we'll do is place this section, similar to how we did the zip. Yeah. We'll place this on top. We also place this underneath. Oh! I know, it does get very, very thick. So I'm hoping, this is a bit, I'm like, will it all go through okay? But hang on, now you've done it on your machine at home then. Yeah! And what kind of machine have you got? Well, I, I use a Janome a lot, but I've got a, I had a brother for the walking foot. Yes. So but is it just between, a domestic? domestic. Yeah, so, absolutely So domestic. if your domestic machine goes yeah, through it. Yeah, so it'll be fine. Yeah. Just layering everything up. Check that straight, the perfectionist in me. Check that's right there. And then we go. Be mindful you're going through your layers and your teeth as well. So just be careful, don't kind of oh, whiz yes, over. Oh yes, of course, yes. I mean, these are the nylon teeth anyway. Yeah. And this has gone through quite nicely. But if you're unsure, just hand wind. Yeah. Hand crank. <laughs> yeah. See there, it's not quite going through, so that would have snapped the needle because yes. it's just quite a few. Is that where there's a folded over bit, or is that probably just... the teeth? Just give it a little wiggle, wiggle. through because you're still catching the teeth. I'm not sure if that even moved then. Yeah. There you go. So it's only sometimes a millimeter is all you need to move it. So just don't sometimes go hell for leather because yeah. you are definitely running the risk of hitting those. What's that hitting there? I think. Oh no, it looks. Like... It's one of those days today. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, something oh. clicked. I think the needle's bent. I think it is. Okay, well, when I get past this section, if I can hand wind the end at yeah. least. No, you can't. Oh, yes, they did. It's not doing it. There you way. Go. It is contended with quite a few layers. So what you're looking to have then is that. Right. Effect. Oh, yeah, you see, it's gone. It's, okay. it's worked. So it has gone that, through. That That's potentially just me not putting it through properly. There you go. So there's your zip gusset, there's your bottom gusset, and there's your tab caught in between the two. But if you think of your machine's gone through, <coughs> excuse me, layers, yeah. tabs, zips, and everything. <coughs> oh, excuse quite me. A lot. It's because I'm leaning forward. I shouldn't lean forward. So you do also top stitch oh, that. Oh, my goodness. I know. But we're just going to do this end for now so we can just show you how yeah. the whole bag goes together. Yeah, so then you place this. Place. Where's my other tab gone? Have I lost that one? Oh, no. What have we lost now? A tab. Never mind. Where is it? Where did I put that? Crystal of nicked it. It was just here. I'm sure it was, wasn't it? Oh, I've got... Oh, it's I'm on. so organised. It's here. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, there oh, it is. Oh, so that one I tacked in and I went to the other side. I'm confusing it's myself. Right. We were accusing you of nicking the tab. But Sorry, it Chris. There. So you place that one. Yeah. And then also you fold in this one up. So yeah. this does look a little bit complicated <gasps> again. And we place all of this through and we have the fun task again. But once I've done this, I yeah. can at least pin and show you how the whole bag goes together then. Yeah. So again, we'll do the... Check, we're okay over here. Oh, it's going through all right. Fine now. Time. Yeah. Just had a lot of hand cranking, that's all. I know. I don't know what happened there. There you go. I knew and it was that was the one that was all got caught up. I thought I that's know. the one that would have been difficult. Strange. Right. So you have, you turn this all the right way around. Yeah. This is what you have got, okay? So yeah. your, your bag 
outsiders like that. So you yep. would pin all of your layers together. Yeah. And again, I found it useful just to tack them all together as well yeah. oh, because yes, they're yes. kind of pulling them all different ways. Yeah. Get that as taut as you can and fitting because you can see it will go. If yes. I do it that yeah, way, yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. it will fit. But you just need it to, it to settle. Yeah. yeah. And then once you've gone around all of this, this is the fun bit. Right. So I'll probably just be, how long have we got? Oh, you've only got a couple minutes, but you can so just talk us through it. So I would get your center points. So I would get these two seams together here. Yeah. And I would just find where that center point is on there. Yeah. Put a pin or even just Ooh. a little snip there is fine. And I'd also do it on the bottom. I think Becky says to do this as well. The instructions are really clear and really yeah. thorough as well, which is good. And so keep within your centimetre. I'm surprised she hasn't messaged in, actually. She did say she was going to watch it. Yeah. And you can also do the same here. So find just your, your centre on this bit. And same on the bottom. And it just gives you that accuracy to get everything, yeah. everything put in. What? The one thing that I did notice when making up the green bag, so if we turn that round the other way, the perfectionist in me would have thought about that bit. Oh, bit the more. pocket matching. So just the, positioning yeah. the actual pocket alongside that. So yes. it's, it's the thing where you, until you make it, you don't, don't okay. realise. And then just show us quickly how then that... Put, I mean, obviously, we're not going to get to do it. No. Just show us how it quickly goes in. Make sure you've got top of the bag, place your seams together, and then get your, your clips. Go straight to the bottom. This would all be tacked together in your layer as well. Yeah. And then you'd put your next clip on there. And it looks a bit daunting, but it will fit. Yeah. So it will all go around if you've done do you have your to clip in, Do you have to clip into anything? Um, it doesn't say on it, but I, I did. But yeah. I don't... It, it does kind of mould around quite nicely. Yeah. But you are just going around the whole thing. And you are just clipping these on at every stage. So I'd do the straight bits as best you can here yeah. and here. And then just start to work this round. Easy, if you yeah. feel that you do want to clip, because I, I, I think I was the same. I think I just did a few, like very small, again within a centimetre, about three or four, just on the curve, and it just helped it fan out. So when you put this around, you can see it will all match. Yes. You are then having to put it under the machine. So I would put it this way round. Yes. So you can put almost push everything into the bag like yes, this. Yeah. And then you just stitch all the way around. Right. So you do that on both sides. I was going to say, because that side's easy, but the other side gets tricky, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, because you've got the, the baby. Yes, You're still yeah. able to kind of push it in, even yep. with it all on here. And the last thing you do then, inside you've got the cotton bias binding. So you will need to... Oh, here, you only you, do you one create, row of stitching though. So you, you create your own bias binding yeah. out of your lining. So you stitch it onto here. So once you've done this part, you could actually then go back around and put your bias binding on the same way. And then you, I found it easier to hand Oh, I, I think I just hand whip it all on, really. Yeah, put the Okay, stitch. perfect. Sorry, the machine you played you up then. When are you back? Uh, are you oh, back? I, can't, I am. <laughs> March, what are we, February now? Oh, yeah, February. March, yeah. yes, March yeah. sometime. All right, bye. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> Jill is up next. <coughs> oh, dear, I don't think I'm going to survive. Jill is up next uh, with more June Taylor gorgeousness. Thank you ever so much Thank indeed. you for having and me. And we'll see you very soon. Thank you. Uh, I'll see you in five minutes from Help us celebrate a new pattern launch at Sewing Quarter. Indie dressmaking brand Emporia makes its debut on Friday with owner, designer and teacher Claire Heal. At 10am, Claire introduces her relaxed Alice trousers, inspired by joggers with deep cutaway pockets and elasticated waist. Choose flattering small scale prints in stretch cotton for the most comfortable fashion statement in your wardrobe. Claire is back at noon when a love of fuss-free design and Japanese minimalism is evident in her elegant kimono dress. Our selection of warm toned cotton and linen fabric adds the exotic feel. Simple to use patterns plus Claire's expert tuition means you'll be creating an Emporia sewing spring wardrobe in no time. Friday the 22nd of February, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing, work, we create and love. Make a date with Sewing Quarter on Saturday the 23rd of February when we have two special shows packed with brand new goodies. 
At 9am, Emma Bradford makes the date night quilt. Featuring in the aptly named Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine, the design by Lynn Goldsworthy is a rainbow of geometric hearts and we have the perfect kit for you to achieve that at home. Then at 10 a.m. we're dancing to the beat of Anna Maria Horner's brand new tambourine fabric collection. Folksy prints are romantic colors inspired by nature, rhythm and handmade embellishments include gypsy heart, bird watching, stitchery and more. So set your reminder for 9 a.m. and meet us for two hours of brand new designs and fabric sure to make your heart skip a beat. Saturday the 23rd of February, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. This Sunday will be packed with five hours of everything you need for impressive patchwork and quilting. We start with accessories under £15 to help you build a comprehensive toolbox. If your fabric stash needs a boost, treat it to one of our coordinated bundles featuring Riley Blake, Kate Fassett, Dashwood and more. Expert Joy Edgington joins us for episode one of her three-part block building series, transforming a trio of skill building blocks into a pretty table runner. Later, Joy demos Japanese fabric folding to create a scalloped edge bag with kits in traditional red, blue, taupe and pewter colorways. We finish the morning with a range of exciting kits, including our Moda Rosewood quilt, glorious peacock pattern, woodland wedding ring, and more. So set your alarm. It's going to be a busy day, and we don't want you to miss a minute. From 8am, Sunday the 24th of February, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 73, and Sky Channel 687. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Dreaming of dressmaking but not sure where to start? Join us every Friday for our exciting new dressmaking how-to series. This Friday, our very own Search for a Star winner, Jenny McCreary, is our guide that will show us how to sew children's clothing and faux fur. At 9am, Jenny will be using an easy to follow pattern by two stitches. Jenny shares pro tips and techniques live on air for sewing hidden pockets, cosy funnel neck and a fun contrast panel. Then at 11am, Jenny has her own brand new beginner friendly pattern that she will use to show us how to make a faux fur trimmed shawl. Colours include chic arctic white and cuddly teddy bear brown. So set your reminder for Friday morning to build your dressmaking confidence with our new How To series from 9am the 22nd of February only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. We're spoiling you today. We don't normally have guests for three hours, do we? And it's <laughs> fabulous to have you, Jill. Jill, Vice President of... Sales and Marketing. Sales and Marketing for... June Taylor. And uh, she will answer to anything. So if you've got any questions, this is the hour to get them in. But we've got loads to get through, we haven't do. we? So let's just start. Let's just start. What are we starting with? Something really easy. This is called Round the Corner. Right. This ruler makes rounded corners on anything, your quilts or any project placement. Well, the name's in the, name's in the, in, on the, the team, really, isn't it? Round the Corner. Round the Corner. Just looks like a fat lemon to me. It is a fat lemon. <laughs> right. So this has two different, actually two different angles to this ruler. Right. You can have a very narrow corner Oh That's yes. the small. Yeah. Or you see me turn this. Oh, yes. You can have a very broad corner. Yes. So you're always lining up this point toward the corner. Yeah. And say that I want to do this large corner, I can just simply cut around it. So you don't need your saucer, you don't need your teacup, no. you don't need your plate. No. Because you can never get those straight. No, 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 but no, exactly. But this allows you to simply cut right around the corner for a perfect... Per yeah, because when you use a plate, 
It doesn't, you're, that obviously straightens off at the end, doesn't it? The plate carries on going and you end up cutting another blip into it and everything, don't you? Do, you? you do. So line the line up yeah. at the corner. This is as simple as this is. Now, if I wanted, uh, if I had a smaller project yeah. and I wanted to do a narrower, I would simply flip it over to small. So yes. small and large. Yeah. Perfect gift idea, two pieces of fabric, right sides together, sew around all four sides, turn out, and you have a burp cloth. Oh, that. I know that's not what you call them, but I forgot no, 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 what you no. call them. It's a throwy uppy on the shoulder cloth, isn't it? It's, <laughs> what do they call them here? Um, muslin cloth? Yeah, 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 okay. that's it, that's it. So, but this is nice because this is flannel. Anyway, that's by the way. Before we did some quilt as you go, we, yes, did, did. we did this placemat. And maybe you don't like the pocket. Maybe you like oh, yes, a yes, whole yes, different yes, 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 yes. Maybe you want to add extra quilting on. Get your mix and match mix templates and, match hearts. and mix just and match simply hearts. trace around and stitch. And then take your ruler and round. Oh, yes, because they were square, round. weren't they? Of course they were, yes. Yes, gives it a completely different look. Okay, the heart templates, you get six of them. From the big one to the little one. $5.99. Gorgeous. Because you can do all sorts of things. You can, you can use those as an applique uh, template and everything. It's not right. just for doing quilting, so is it? So you can cut out a heart, use your quilt basting spray, spray around <laughs> it, and push it Starch down. it first, and then... <laughs> and then you're good to go. And say you yeah. don't even like, you know, if you just want to do a quilted, I actually just love this fabric as is. Yes, it's is. beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so which one did we use here? We used the large one. Yeah. And I simply sewed two pieces together, quilted right. it, and then you're going to take your round corner like this, and this is perfect. You can line this side up here, this side yeah. up here, and go ahead and cut and bind and you have a placement. Now your binding on this will have to be bias because you're going around a, a I curve. I would always do bias binding around a curve. Yes, yes, yes. And remember earlier, yes. we used our little charming oh, to make yes, the yes, four yes, yes, patch. Yes. So this is the charming shape cut. I mean, if you're if you're just tuned in now and thinking, oh, what they talk about, what they talk about, look, well, go and watch the, the, the uh, 10 o'clock show. We, was it, oh, it's, all, oh, it's all merged into one now. Eight o'clock and ten o'clock we, we used this in. in we both. did. We used it in both. Eight o'clock and ten o'clock. It is called the Charming Shape Cut Ruler. It's gorgeous. It's little dinky. Right, okay. So what, yes? And then we'll just remember how we, you want me to recut that or do we remember no, 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 how we, we did that? No, 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 remember that one. Remember and then one. we used our templates again. We used the leaf and the circle yes, to which just mix decorate and match, this. Yes, and we used the basting spray to stick them in place we before we did them. And we starched the fabric before we cut them out. And if you like to play checkers and chess, you can make your own oh, checker yes. and chess board using a four patch if yes. you have a game player. And, and the um, rail picket fence here. Or the rail fence, yep. either way, whatever. Yep. Um, and I just brought this to show a quilt edge. Um, this is a t-shirt quilt. And oh, we, did, we did the binding. Oh, sorry, I'm just gonna put It's okay. We go. did the binding in all these different colors of solids. Yes. Sewed them together, cut it on the bias, rounded the corners. Nice. So it gives it a it's whole- It's a scrappy binding, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it gives but, it a but, whole different look. Your scrappy binding is very even. It's not yes, a scrappy because, binding. Because we use a shape cut, so we can make sure that everything is. Which we'll show you again later on in the Everything is even, right. So you called it. These are actually t shirts. Oh, that's yeah. nice. You can use a way to use up, uh, use up t -shirts. your t shirts. Yes. So that's called uh, round the corner to make rounded corners yes. on things. Okay. And I just wanted all you pet lovers out there to know that when we talk about quilt as you go. Are you going to be using that again? Uh, no, I don't no. think I am. Tight as we go. We, we didn't You've forget. You've got to train to catch. We did not forget about your cats and dogs. So we have for you today these adorable little pet placemats. Now, it's brilliant to know that, oh, what? It's brilliant to know that these are all um, washable. Yes. Do you know what yes. I Because I've got cats, and if I put Norm, Nelly would be fine. Hers would stay clean for weeks. Norman's food would be here. And, and everywhere. He gets it out yeah. and he shakes it round. It'd be everywhere. So I could throw that in the washing machine. Wash <laughs> and dry. Yeah. Now, this is a little bit different than the batting because we know you have pets and we know they're not terribly neat. So okay. this is a different kind of oh, a substrate. Okay. Um, I've got one here that I. Would I've, you miss one if one went missing? Would you? I, I think I will let you keep one. No, don't mind. So that's the cat, and let me show you the little dog bone. Yes. 
for you dog lovers out there. Oh, hang on, right. So that was the cat one we were just showing, and then this is the dog one here. Yes. Oops, here's one more cat. There's one more cat. One there. more cat. And then the little doggy is in the shape of a, a dog bone. A bone, which is. Okay. No, that's still a fish. That's oh, no, cat. it's the fish that you open. Okay, with. all of these, okay, two and a half inch strips. Everything is very easy to make. Um, and That's not a two and a half inch strip. The, no, I meant on the cat. Oh, sorry. And on sorry. the dog, we, this would be cut as a square. Right. One square. Oh, and that's a square cut in half, is it? That, those two bits. Square there? cut in half, yeah. square cut in half, square cut in half, strip, strip. Strip, strip. You can either just top stitch some trim along the edge or you can bind it. Yes. If you're going to bind it, you want to use bias binding because yes. both of them, yeah, that's a little bit of a... Curvy, aren't they? But because we know your pets aren't neat, yes. we um, use a little bit of a different material, so it's not cotton. Right, so this is the batting. What is it then? This is a fusible. Okay. And this one, you don't need to use the basting spray on it. It's built into the back. Okay, now, I've been, I did one with this, because in some of your, of course you've got polyester uh, batting, haven't they? they and have. the lady we had demonstrating it didn't like to iron it on, so she still used your basting yes. to put it on if you don't want to use the, can, the fusible one. You can do that, yeah. right. And so this is essentially just pressing it on. This is going to be, it's going to hold up a lot better for your pets through yes, a lot of the yeah. washings. Yeah. But you could still use the basing spray if you wanted. But yeah. if you just wanted to be... Because once it's sewn into place, it's yeah. into place, isn't it? Right. So now you've got your backing on, and we start the steps all over again. Yes. And we know those. Yeah, one. We know those. One, one goes one. face up, and then two goes placement line. Right sides And together. it's always important, isn't it, to follow the numbers. The numbers are there for a reason. They are. They? Like, for example, this looks like it's a wider strip, but... It isn't when it's done because there's a seam allowance here and a oh, seam allowance here. Oh, yes, 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 so, yes, yes. So, yes, that is misleading, but you're, you're okay. Right sides together, raw edges yeah. even, flip open. Yeah. Same thing here. Yeah, perfect. But you're going to make your pets happy, and you, you're going to be happy. How do you then, just very quickly, you said you can either um, put a trim on the edge. How would you then finish that edge? Once you've done all your lines, right, how would you then finish that edge if you were just going to put a trim on it? I would either zigzag it. Yeah. Or surge it. Okay. Then apply and the trim. Overlock it. Mm -hmm. Surge. Okay. Yeah. I'd trim it down to yeah. the line. Trim it to the line. Yeah. yeah. And then I would put your trim on. First, I would finish the edge. Then just apply the trim with a straight stitch. Okay. And the bias binding. Yes. You, you would you still cut it down to the line, or do you stitch it? Is that the stitch line there? Well, if you want it a little bit larger, just leave a quarter inch yeah. around the edge. But we designed it actually to be cut right on the line. Okay. Perfect. Just so people know when they get it home. So all. now we have your your kitty cats and your dogs all taken care of. Yeah. And we're going to be working on some bigger projects in this hour. Okay. And so I wanted to show you this rotary cutting mat. This is the biggest size that we make. It's actually 37 inches. The grid only goes up to 35. Yeah. I'll turn this in a better direction for you. Yeah. The grid goes up to 35 because, as you know, our our rule markings are outside the grid. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. So if you're starting a big project, this is the one to use just because you've got your full width of fabric. And later on in the show, when we use our Big Shape Cup Plus, it's just nicer to have yes. this bigger surface to work okay. with. If people weren't watching earlier, they could look at that and go, that's very thin, thin Jill. Yes. Why? Did, what's this? It's different, isn't it? It is. It's got a, it's got a, uh, and a little texture to it that yeah. helps hold your fabric and your rulers. The mat is actually hard surface. Right. We do not want to cut the plastic. Right. We want to cut just the fabric. So the textured edge holds your fabric and your rulers, and then you simply just cut through the fabric. Cutting the mat dulls your blades. Right. So it's also very difficult. So, so you've had the, the, basically experts have come up with yes. a surface. A, a sports physician, because ladies were getting wrist problems from doing all this rotary gentlemen, cutting. Gentlemen and gentlemen, do well. absolutely. So the first thing you do when you cut on this mat is I watch people come up and they go like this, and I'm like, just, just cut it. It's like butter. Yes. It just yes. Goes right through. So it's called a hard yes. cutting mat. And June Taylor is the only company with a hard surface cutting mat. Right. It's made in America. We make it right at June Taylor. Yes. So the other thing is we, of course, have the 45 and the 60 degree bias yep. lines on. We have the handles, use them to carry to class, but more importantly, use to hang. Because you think these are best kept hanging, are I they? do. Yeah. If you put them under a bed or wherever, something's going to happen. So um, the other big, big um, advantage is they are weather safe. 
So if you're in the hot sun, they won't, they call it bowing or warping. Yes, 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 yes. Or where we live in the bitter cold, it is not going to. Thought you lived in 90210? Yes, I do. <laughs> I wish I lived in there. <laughs> My zip code starts with five. So oh, we're, okay. we're pretty out. We're pretty much up in the Midwest yeah. and we had a huge, huge cold spell. And my rotary cutting mat stayed in my tr in my boot perfectly flat. So this is a weather safe mat. Different feel to cutting, and I think you'll love it. Yes. If you try it. Yeah. Do you need to try it? You need to try. It. Now, if you if you if you're a bit concerned, thinking, oh, I just want to try that. We've got the little dizzy one. Get the little dizzy one to practice with from the last hour, yes. which will go beautifully with that. But if you just want a little dizzy one, just because if you're if you've only ever bought. A, a, a cutting mat from anywhere in the United Kingdom, you won't have seen, or unless it's been a June Taylor outlet, obviously, but you won't have seen this before. And you're thinking, I might not want to buy a great one in case it's not for me. You'll soon see that you'll love it. You know what I mean? You but, will. But uh, try, I'm just being, I'm, I'm being you. Well, I'll try the little one first. We'll, we're keeping all these in stock. So when Jill's gone, we'll still have these available. You'll still de see these being on the shows and everything like that. So if you don't want to outlay for the big one to start with, just try the little one. Well, we had the 18 by 24, yeah. the medium, yeah. and then we had the little baby one yeah. that goes with this, which exactly. is nice next to your sewing machine. Yeah. It's really a pleasure if you have all sizes, just because. Uh, of course, no, of course, yes. Have you ever heard the term "the right tool for the have right. the right tool for the right job"? Yes, yeah. So, this is the one, and we're going to be doing some bigger quilts in this hour. Okay. So it's nice to have this. The bigger one, right? Okay, then. All right, so now. So what's first then? Let's Mind go that iron. to. Mine that iron. Um, yeah, I'll put the iron you put down the iron here. Down so this is called. This is called square, square in a, in a square, square quilt pattern. This is 80% cotton, 20% polyester batting. Finish size 40 by 50. Okay, so this is what this looks like. So this is the quilt you go, like all the ones we've shown you all along, but this is a much bigger quilt now. And, and I have the step outs for this as well. Right. But this is something a little bit different because we've used instead of strips, squares. Right. Again, a square cut in half, mm -hmm. a square cut in half, a square cut in half. Yeah. This is just a strip and you end up just putting a square cut in half across the bottom. So don't worry about it. There's yeah. no difficult angle here. Yeah. Another square cut in half and a strip across the okay. top. But this is what this quilt looks like. It's perfect for baby size. Yes. It's a perfect lap size quilt. Yeah. Or if you're at a soccer game or a, a outdoor sporting event, yeah. perfect size for that. Or the outdoor theater in Regent's Park because it always gets chilly there. I just need to ask a quick question. Um, you've not quilted this right. apart from the lines where they've been stitched. I have not. Now, that is a great point. There's enough sewing in here to keep this secure for washing. If you do want to do like a monogram or something in here, do it as you go. So quilt as you go. So if you'd like to add more quilting, you can do it as you actually progress. Okay, up. so don't wait till you've got it to this stage. I've, you can. Okay. And normally I do. But I've seen some of the questions that have come in. Yes. And there's people saying, can I quilt as I'm working on it? Yeah. Absolutely. So what, so when you've done that sense one and then those round it, you then do your, yes, if you're going to you do could. a monogram or something. But I have, it. when I finished it completely, done some beautiful border work in here yeah. as well. So it's, you can do either or. You can really. either or. Yeah. 23 seams and you're done. So this is a quick project. Yes. And what I love about this design is it showcases the fabric. Yes, exactly. So yeah. in this particular one, one this is the one we're going to do step out. So that right. is, you'll see every step. Okay. But if you really want to focus on a motif or you want to frame this in, this is the perfect design. Yes, yes, you. because they're big enough. Because I always think that when you see, I haven't got it here, but when you see a quilt that's got lots and lots of little triangles on it, lots of, you think, wonder what that fabric really looks like. And I lo it's lovely to see the melange of it, but sometimes you think, I've just spent so much on that fabric. I, I want to see, see exactly. the pattern. If it's a I, pattern you I love. want to yeah. see it. Now, look at how this changes. This is a little kid's quilt, and um, it's upside down. Yeah. So let's put it right side up. This we use plush velour on the back, so right, it, nice. it's nice mm. and cozy. But I really wanted to see this design, and I wanted to get all the colors in. Maybe yes. we don't know if it's a boy or a girl, so this works out perfectly for that. Have you mixed? Oh no, they're all they're all um... flannel. They're all flannel. Yep, they're all thinking. flannel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. We love working with flannel, and flannel works fine on the quilt as you go batting. Right. So, yeah. You know, pretty much anything that has a warp and a weft or. A, you know, a, a standard fabric yes. will work fine for quilt as you go. Brilliant. Now, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I did press this. <laughs> um, I did press this. 
Oh, wow. Now, same, this is the exact same done out of solids. Yes. Now let's keep that, keep that out. Yeah. And I want to show you this one. This is, if you are a beginner, this is exactly what you would sew according to the pattern. Yeah. If you were a little bit more oh, advanced, wow. what you would do is, I'm going to use the term pre-piece. So yes. This triangle right here, you could pre-piece that with two other ones sewn yes. together. So as long as the piece you've pre-pieced is the same size as the size that you're supposed to cut for that one, yeah. you're fine, aren't you? You're fine. But it gives it a totally different No, well, it gives look. it another dimension, doesn't it? It does. And we wanted to do this out of solids so that you could see exactly what we're talking about. Yes, yeah. So, I'd have to do that one with the dark blue background. Well, yes. I like, I like when we do Around the World and things like that. I love it with the navy blue the background navy. with all the bright, bright jewel it's, colors it's on top. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. So even though this is bigger and looks more complicated, it is not. It's the same quilt as you go that we've been doing all along. With even on the little placemats and yes. everything like that. Yes, so we'll run through the steps. Oh yes, 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 let me clear that one out. If, if we haven't um, seen you before earlier in the day, I want to just quickly run through the steps. So this is what it looks oh, like. Oh, can you reach? I can. Uh, Kate's messaging, so hello Jill and John, loving and recording all these shows to keep. Have purchased some quilt as you go items. Learning so much, thank you from Kate. Oh, thank you, Kate. What we kind of tried to do today is start out with some of the smaller things so that you could get a, a taste for it. Yeah. Now we're going to our larger size projects. Yeah. This starts out with a square and that goes on number one. And this is on point, so. Oh, right, oh, so remember like, that when you're cutting out. Um, you, if you want to center the motif. Well, or, or if you've got a one with trees on it, yes. you don't want your trees going diagonally across to you. You don't, no, yeah. that, would, that would be a problem. I forgot <laughs> to mention that we did spray our backing on and we did already Basin starch spray. everything. Yeah. And the next step is I'm gonna add two and three and I have that done, but for those of you who haven't tuned in, right sides together, yeah. actually, we cut our square and just cut it in half diagonally. Yeah. Nothing so you sprayed difficult. it with starch first, Yes. Ironed it. Yep. Brought it, cut it in half. Cut it, it in here. half. Right sides together, raw edges even. Yep. Do not worry about these little tails. Just don't worry about them. Okay. You Stitch in so. a quarter inch through all layers and you will get this. Okay, let me just pull this back for you so that you can see piece two. What about those tail bits there? Well, um, I leave them in. But if you, you know, this, which is really hard for me to do, by the way. Well, no, I know what you're like, you see, and that's why I had to ask you that, because you hate little bits like I that. I do, and you've been hanging out with me too yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. Right side, uh, as you, after you do your sewing, finger press that open. Yeah. Look at how perfectly. It all fits, it, it's yeah, just, exactly. You can't go wrong with it. Because this. these aren't sewing lines, these they are placement lines. lines. If you've this not watched earlier, these... This man has been listening, of course, listening, it's you. listening. Of course, All right, so I skipped ahead a little bit, all right? And so now we have those on, we yeah. have these on. Yeah. And now our next step is yet another set of triangles, right. right sides together, raw edges even. So when you're stitching that quarter of an inch, yeah. you're stitching through the fabrics, through the wadding, and Now, the do you backing. carry on, do you, do you have to stop at the line or do you just do you carry on to the, it doesn't matter on that one, does it? Because you're only going to go today. You carry on. Yeah. I carry on. Yeah. I and now, do you, because every stitch you do on this side, you're yes. going to see on the reverse, you aren't are. you? And do you so, do a reverse stitch? Um, you can see a little bit. Oh, yes, so yes, this, yeah. this is your carry-on right yes, here, yeah, and yeah. the little reverse. Yeah. You wouldn't have to, though. No. You really wouldn't have no. to. Um, I'm just thinking, I don't mind that, but I'm just thinking about, not purists, but people who like everything to, to match everything. You just run to you it, could. you can pull the thread through and knot it off and things, couldn't you? You actually could, because if you want to see this from the back and you want it to look beautiful, you, you, yeah. sure, you sure would want to do that. Yeah. All right, so now we're on to our last step, and this is two squares that we cut out and cut diagonally, yep. one, two, three, four, and then we sew on this little strip on the top, yep. trim, and, and we have these lovely lines that you can use. See this cross hatch? Oh, you've done the same as you've done on your rulers, then we you've have. taken it beyond. Yeah, so that you, you know where to line up your rulers. Yep. So you can literally just walk along, walk along, yep. walk along, and trim. Because you haven't got a ruler that big, have you? We don't have a ruler that big, <laughs> nor do I have an arm that no, long. No, exactly, exactly. And, and then you're done. So this one is 23 seams. Right. And you're done with your quilt. And that is you called see, square in a square. But how brilliant that if you've suddenly got to 
you think, oh, God, I'm seeing such and such tomorrow and I need a present for them. <laughs> you wouldn't normally think, well, I can make them a quilt. Right. If you were making that from scratch, you wouldn't be able to run it up in an afternoon. Where you, with, because of all of that. You can do it. Cut, cut, sew, sew, bind. It's done, isn't it? And, you know, it's perfect for baby gifts, perfect for, you know, lap size quilts. Easy and quick. Yes, and Sunday, after, Sunday morning quilts. Well, Crazy Lorraine's written in. How, how lovely to see you back, Jill. I love the quilt as you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to go... Lots of people multi-buying these. Lots of people multi-buying these. We're going to go to one last design, and it's actually called Savvy Stripes yes. Hanging Behind Us. Yeah. And I think this is 11. Let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, <laughs> 11, 12, 12 seams, and you're done. What I love about this pattern is you see, you really see the fabrics. But I'm going to show you in the last example, if you don't want to use a strip of fabric, you can pre-piece something. Oh, okay, perfect. Actually, uh, well, yeah. We've had a question, and I'll be able to answer this. If people are saying, people who are multi-buying, can they join them together? What we say is when we, we do the ones with the six on, we say buy three packets, buy four packets, you can yes. make a huge quilt. Yes. I'm not so, could, could you, yes. would you join these together as well? You could join them together to make like a twin size or even larger. I think on our website somewhere we have the equation for you to figure out how many packs you need oh, for twin full, so yes. on and so forth. We call forth. them different here, but you know what I mean. We know what you mean. Bigger beds. All right. Well, right. now, actually, as long as we're talking about that, yes. why, don't we, why don't we flip to this one? Because then it will be easy for me to explain. Okay, perfect. Exact same quilt right here. Exactly the same. Is that we, one there? Should we hold it up again so we yep. can kind of see? Exact same quilt. Only this time, this row. Oh yes. Is we we call it pre-piecing. Yes, so yes. So you're yes. actually making a row of these are what we call piano keys. But but it's a bit like your improv from earlier. Yeah. But it's formal improv, isn't it? Because right. improv is just any shape, any size, any bit sewn together. Whereas these will all be exactly the same size. Exactly. Together, so we take our we? shape cut, we cut all of our rectangles. Yeah. Then we use that as our row. Yes. In, so that's your unit in yes. quilt as you yeah. go. And we did the same thing here. Yes. So so the, the so on this one, it will on the instructions it will tell you to cut a piece of fabric, however long that is, by a, however long it has to be with the seam allowances mm -hmm. turned over. As long as this one, the piece of fabric you create <clears throat> is the same size as it says in the instructions for number because I presume you go you start here, do you somewhere like that? One, two, three, four, whatever. Whatever number that is, you have to make sure that whatever you join together, so you can do it in any which way you want, can't it you? Is four, but by you've the way. just yeah. got to make sure that yes. it's the right size. So and this is the same row, only I think these were an inch piece. Yes, yeah. And then down here we actually took that little charming shape cut yeah. and we cut out the little dogs that we right. wanted and put those in with the teal and the orange. Now, this particular lady who quilted this, she's a little more advanced. Right. She also added some additional quilting. Right. She added it at the end. So if you... She's done the same in here, you just can't yep. see it at home. And here too. Oh, there. Well, that's wavy lines in that one, isn't it? Yeah. So if you, if you like that kind of look, that's how you... Oh, actually, let you... me show you, I'll show you the back, because then you can see the different shapes of quilting that she's putting. Can you see that? Uh, You going in? There you go, see, look. Okay. All right, so now let's go back to the basics. And this is, can we, I think that, uh, we got it upside down, down okay. but according to the way this was hung, I think now we have it correct. Okay. This one has no additional quilting, but, but these big motifs. Yes, we, but they, you fussy cut this one. We they fussy cut that one so they get the exact yeah. circle through we the middle. We wanted this they? in the middle yeah. and so on and so forth. So this one, with no additional pre-piecing and no additional quilting, you have 12 seams and binding. Exactly. And if you want and, to do And I love the fact they put a solid, just one solid in there and there, just to kind of... Set it off. Yeah. Yep. So Lots of multi buyers in this hour. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, now, can we take one more? Yes. I charge extra for holding up. You do right. know that. I'm going to grab another step. Okay. Right. So this one, we actually 
um, have Quilt As You Go baby bibs. You've had them on before. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. And we use this fabric. So if you know, say it's a baby girl, you can make the bibs. We're gender neutral here, so a oh. little boy can have a pink one as well. Uh, absolutely, um. and I, I'm, I should have known. I should have said that. Um, but this one is a little bit of a hybrid. Yes. We had just, just what we just call straight quilting in yes, here. Yes, yeah. And that just gives it a little bit more... Um, more depth to it. Yes. Now, what if you wanted to pre-piece a row differently? What if you wanted to make some more visual? Yes, pieces? yeah. Because that one looks like it's been pre-pieced, but that's just the fabric. Mm, no, isn't it? that's so just the fabric. But I'll show you a couple of these that we have done to really change the look. Okay. Now, this was a ruler that we used earlier this morning. Oh yes, the. Okay, and it happens to fit right here. Yes. So this one could change the entire look using. Your, thank you, the bunnies aren't hopping up, are they? Yeah, there you go. Um, thank you. This changes the entire look of the quilt. Oh yes, but you've used the same? This is the equal, easy equals ruler that we started out with this morning. Yes. And yeah, th that's how the fabric goes. Yes, yeah. So it gives the quilt a great look. And if you're a little more advanced, you might want to add that instead of just having the strip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you've got more fabrics, because with there only being so many strips, and if, say, you had to, because what we do is we do a mega bundle of, of like, when we bring out a new range, you can buy half a meter of all the fabrics. So yesterday, the Liberty one mm -hmm. had 32 fabrics in. If you wanted to show all 32 fabrics, you couldn't if you were just doing it the way you'd like. Exactly, then you could then do the favourites in here, and then all the others, you could do a triangle, so it would show off the whole collection of your favourite fabrics. In fact, someone has done with it. They've used solids in this quilt, and then they've tr changed two of the rows to show some of the other things oh, that coordinate. Nice. Very yes, interesting very look. Nice. And we also, remember our twisted oh, stitch ruler? Oh, yes. So we're going to try to get to this again kind of toward the ends of the yeah, hour. Yeah, all right. We're halfway through. We're fine. OK, good. Yeah. All right. But we've done something a little different this time. Instead of making it a solid twister block, we've done individual twister blocks. But I'll show you how we yes, did this. So yes. let's oh, yes, because normally you're sewing you them all sew together. a huge thing right. together. We'll get so to that. We'll definitely get to it because it's fantastic. We used our little charming shape cut to make the five inch squares, yeah. sewed our borders on, and then cut. So I'm going to keep this out for a little bit so that we can get back yes, to it. Yes, exactly. So I'm done with this pink one now, yes? Yes. Yeah. So where are you going now then? Where am I going? Fantastic demos by Jill this morning. I won't say how much I've fallen, how much has fallen into my basket and checked out. Oh, thank, thank you, Janet, my love. Well, I forgot to. This was the. Um, this oh, we have, oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah. Oh, no, yes. Did yeah, you get that, Paul? That was the savvy stripes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's in there. It's in there. It's in there. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Right, you have. So what are we going on to next? Oh, this is the new ruler. Okay, this one is a new ruler, and it's called the fancy frame. If you do not like a square edge on your quilt, but you like a wavy edge, yes. as we see here, let's give you this visual, a wavy edge, or a scalloped edge. Oh, you do both. With the same ruler. How brilliant. And we figured out all the hard work for you. Okay. So let's Take one more look. I'll put this on the, the green fabric so it's easier yes. to see. And we will turn this in the right direction. Right direction, yes, thank you. Here are the pictures of all the different things that you can make with this. From one ruler. ruler? From one ruler. Oh, I like that. It can do six inch scallops, seven inch, eight inch, or nine inch. And the reason we have all those sizes is you're you're gonna want a small scallop, and we're gonna make one today. Yes. A smaller quilt. And obviously, if it's a bigger quilt, you're gonna want a larger scallop. Yeah. Some people like Instead of the scallops, they like the wavy edge. The soft edge. wavy edge, yeah, that's what I like. That's what we've done here. Yes, that's That's nice. the soft wavy edge. Yeah, can you see? Oh, yes, I can. And then um, around the corner, however, is you can do an inverted corner. Nice, I've never seen that. Or you can do the rounded yeah. corner. Or if you... Um, right, can I, hang on, can we just do that? Because there's a glare on the ruler. Can you have a look? So that's the indented one there. That's the full one there. What's that one there then? Double scallop. And that's the, I love that. What's that called where it goes a pointy at the end like that? Pointy at the end. Yeah, that's <laughs> called, oh, that's called pointy at the end, that one. Uh, how beautiful, so you can do all of those from this one This ruler. one is actually here, rounded corners, but wavy edge. Right. This is scallops all the way around. But I, oh, that's this one. Yeah, and I'm gonna show them all to you. Come on then, let's okay, do it, girl. Let, let's start with this one. This one has scallops 
all around the edge. What's the best? There, there, we can see that now, yeah. right? Because normally, if you're doing that with a plate, you'll get that one done, that one, that one, and then you get to there, and there'll be two half, there'll be two half plates mis, mis, mixed. And then what are you going to do? Throw it away. <laughs> throw the plate away or throw the quilt away? Both. So this is popular. The reason I did these out of solids is it just so it's easier for yes, you to see. So, so, so. This is what you like. I like that, yes. The rounded corner yeah. and then a little bit of a softer edge, yeah. wavy edge. This is... Um, oh, this is it, pointing yeah. out to the corners. This is pointing out to the corners and this is a... Um, I have no idea what I was going to say. So Scallop <laughs> is pointing out in the corners. Sorry, I'll put you off then. <laughs> And this is the inverted corner. Oh, right that's here. nice. This is the inverted. I'm going to show you the scallops and the wavy today yes. because that's the most popular. Of course. This one is a little bit more difficult to bind. And by the way, if you're using any of these, I would do the bias binding as yes, well. Yes, of course, yeah. So let's just talk about this quilt for one second and then we'll get to the process. Yeah, perfect. If you like Crazy Patch, this is um, an easy way to take your scraps and sew them together. Go back to those get squared rulers. So you've just done improv again, but instead of doing stripes, you've just done any, any shape. Crazy patch, right? right? Square it up. Yeah. And then um, we actually put our borders on. And this is a decorative machine stitch on yes. top. So this is a great way if you have a machine stitch you want to showcase, you can do that. Yes, definitely. And then after our border is on, I'm going to show you how to do this. Perfect. So. I used a panel today, so this is what we're going to make. Oh, okay. So this is, I'll show you what we're going to make. So that's scallop. This one's scallop, isn't it? Yeah, and the reason I want to show you this one is because it's the most difficult. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to show you how easy the most difficult one is. <laughs> and so to do that, we need a marking pen and You've we got need that, the and ruler. And need the ruler. And what we're going to do to start out is just take any, um, any straight edge. Yeah and you're just going to make a line out to the corner. I'm working in my border right here. Yeah. And you're gonna make a line out to the corner. Can you see that? As long as you can see it, it's fine. Okay, so just a diagonal line out to the corner. Yeah. All right. That's a pink, that's uh, so it's in there, mechanical. All right. So now, this is a smaller quilt. I'm gonna use a six inch scallop. Right, okay. That diagonal line that I just drew, Yeah. we're going to put this diagonal line right on there. Right. And I'm gonna to go to the six inch line here. So I'm gonna bring this, do you see this line right here? Oh yes, there's a straight line, there's a straight right. line there saying six inch line. Now I'm gonna, I, I goofed up. I gotta bring so, this back yeah. to this and that down to there. Right. So I've lined up my diagonal through the corner. Yeah and my six inch is on my border edge, right. and I'm simply going to draw a line in here. Now, oh, Okay, now don't, sorry to interrupt, but the six inch curve line is there, the six inch straight line is up here. Don't get that, I was thinking, oh, it's this one. You've border gone over. line, yes. it's this, this line, I'm sorry, right here, okay? Yeah, that's your edge border, but then this, is, the, this yep. is your actual scallop line here. Yep, there's enough space in these scalloped edges for you to run a marker. Right. If you're brave enough, you can cut. Oh, okay. First. Yeah. I mark. Oh, can, can you put a, can, could you put a rotary cutter in there? We're going to. Are you? I think so. Okay. So. It's your quilt. <laughs> and if I screw up, you know, it's, Try it's, it away. it's, it's not going to be a yeah. big deal. But so this goes like that. Now I need to bring my corner around the other way. Yes, right? yes, yes. We're just going to flip this over like that. Right. And I'm going to line that um, diagonal line yeah. back up here. Oh, yeah. And my six inch line. Which will be upside down now there. I'm sorry about that. Oh. I don't know how to get rid of it. Anyway, yeah. There's Should we lift this up? There you go. Okay. So there's a six inch line here that you mark up the edge of your fabric. And that's your six inch scallop line there. Perfect. And your diagonal line is still there. Now I go like this. Okay? Yeah. And I mark that. Yeah. Then I find the midway through the quilt. I just put a pin here. Right. Now, I did a little math and said, okay, I can get five scallops in here. One in the center, one, two, one, two. Right. So I know that I need a scallop coming out toward the edge at the center. Right. And it's perfect because 
this has my line. I'm going back to that so six, six inch, inch line. And my pin is the center. Yeah. So now I've and lined. And dotted, that dotted line there is at the center. Yeah. I don't think you can see. Oh, you, you may see that at home. There's a little dotted line there. Perfect. Right. So now I am going to make my mark in here. And that will be my, I'm having a hard time getting to see this, but you got to trust me. Yeah, <laughs> I trust you. That that line is going to be marked in here. You can even use a pencil. Yes. Okay. So now. Because you're going to cut on that line anyway, aren't you? You are going to cut on that line. So yes, it's fine. Right. And then what I can do, now I've got a guide going. Yes. I can move this over and oh, line this up yes. here. And do your next do one. Do here and move this over and cut here. And I'm eventually going to intersect with this. Yes. So even if I don't get it right, I'll intersect maybe here or here, but you're not going to be it able to it, tell. Yeah. Now, if I were going to do the wavy edge, yes. I would simply turn the ruler like this. Yeah. And what I would do is um, line up um, onto here and start right at the center yeah. of this. And, sorry, sorry. Um, let's just try to draw along here. I'm actually confident enough in this that the wavy I can just cut. Yeah, so okay, let's that's, just yes, do that's that. right. Yeah, okay, okay, just mind that pin, that's all. Okay, um, um, do you mind if I turn? So do I whatever go. you need to do, do whatever you need to do. Um, there was no other message came through, Paul. Yeah, it's not. Okay, okay. all right. So right. I'm lining this up. And let me put the zero at this mark right here. And you're just going to Because go the, the corner, I'm worried about the corner with the wavy line. If you're starting in the set, not worried because it's you. I know you're going to do it right. But I'd be worried if I was lining that up now, what would happen when I got to the corner? Okay, well, let's, let's look at this. These guys right here give you... I'm lining up this six inch center on something. Yeah. I can have that wavy edge coming way in here or way out. All I would like to do is keep it consistent. So what I'm gonna do is put the six inch line right on yes. this particular. Can we do a scallop at the corner then, not a wavy edge? Or does, can we do the wavy edge all the way around? Um, I have not done the wavy edge all the way around. Okay. I think you need the something. The scallop because you've got to either, run into it. Yeah, and yeah. by the way, the inverted is just the opposite way. Yes. Where you, you make the corner going in like that. So let's just make a cut right here. I know this is kind of odd starting in the center, yeah. but it actually mm. makes sure that your quilt is perfect. Now I'm going to move this down yeah. like this. And They're lining your... I am. Six inch center yeah. is here. I'm going to continue on. Oh, be careful. Okay, and then you just continue on this yes. way. Now, let me continue on this way. Do you mind if I turn this? No. Okay. Um, it might. Because I'm a lefty. Here. Might go a bit funny because the table goes a bit up yeah. there, doesn't it? But let's, ju let's just match this up like this. And my six inch center here again. And let's see. I got to do this here. Go. I got everything lined up. Yeah. And I'm going to run into... Oh, yes, because you've done your scallop on I'm the gonna, corner I'm going to run into that. Yeah. Would it make you feel better if I cut the scallop first, but you're just going to... No, 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 no. I'm just going to run you. around it. Yeah, I'll I, move out I, the way. I got to go this way because of my... Uh, Erica says, great demo, so many new ideas. My mind okay. is buzzing. Can't wait to start sewing, but don't want to miss anything. She'll be off in uh, 20 minutes. Okay. You can start sewing in 20 minutes, Erica. And if you're comfortable, you know, with the scallop, I've already marked it, so I'm, I'm pretty good by lining up that diagonal yeah. line. And remember, we bring this down here, yeah. and then you're going to go ahead and cut the scallop. Yeah. And if you have a little boo-boo, don't worry about it, because... Um, because you're going to bind. Yes. Okay. So now, oops, we're starting our scallop. Yes. And we're just going to go right around, flip this over and go right yep, around yeah, yeah, yeah. the corner. So. So now in real life, like you, you said you just cut straight with the ruler, right? But you, if you've drawn it on, you could just rotary cut around. Could yeah, you, or that, you always I, use the ruler? You, you can always do that. Yeah. And if you get stuck by the corner, you can do the round, the corner ruler. Of well. course. Oh, yes, of course, of course, of yeah. course, of course, yeah. 
So I want to just take a little bit of time and kind of go back to some of these other yeah, yeah, you can really, do what, whatever really you good tools. Yeah. Are, um, we doing, are we doing the twisty what's it one as well? I'm going to do that next. Okay, perfect. How does that sound? The twisty, what did you call it? Twisty turning one. The twisty turning one. Hello, John and Jill. Loving the show. Learned so much and bought so many products. John, you'll need to lie down in the darkened room after this show. I certainly will. I've got two days off, so I'm fine. All right. right. So this is brilliant. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. Okay. So we are going to start out by... Twist and stitch, it's called. That's it. Now, this oh, one... Uh, I, tried yeah. to pick it up. I tried to pick it up. It's stuck to the picture. It's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> this one is um, something that you're going to need our instructions for. We tell you exactly what size square to start with. Yes. As um, a, a start to what size quilt you want. Right. Now, this happened to be, um, we started out with um, five inch blocks. Yes. Sewed them all together, pink, just all different colors. Yeah. And then your next step, and this is the crazy part, you're gonna sew your border on as well. Right. So you're gonna have this big piece of fabric that you're working with. Yep. And then you're gonna come in and you're going, and, and I'm gonna demo this in a minute. Yep, yep. I just wanna explain the process first. We are going to put the ruler over the top, cut, cut, turn it, cut, cut. Which is the twist. It's going to give you the twist. Yeah. So when we do that. Yeah. So the black ones are the bits you've cut out. The black ones are the bits we've cut out. So you can see the um, squares behind of mm -hmm. the fabric. And then you, when using the ruler, you've cut all of these out. Right? Right. And that looks like this. Yes. Keep them all in order as you cut them out. Make sure you keep them all in order. So that's just the reverse of that one. So that's what you're left with and that's what you've cut out. All right. So and that then, then you place them closer together. So this to this, this to this, this to this. Yeah. This, this, this. Flip it right sides together and continue on. So yeah. sew them all in one direction, sew them all in the other yeah. direction. When you do that, this is what you have. Fantastic, isn't it? Just and for one ruler and just cut, and all you've done is sew squares together. Sewing squares together. Yeah. Now, I love this as a border, and we use this in our little pink quilt. Yes. Instead of sewing all of them, all together. Of them together, we took our little charming shape cut ruler. Yeah. And we sewed. Oh, there it is, there it is. We, so that's the charming yes. there. And we cut five inch squares. And yeah. we cut. That's not the. That's not this one here. Just so you know, that's not this one. This is the charm cut one. Just so you get the right one. That's the little charm yeah, cut. Yeah, th this is the one you can do easy five inch squares. Yeah. And then we sewed on two and a half inch okay. borders. Okay. And now we're going to take our ruler and we're going to find the corner. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to find the intersecting point. Yes. And we're going to put our ruler on that intersecting point. So it's it's on our seam allowance. Right. We've sewn these yeah. two together. We're going to take so our... So now, the, the, we don't have to look at the size then for this. Oh, yes, we do, because we've got three and a half, five. Yeah, and yeah. the instructions tell I think you the instructions come with the they ruler do. then. Oh, that's okay. So problem. this can make um, five different size twist and stitch boxes. The yeah. 10 and a half inch ones are huge. Yes, yeah. I'm doing the smallest of one course, for yeah. you. So. Are you ready? So we're going to cut three and a half, three and a half. So you're going to go put your blade in, cut, cut. Yeah. And I tilt my blade a little bit to get it get going. It into the ruler, yeah. Pick it up, turn it the other direction. Still lining the, bl the black lines up with your seam allowance. I am. Seam. And we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to go cut, cut. Right. Okay. Okay. Now we got one. Right. We're going to do I the same thing. Then get the other thing. corner. Does the can I cut all four for yeah, you? Yeah, 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 please okay. do. Yeah, yeah, we've got okay. 10 minutes. Okay, cut, cut. And eventually you're gonna put these together for me and we are gonna get, sometimes it's called a pinwheel block. Yes, yes, yeah. And they're so cute and they can be used for a full quilt out of this or they can be used, you know, just in the, in the border. Yes. There we go. We're, we're halfway there and one more time. And you don't, it looks like you're going to waste a bunch of fabric, but you really don't, no. do you? Okay, lining up my corners here. Cut, cut. Trust me, you can't do this wrong. <laughs> Famous last words. Except this is the only time when I just cut through one layer because, yes. you know, I just want to make sure that. 
Oh, yes, because it's got to be so precise, isn't it? If you try and cut through four of those at the same time, it, the selectors are going to move, aren't they? Yeah. Now, while I cut this last one, can you see if you can get our pinwheel going here? Yeah. Because I, I just want to show you, we hardly waste any fabric in this process, and it is, it's so precise. So making a whole quilt out of it is a lot of fun, but it's also fun just to add a little interest with the border. Uh, thank you, Jill, for showing us this ruler. I love this ruler from Leslie. I'm not quite sure which ruler you're on, Leslie, but thank you. They're all gorgeous, aren't they? All right, there we go. There you go. And you get a little square left over you can use for something else. Oh, yes. Right. Perfect. Split. So now what we did is we sewed all these together, and then we sewed the whole row of them. Which created this. Which created that. Which created that. Right. So easy, easy stuff to do. Yes. Now let's do, I've had um, someone ask about this big shape cut. Do you yeah. mind if oh, we Oh, yes, do, yes, 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 because we, we didn't really give it much time. Really, do we? We so didn't. we move that. Uh, so hang on, before we go into the shape oh. cut, this one just works because obviously that one, we just got one together. But on that one, because you've got the different colors in the squares, that's how you create the interlocking pinwheels, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because you, you've gone from the seams, not the white, just the white seams, you've gone through right. Let's hold, different squares. Hold this right up. So when I combine this to this, I'm getting this right yes, here. Yeah. So you can see the pink, green, blue, yes. pink, green, blue. So you can either do it all in one color individually like that, or sewing the, pa the patchwork of the squares together yeah. They can all do that. Or you can do sections of a quilt. Like maybe you want to do just a block like this in your quilt. Right. Let, let's, let's look at this. Yes. Let's frame this as a little bit more what I was talking about. That is a gorgeous block in your quilt. If those four were sewn together. Yeah. Okay. People would say, here, let's frame it up this way. People would say. Oh, there you go. How did you do that? Yes, because it looks so complicated. It does look complicated, but we've just shown you that it's super, super easy to do. Exactly, exactly. Right. Now. Now. On to my favorite ruler of all time. And this lovely purple fabric. Yes. I'm going to use the mat this direction. Uh, are you got enough room? Do you need to cross a bit? Here. Yeah. This is the shape cut plus that we're doing now. It's just that that table there is with a lip on it. That's the problem. Yeah, I'll go over. I'll go over this. Okay, that's Put the handle over here. So you are going to start with your full width of fabric. Yes. And that's 44, 45 wide. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to cut that off because I don't. You know. That's you it. know how I don't like those things. Yes. Yes. So 44, 45. Um, salvage to salvage, and we're going to fold it one more time. Okay, so now I'm cutting. You've got plenty. You've got eight minutes. You've got plenty of time to do I've this. So plenty of time. So we're going to cut. I'm going to show you all the shapes that this ruler can yes. cut. Yes. Right? This is amazing. I'm going to go over here because I know you don't like me on the other side. Now I'm going to use an increment of two inches. Right. By the way, I want you to know something. It doesn't matter where my fabric is on the mat. Yeah. Okay. So don't. If it's crooked, it doesn't matter. We're not going to use it. We're yeah. going to use the ruler. We're going to start out by lining the bottom fold line of my fabric with the zero horizontal marking right. on the ruler. Now, this ruler has laser cut slots. When I put my blade in, I can't, I can't waver off. Right. It's going to stay exactly straight. All right. And what's going to happen is I'm going to figure out what size strips I need. Yep. If I need uh, two and a half inch strips, I'm going to cut at the two and a half, the five, the seven and a half, ten, so on. Yeah. I'm going to start with two inch today. Right. The first thing I do is I put my blade in at the zero mark to square up the edge of my fabric. The fold line I know is straight because my salvages are together at the top. So yeah. I'm straight here, I'm straight here. Normally I don't do this, but let me just lift this up to yes, show you yeah. now I have a straight edge. All right, now strips. We're going to cut two inch strips. Put your blade in every two inches, two, four, six, eight, ten. Introduce it into the slot opening by tilting it. If you can't get it, tilt it a little. Once you get really good at this ruler, um, I don't even really know if I tilt it. I just kind of cut with so it. So it comes naturally. Right. And I'm on, what am I on? 14, 16, 18. Um, and the, the beauty of it, look, I still have all this to hang on yes, to. Yes, yes, exactly, yeah. And we're going to lift this up, and you are going to get absolutely perfect two inch strips 
now if you want to turn those into squares i got a lot of fabric cut here yes let's turn twisting them mat christine says jill you, oh, i love all your demos and june taylor products are so inspiring i'm oh. so enthralled with all the designs i'm loving them all from christine you know what christine i love them too yes we well, can love tell these, you i can love these tell. tools they're just they just make sewing easier and faster and they make it more perfect and as a result your end result is great yes right okay. what are you doing now so these are, are these your strips no this we've gone back to a solid piece of fabric here no they're oh, my right. strips i let them i let my strips here right already okay. cut okay. i turn the mat mm -hmm. this is the line that i squared up the edge of my fabric to the first time so now this becomes my zero horizontal yes. line now i'm going to square up i'm really taking away the salvages yes yeah. okay yeah. And I'll stick with the two, two inches, four, six, eight, and so on, as many as I can get, right? Yeah. And this will become all of our perfect squares. Oh, my word. So let's take these to show you. They yeah. are precise. Perf yes. And also, that's what, because I wasn't a quilter, obviously, before I came here. Um, it's all about precision, isn't it? With with a perfect quilt, it's all about having... Well, then your blocks are going to go to yes, together much yeah. nicer. Right, now, what are you doing now? Then? Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to ha make half square triangles. Look at the ruler at the black 45 degree intersecting marks here and here. Don't cut yet. We just went for the upstairs camera to come in. Okay. There well, we go. Sorry about the glare. Sorry about the glare, but we can still see the fabric. And if you're using small pieces and you don't like this big ruler, you can shift over to the mini charm. Yes, 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 yes. This ruler is 18 inches. I'm going to um, cut through the center, which is nine. Yeah. But you don't even have to know that because well, you're just lining it up where the two 45 yes, degree yeah. marks come together and through there. And that would be your half square triangles. Mm. Okay, now let's say you want to cut diamonds. Yes, please. You are going to utilize either the, I'm going to take this two inch strips. Yeah. <laughs> 60 or 45 degree line. Let me take another strip here. Yeah. So now you could cut your strips um, on an angle and line them up like this. Right. So you've got those lined up on the 60 degree line. I do. I could also do 45. Yeah. Does that make a different shape? Yes. Oh, it does. Okay. This makes a diamond that's an equilateral diamond. Yeah. This makes an elongated Lone Star. Okay. Now, the, the ruler stays in the same direction. This is the only time where I need to just kind of make sure that one of these horizontal lines matches up with one horizontal line here right. or a vertical. If I get one right, I get the other right. Perfect. I'm going to stick with the two inch increment, all right? Yeah. So I'm cutting at zero and two and four and six, and I can't get eight Perfect. out of this. All right, so this gives you all of your perfect diamonds. Wow. Now, cutting a diamond in half makes an equilateral, yes. which we did this morning. Yeah. Or take this diamond and center it underneath the ruler so that the middle of the ruler, yeah. which is nine, goes through the short sides of the diamond. Right. This is an easy formula to remember, really easy. Whatever dimension you've started out with, cut that half of that on either side of center. I started out with a two inch diamond, Half of two is one. Yeah. I'm going to cut one on either side of center. Center's nine. I'm going to cut at eight and ten. Right. That's one inch on either side of center. Eight and ten. Oh. Um, and I am going to get hexagons. Perfect hexes. So from one ruler, you've got straight strips, you've got squares, you've got diamonds, you've got triangles, and you've got hexes. And if you are really a, a devoted quilter, there's a way to cut bias binding using something called the diaper fold method. Right. It, I always have to look at it. Is that the one we fold and then go fold, round? Fold. You fold, fold, fold. Um, I, I'm not, I don't know how to do it. No, 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 no. You go like this, you go like this, you go like this. <laughs> uh, you don't do that. You don't do that one. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, no, but then okay. you just cut it. Okay. it. If you cut, if you fold it the right way and it's online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut up here, you get long strips yes, of bias Yes, that's binding. right, yes. And it's all, there's no seams in it, are there? You've used the yeah. whole box. You've the used whole... the whole width of the fabric. Yeah. And then, of course, if you like to cut fringe, you can definitely use this line down here to cut half-inch fringe. Now, what I don't have memorized, but comes with the packaging on yes. this, is this, this quarter-inch line here. Right. This is very usable because this ruler can allow you to cut in quarter-inch increments. So say you need one and three-quarter inch strips, or you need two and three-quarter, or, or one and a quarter. three and a quarter. Yeah. 
it'll tell you how to cut. But yeah, so, so you line that, I presume, up with the edge of your fabric because yeah. you've moved it. it and I'm happy to show you if we have the instructions uh, around we've got anywhere. A less than a minute left. We so, do. So. so, but I want you to know it's there. And if you lose it, the, the oh, now, 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 this, this is really instructional. Right, if you've got a June Taylor, anything, and you lose the instructions and you email them... We'll send them right off to you. In me, and, but last time you are here, not just if you bought them from our show here, but if you've bought them any time, right, that we had people go, they've replied already. Yes. They've repli they reply, I mean, remember they're in America, aren't they? Every so day. Got, you they're have still got sleeping. Yes, exactly. But you know what I mean? You will get a reply so quickly. So if you've lost any of your instructions or you need to know anything, they are brilliant, brilliant, brilliant to know about. When are you back? When you invite me. August. <laughs> Come back in August. We love, we love, we love having you here. The, the view, thank you've you. had so many messages. I haven't been able to read half them out. But thank um, you, thank you so much. It's a lot of fun for me too. Good. I'm glad you it's enjoyed it. Good. Uh, <laughs> jolly good. Jolly good, jolly good. Now I can't get out that way, so oh, I, you, sorry. you go that way and oh. I'll go this way because I've got to do tomorrow's menu. Right, I'll do it from here. Okay, coming up tomorrow with Vix. Vix is in tomorrow. Eight o'clock, she's got 10% off Zuma. Ooh. Nine o'clock, she's got embroidered Ruthie clutch bag with Cara Ackerman. Ten o'clock, she's got creative quilting and sewing kits. Eleven o'clock, she's got the Little Traveller Felt Friends with Cara Ackerman. And twelve o'clock, she's got a machine. Now, shouldn't there be a hyphen in there? A machine embroidery hour she's got going. <laughs> uh, by the way, by the way, by the way, I am only joking because there was one there earlier. Uh, don't forget to get the cut plus. Remember, you've got to check out your basket on absolute. It feels a bit weird standing here. Can I move back over there? It's because I just don't just like over there. There we go, there we go. I just don't like having nothing behind me, that's all. Anything, anything, anything you've got in your basket, please now start checking out because obviously all of the shows now go into repeat. Ooh. All the shows now going to repeat. So um, more and more people will be coming in to buy. So if you've got something in your basket, please, please, please don't leave that. If you definitely want it, please check out. Because remember, you only pay one p p no matter how many times you check out, no matter how many things you buy, you only pay one p p of £2.95 or £4.95 if you want the fast one. And because nothing's at dropship today, you can do that one as well if you want to. Um, thank you ever so much for your company over the last couple of days. I'm not back in now till Saturday. So Vix must be with you for the next two days, is she? Yeah, oh yes, because... Um, Vic, Vic Peach is in Gibraltar. Get you. I don't know, half term. Anyway, anyway, I will see you on uh, Saturday morning. Thanks for all your lovely messages. I don't quite know who's producing me on Saturday. I think it might be Hayley, so I'll be in for a treat. I'll see you Saturday, 8 o'clock. Take care. Help us celebrate a new pattern launch at Sewing Quarter. Indie dressmaking brand Emporia makes its debut on Friday with owner, designer and teacher Claire Heal. At 10am, Claire introduces her relaxed Alice trousers, inspired by joggers with deep cutaway pockets and elasticated waist. Choose flattering small scale prints in stretch cotton for the most comfortable fashion statement in your wardrobe. Claire is back at noon when a love of fuss-free design and Japanese minimalism is evident in her elegant kimono dress. Our selection of warm toned cotton and linen fabric adds the exotic feel. Simple to use patterns plus Claire's expert tuition means you'll be creating an Emporia sewing spring wardrobe in no time. Friday the 22nd of February, only on Sewing Quarter. Freeview Channel 73 and Sky Channel 687. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. We've got some exciting news. Sewing Quarter are delighted to announce that we now have our very own app. Available for download on all iOS and Android devices. Simply go to the App Store or Google Play and search Sewing Quarter. Once you've downloaded the app, you'll be able to watch Sewing Quarter live 24 hours a day and purchase all the products on today's show. So download the app today and keep watching Sewing Quarter on the move. Join us for our early bird special every day.